as Overton bowls. <laughs> and there's an appeal for catch is given for Somerset. This is driven handsomely. Lovely shot by George Balderson. Away through wide mid off. Henry in. Oh, that's clobbered over mid on. <laughs> One bounce and it, it rattles its way towards the, the, the boundary rope for four. He's in there, boat. Balderson driven, drives. And and he, that's 50 for George Balderson. Rather streaky way to reach 50, but 50 nonetheless. Well batted. Reach in and bowls. This is a reverse sweep, and uh, that will go for four. Down to uh, third man. Each has leech bowls to him. He goes for the sweep and nails it. He's over the wicket and bowls. That's a good looking shot up and over mid on by Daryl Mitchell. He's got that lofted drive again up and over mid on. One bounce and four. No, six. all the way for six. Just carried the uh, boundary rope. Takes bowling. Oh, swing and a miss. No, it's not a miss, it's an edge. And Craig Overton has got his man. Henry's in a bowls and peel for LBW and given out. It's out. Dane Villas is gone. LBW. Aldridge comes over the wicket to Bell. Shot for four, 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 four down to to wide third man. Right arm over the wicket, balls pulled Shot. by Bell, and it's pulled for four runs. Mitchell's back on strike. Aldridge in balls. That's four. Well, that's four, and that's fifty for uh, Daryl Mitchell. It's a debut half century, and he picked up three wickets with the ball. Miles outside the leg stump, and Josh Davey won't get there. Craig Overton comes charging in. Caught! Caught at second slip by Casey Aldridge. He's in and bowls, and this is a nice shot from Hartley. Gets up on his toes and runs that away down to third man. In and bowls, short, and this is pulled away down to deep backward square leg for four runs. Leg slip in place. Because on the reverse, oh, and plays it beautifully. Reverse sweeps for four. As this is hammered away, down, backward a square through the offside for four runs. Nice shot from uh, Tom Hartley. Aldridge in to bowl to Mitchell, who oh. drives down the ground for six, I think. Yep, six it is. Aldridge in and bowls, and this is a fine, well, you say a fine offside shot. In fact, it came off a thick edge, it's gone down to the third man boundary. Henry Balls and Mitchell runs it down to third man. And that's four, and that's his century on debut for Daryl Mitchell. A real stellar innings. High class performance. Bowles Hartley swings this away. It's in the air. It's going to go for six. And that's hooked away towards Abel. Abel and takes the catch. But here's Henry to Mitchell. And he's pulled it straight to mid wicket. <laughs> Fourth wicket for Henry. He does get Mitchell out, but not before Mitchell has gone on to score a really, really impressive debut century. Williams to uh, oh, Davis. Oh, I think he's bowled him. He, he has. He, he dragged it on. He did. Williams to Abel. Some glorious shots off the back foot. Williams to Abel. Nice work oh. through the onside. Another lovely looking shot from Abel. Change things up a bit. Abel down the pitch, playing this beautifully away through straight mid wicket. Croft is well back. This is a uh, pull drive. Six. For six. He's hardly down. Reverse sweep from Abel, and he's played on. Mahmoud again. Oh, he's bowled him. Off stumps gone. Mahmood strikes. So that was day at three here from Emirates Old Trafford. Very good morning from Lanx TV and the BBC Sport website and app who join us as well for the fourth and final day of this LV County Championship fixture. Scott Reid and Anthony Gibson with you uh, for the next few hours. 
trying to second guess and predict and speculate as to where the game might be going. Good morning. Morning, Scott. Well, I'm going to offer the entirely unoriginal thought that the first hour is crucial. <laughs> it's, a, it's a crucial first hour. Excellent. We've not had one of those for a while. No, we haven't. Um, I think if a few wickets go down early on, either side could win. I think Somerset's best chance of winning is to be bowled out. Otherwise, I think they will, they'll have to bat on to the extent where they won't have enough overs to bowl Lancashire out a second time. I talked to Craig Overton yesterday evening about that. I said, how many overs do you need to, to bowl Lancashire out a second time? He said, ideally, 85 to 90. And that, you know, they're not going to get 85 to 90. <laughs> <laughs> he said... There's a slight issue with he that. He said, yeah. if, if, if it's only 50, it's going to be very tough. Right, OK. So, you know, that, that more or less is, sets, the pro, sets the parameters. Some are going to have to be bowled out before lunch or mm. score very quick runs before lunch and then declare maybe half an hour before lunch with a decent lead, probably around 300 on the board and then try and bowl Lancashire out. Lancashire, on the other hand, if you know if they take two or three early wickets, mm -hmm. panic could easily spread through the Somerset batting ranks and Somerset could be bowled out and, and Lancashire leave themselves, you know, 250 runs to win in 70, 80 overs, something like that. So mm. either side could win, mm -hmm. but I think that the draw is still probably the odds-on favourite. The two umpires, Long and Longley, are heading out to the middle. And uh, we're uh, just a few minutes away from the start of, of, of play. Um, the, uh, the forecast is, is good. I don't think we're going to have any problems with that. There's a suggestion it might, might have a few issues, but that's much later on in the day. So we should be fine in terms of the, the weather. Uh, we've got 96.4 overs <laughs> because there's, um, there's a bit of last night still to be, to be completed because Saki Mamou bowled George Bartlett in the final over of the... Um, of the day, so we've still got that Mahmoud over to complete. Tom Collar Cavmore uh, is uh, the new batter. Um, Tom Lamanby's on 40. He batted really nice, didn't he? For his, his 40. He did, he's had yeah. a good, I think he's had a good game with the bat, yeah. Tom Lamanby. And uh, Tom Collar Cadmore could produce some, uh, some fireworks. Mm. But uh, interesting yesterday, a wicket fell to the first ball of the day and to the last ball of the day. <laughs> <laughs> do like it when things like that happen. It's and, quirky. But I suspect it's actually happened quite often because there's a one in six chance <laughs> of a wicket falling in the last over of the day because <laughs> there's six balls and only, uh, you know, and only one, one in w one chance of um, wicket falling to the first, uh, to the last ball of the day, or the way around, uh, to the first ball of the day. But um, yeah, somebody down in the press box has been sent off to. F to find out when the last time okay, was right. that, this, that this happened. <laughs> Which poor soul has the task of trying to search and find that out. I'll get it all day and it's never find it, I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> so Mahmoud to complete the over. He's got uh, four balls left of it. The lead is 149 at the minute. Seven wickets remaining, 149 runs in front, Somerset. It was marginal first inning lead for Somerset of 35. They, they pushed that on. They actually scored at quite a nice tempo yesterday. They yeah, around about four runs and over, wasn't it? Good, wasn't it? Yeah, Abel in particular kind of seemed to set the the pace for his team. He he batted beautifully. I really enjoyed watching him bat. Um, out for 48, reverse sweeping to Tom Hartley. But um, yeah, they went along at a, a decent pace and giving themselves a potential chance to push that lead onto something a little bit more formidable. So Mahmoud to complete the over, and here's Anthony. Saki Mahmood from the Statham end in bowls to S is edged by Kola Cadmore, but it drops short of the first slip, who I think is Daryl Mitchell. Not um, Luke Wells, who normally fields at uh, first slip. He's actually at a deepish mid-off at the moment, both mid-off and mid on set fairly deep in uh, acknowledgement of the power that Tom Cola Cadmore can generate as Mahmood is in full of length inviting the drive Cola Cadmore comes solidly forward plays it up to Luke Wells at mid off 
Tom Lamb will be at the other end. 40 from 78 deliveries. Much more positive innings under much easier circumstances, it has to be said, than he played in the first innings, which was a real vigil. But uh, he, he hung in there. He was dropped a couple of times early on. But played a very important part in setting up what was eventually a decent Somerset first inning score. This is driven by Kola Cadmore on the first run of the morning as Wells has to move to his left at deepish mid-off. 115 for three. Tom Kola Cadmore's made a very promising start to his career with Somerset. 249 runs in seven innings before this match. Best of that uh, spectacular 130 that he scored against uh, North Hans. And he's he's vowed that he's going to play positively. And he certainly did in uh, in that innings. He brought his uh, 130 and 102 deliveries with 18 fours and three sixes. So last ball of the first part over of the day. And this one climbs a little bit on Tom Lamanby, who... Drops it down in front of him. Well played, but a little bit of extra bounce there. Craig Overton saying that there is more bounce being generated f when the bowling's from the Anderson end, which is what we observed from the uh, commentary box yesterday as well. It's a fine day at uh, Old Trafford. Just wispy clouds overhead. Plenty of blue sky as well. The sun is sort of half out. It's milky sunshine, but quite warm. Very much a, a fourth day crowd. It's uh, one of the paradoxes of county cricket that the fourth day, when the match will be won, lost or drawn, always attracts the smallest crowds. Even if, as today, there is the prospect of a full day's play. Whether it is set fair, some set lead is exactly a 150. So I, I guess we will be here well into the afternoon unless something completely unexpected happens. We're going to have Will Williams opening up from the Anderson end. Got uh, Daryl Mitchell at first slip, Tom Hartley in the gully, backward point, extra cover. Mid off, mid on, shortish mid wicket, square leg. Williams in and bowls to Cola Cadmore, who comes half forward and plays it out to Stephen Croft on the offside. Something I missed yesterday, which Steve Pittard, former joint landlord of the Rosen Crown at Hewish Episcopi in Somerset reminded me of, which that is that yesterday was David Yossa Hughes's 76th birthday. Hughes, who earned immortality in that uh, Gillette Cup semi-final. That's Williams Bowles, and this is turned into the onside for another single by Cola Cadmore, who moves on to 216 for three. That was in 1971, when they finished in almost total darkness. The match finished at, uh, at nine o'clock. And uh, David Hughes clouted poor John Mortimer for 24 off and over when Gloucestershire seemed to be about to uh, to win. And uh, apparently Hughes initially queried the light and was told by umpire Arthur Jepson, you can see the moon, how far do you want to see? <laughs> well, he saw more than enough, did uh, David Hughes. So many happy returns to David Hughes on his birthday, 76th birthday yesterday. Williams in and bowls, and this is turned into the onside, but to uh, Stephen Croft, who's fielding at uh, shortish mid-wicket, 116 for three. Just um, been reminding listeners, Scott, that yesterday mm -hmm. was David Hughes's 76th birthday. Ah, excellent. Um, immortal for... <laughs> The, the runs he scored to win the uh, 1971 Gillette Cup semi-final in almost total <laughs> darkness here. Williams in and bowls, and Lamanby stretches forward. That's the type. Of, that's the game where 
if you believe everyone that tells you they were here, there was 355,000 <laughs> people here watching it. <laughs> I watched it on television. I was watching it on television. I've still got vivid memories because I, I support Gloucestershire second after Somerset, and they were a great side in those days, you know, with the likes of Mike Proctor and David Shepherd, John Mortimer, David Allen. And uh, it, was, it was heartbreaking for a West Countryman. <laughs> but... <laughs> Is Williams in a bowls driven back to him nicely? That will run away, I think, for four runs up to the boundary in front of the pavilion. He had timed that very well, did uh, Tom Lamanby. Will, will Williams did his best to get down to make the stop, but couldn't quite get there. 120 for three. He played that shot a few times, doesn't he? Mm. Last night he did it down the ground, timed it beautifully. He did. He didn't didn't go really hard at the ball, just use the pace that was on the ball. Williams in again and bowls outside the off stump, no shot from Lamaby, who's a, with that four, moved on to 44. So that's the first complete over of the morning, five from it. And Somerset had moved on from 120, sorry, 114 for three to 120 for three. Yeah, I think he's had a good game, Tom Lamanby. Thought he batted really well in the first innings. It was pretty torrid conditions on Thursday morning, and he he got through it. He he, he was really um, solid in defence. He left really well. He, he had to battle through it, and in the end, he would have been, I'm sure, disappointed to have got out chasing a white ball. And he yeah. was caught in the slips, wasn't he? But it was a bit of a loose shot. But yeah, I thought he was excellent and in very testing conditions on Thursday, and he's batted nicely again second time round. Here's Mahmood from the uh, Brian Statham end to call a cab more. And that's uh, defended up to uh, Luke Wells. We had Luke Wells with us for a little bit yesterday. Yeah, very good, very weeks. interesting. He was too. He might be having a bit of a ball at some point, potentially. Well, he thought, uh, well, he seemed to be indicating that he rather agreed with David <laughs> Hughes that, <laughs> that perhaps he should have been given, <laughs> given a ball during the Somerset first innings to try and make something unexpected happen well quite a bit last season actually did Luke Wells his leg spin Mahmood for Lancashire Bowls that's pushed into the offside by Cole Cabmore Stephen Croft is it backward point there for Lancashire to field no run Saki Mahmood will be thinking that he's got to look to his laurels today he's he's been out bowled so far in this game by Craig Overton and they're both vying for Selection in the event for England in the event that uh, injuries keep the likes of uh, Ollie Stone, possibly Jimmy Anderson, or restrict the availability of Mark Wood. They're both on um, pace bowling development contracts, aren't they? Yep. So just about level pecking, I should think, in the uh, in the pecking order. And he's kind of senior man out there isn't he as well Mahmood now with, mm. with Anderson not available he's going to lead in the lead in the attack Saki Mahmood so great opportunity for him short extra cover in place As he balls just back of a length to call the cab more gets everything out of the way of that leaves the ball through to the keeper it's a good day for Daryl Mitchell yesterday mm, played very well didn't he well, classy innings a real highlight for him. Century on debut. He never looked to be in any trouble, really. Mm. No. Nope. Played very few full shots. 120 for three. Yeah, debut to remember for, for Mitchell. Mamu balls. Oh, that's a good ball that beats Corley Cavmore. That's, that's the one. Pitch it right up at Cola Cadmore and just get a little bit of late swing. Because he will go for the drive. Just watching some highlights of uh, Mitchell's innings from, mm. from yesterday. It's a bit of a show reel, wasn't it, from Mitchell? There's some classy looking shots in that. Some lovely shots down the ground in particular. One of which went for six. And then he, he pulled the six over. Straight mid wicket as well. Mahmood over the wicket balls. That's driven by Caller Cavmore. And his 
four runs down to third man. Streaky. It third. was. Yeah. Streaky. Kind of punch through the covers. It came off the thick edge of the bat and disappeared down to the third man boundary for four. It's a real chance for Tom Connor Cadmore to set this game up if he can get a quick 60 or 70 and mm. give Somerset a chance of two sessions and a bit to bowl Lancashire out having not quite batted Lancashire out of the game but making a, the target a tough one to achieve final ball of the of the over Mahmoud to call a cab more it's neatly in behind defends away into the offside and there's uh, no run 124 for three so the lead is now 159 runs and they've certainly got two batters out there, Colin Cadmore and Lavenby, that can score quickly. Should that be the kind of the approach from Somerset, but maybe just playing sensibly, at least to begin with, as you say, they don't want to be losing two or three wickets and get themselves into a bit of a bit of a pickle. On Twitter, Darius Plumden says, My first tweet to you this year, I realised James Anderson bowling with the conditions on day one in this game is always going to be hard so you can't judge Davies and Bartlett on just this but looking across the whole season as Williams is in and that's defended by Lamanby what would you do with the batting order not what do you think the Somerset selectors will do I do wonder is opening limiting Tom Lamanby's mindset when batting thought would Lewis Gold so would, would be above George Bartlett in the pecking order ah, very good question um, I think there is an argument for possibly James Rue or Lewis Goldsworthy as this is dead batted by Lamanby into the offside coming up to open with Tom Lamanby I presume that Tom Lamanby wants to open whenever I've asked him about mm -hmm. opening the batting he said you know it's very difficult particularly early season when the ball's seeming yep. around but he really wants to make a success of it that's mm -hmm. where he likes to bat so he needs a reliable opening partnership Sean Dixon his uh, lapse in form made us be temporary so he could be the answer as Williams bowls to Lamb and Beer outside the Ostomp but it was Luke Wells yesterday who said that James Rue seemed to him to have the the technique and the temperament to open the batting i suppose it with he's, he's batting so nicely and he's in the position he's in at the minute it's a big it, ask it, though to it, it open the, it? yeah open the innings and keep wicket exactly yeah and he's he's he, he appears to be scoring runs and playing beautifully in that middle mm. order do you want to tinker with someone who's up at the minute he's, yeah he's absolutely. performing well in the position in the team yeah it's uh, Williams in a bowls to Lamanby, and this evades the fielder at Gully, but there is a third man down there. George Balderson, who sends in the return, so it's just a single. Lamanby on to 45. But yeah, I, th I heard Luke say that about James mm. I thought it was quite, quite intriguing. So that's, that's a possibility. And I, th I think um, Darius also said that he, he was under the impression that Lewis Goldsworthy was a above George Bartlett in the pecking order I don't think he has been but he might be now because George has not had uh, a good match here at Old Trafford and he looked all at sea even before he got out yesterday he did he struggled didn't he mm. the mood was all over him wasn't he last night you could you could sense it coming that uh, that wicket really he did he did struggle Tom Coda Cadmore just retaking his guard he's standing just outside the crease as Williams is in and bowls and plays it back to the bowler who threatens to throw the stumps down <laughs> because Cody Cadmore is batting out of his crease. He got a good ball, didn't he, Bartlett, last night? But he did. But still he did, he, but, he, he, but he, he could have been out several times yeah. before that. Poor chap, I think he's, he's just very nervous. Desperately wants to establish himself in the side. Williams in a bowls and he's bowling well to uh, Cola Cadmore who's looking to attack but is being given absolutely nothing in the way of width or the wrong sort of length. And that was a good over from uh, Williams who has figures of seven, seven overs, one for 37. He came under 
quite heavy fire from uh, Tom Abel earlier on in the innings. It's 125 for three, the lead now 160. Yeah, he's just probing away, isn't he, Williams, as, mm. he, as he has done since since he came to the club, really. Kind of off stump, fourth stump line, just delivery after delivery, the kind of relentless from from Williams. And that will be quite an interesting battle to watch that, because Colin Cavmore just say, well, want to try and be positive. That's the way clearly he said to you he wants to play. So if he tries to, you know, with the accuracy and the consistency of Williams, could be quite an intriguing little contest that between Colin Cavmore and, and Williams. But Lamanby back on strike as uh, Mahmoud is going to come right arm around the wicket to Lamanby. Just defended off, off, off his toes, pushing it away into the the offside, and there is uh, no run. Two slips are in place, and there's a fine leg. Mid wicket, mid on, mid off, cover, extra cover, and third man on 25 for three in the morning sunshine in Manchester Mamu bowls it's left by Lamanby yeah, a little bit of um, away movement off the scene there for Mamu Craig Overton who I spoke to last night said it's a pretty good pitch this one you know no side ought to get bowled out cheaply mm. on it He reckons he was pleased with the way he bowled. I'm sure, yeah. Um, I'm glad that he's back to something like his, his true form. He's still being slightly troubled by this tendonitis, but okay. it's manageable. Mamu to Lamanby. Plays forward in defence and there's no run. Would that be the reason behind him kind of doing like little five over bursts? I expect so, yeah. long yeah. spells at no, all, no, was it? No, no. And he did say it, it has been inhibiting. Yeah, it's it's affected his bowling in the in the matches so far. But um, and he agreed with me that this has been much Somerset's much Somerset's best performance of the season so far. Yeah, it's been a pretty even contest. It, it has, yeah. Whereas down at Taunton, Lancashire dominated. Yeah. One, two, five for three. So Mahmoud's still going round the wicket to the left-hander. Ball's back of a length and Lamanby yeah. jabs it back down the pitch and there's no run. Good ball, well played. That was the one that just cuts back into the left-hander. And nicely dealt with by Lamanby. He's had a couple that's just shaped away a little from Lamanby. Just pulled his length back a fraction. Last delivery, as you say, came back in towards the batter. Who has been absolutely solid in defence, Lamanby, really has he. A very, very good game. Can he push this 45 onto a bigger score, though? Doesn't play at that. Mm. Maybe kind of flirts with the idea of playing at it, but decides against it through to Bell. It was a delivery like that that accounted for Stephen Davis. He mm. did play at it and got a bottom edge into his stumps. Yeah. Mike Unwin, pillar of the Somerset Cricket Museum reminds me of that for those Somerset supporters not at Old Trafford do go along to the Cooper Associates County Ground and support Somerset disability team against Gloucestershire playing now and Somerset women this afternoon final ball of the over for Mahmood that's angled down to third man it's a nice shot by Lyman be controlled they want to come back for two yeah very easy shot down to third man by Lyman Beat and comes down for uh, comes back for two and that's the end of the over as well with the uh, lead pushing up to 162 now for, for Somerset and George m sorry Grocer's Micropub says relating to the tweet about the pub at Eccles <laughs> is this not the lamb it is indeed absolutely <laughs> Grocer's Micropub is my stupid mistake I did correct it, but everybody's been retweeting the original tweet, which <laughs> refers to the swan, and there is no swan in Eccles, it's the lamb. There you go. 127 for three. Williams is going to bowl 
to Cola Cadmore, just has six to his name. And, uh, shapes again to play an aggressive shot, and uh, this time Williams does shy at the stumps, hits them, and Tom Hartley did well there to stop the ricochet, otherwise there would have been overthrows. As it is, nothing is done. Just the two slips, not a great deal happening so far this morning, either in the way of aggressive batting or in the way of threatening bowling. Lancashire are bowling well, they're bowling accurately, they're keeping the pressure on. Williams in a bowls, and this is, uh, I think, about a single, and never was one there. As that goes up to uh, Mahmood at mid on. Somerset, uh, well. We've got 96 overs in the day, 91 remaining after this. So f 40 overs at four and over would give Somerset a lead of over 300. As that's pushed into the offside, that would leave Lancashire with a uh, chase of around about 300 at six and over, something like that. Somerset leaving themselves 50 overs to bowl Lancashire out. Hmm. Yeah. I don't think it'll be any more generous than no. that. No. Kind of taking six and over. Yeah. It's a good pitch, isn't it? But yeah. Williams in to Cola Cadmore. Who's looking to force that, but uh, comes off the inside part of the bat. And fielded at mid wicket, no run. Well, I suppose they're. Give it a go. Be positive and try and see. Well, if they, they would. Yeah, they probably. I mean, but try to build the platform. Yeah, yeah. And have wickets in hand. Absolutely. And yeah. then, then give it the charge. Mm. Williams. This long straight approach. Then and bowls. This is driven by Cola Cadmore. A rather more confident shot, but he can't get it past Mahmood. At uh, mid on, he's bowling really well, is Will Williams, I must yep. say. Bridgewater's loss is Lancashire's <laughs> gain. <laughs> yes, yeah, what a find he's been. <laughs> he really has. He's been terrific. Well, he slipped through Somerset's fingers. I don't know if they ever looked at him. I've never heard him being sort of mentioned as a potential Somerset cricketer when he was down with Bridgewater. Here he's in and bowls, and this is driven more powerfully, but again, straight to. Mahmood, and that was a maiden over, which is good going against uh, Tom Cola Cadmore when he's in the mood to attack. 127 for three, Lamon be 47, Cola Cadmore on six, the lead now 162, and Williams has one for 37 in eight overs, and that was his first maiden. Elsewhere, Kent have been a very solid start to their second innings. They're still 196 runs behind Hampshire, but Zach Crawley and Ben Compton. They've um, got them going nicely. 82 without loss. They'll try and bat through the day, Kent. Yeah, and all of the other counties in the first division will be willing Kent on, I think. <laughs> it's a pretty formidable attack that Hampshire have got, yeah. including Keith Barker, who's bowling at the minute. So we'll see how that one progresses through the course of the uh, of the day. Well, it looks like everyone's playing, actually. No, no weather issues around the country today for the final day of the Games. Mahmood around the wicket balls. Oh, let's nudge it off the, the hip down towards fine leg. And that's four, and that's a 50 for Tom Lamanby. 51 not out. Shake of the hands from Tom Corder Capmore. He has battered very, very nicely in this match. He has indeed. It was a, a, a gritty, grinding effort in the first innings, much more fluent this time around. And that is his second 50 of the season to go with the 65 not out he made in the first match against Warwickshire. It's now 131 for three. And the lead has pushed up to uh, 166. Mahmood to Lamanby. Just plays very gently forward and caressing the ball away into the offside. And there's no run. It's his the sixth 50 of his first-class career to go with six centuries. 
the average is 28.4 in first class cricket which is a fairly modest mm. average but he, he has had the, the task of opening the innings which is not an easy role particularly in April and September Mahmood to uh, Lamanby it's off the back foot and pushed away down towards uh, backward point for a single goes on to 50 Two not out. And 32 for three. Makes Connor Cabmore back on strike. There is a really interesting game in Division 2 uh, between Durham and Yorkshire, which is bubbling up towards a, towards a, f a finish because Durham are not too far away from winning that match. Yorkshire still need two more wickets. Maybe take a look at that at the end of this... Uh, Mahmood over on 32 for three. Here comes Mahmood over the wicket, balls full length, <laughs> driven <laughs> firmly for four by Corley Cadmore. <laughs> down the ground. Mahmood didn't want, didn't want much of that, did he? <laughs> Don't blame him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kind of dangled the foot out for a brief second and thought, I better not, actually. It was hit hard by Corley Cadmore. It was. He's a strong man, tall man, six foot two, I should think. Powerful shoulders. Moves into double figures, up to ten. One thirty-six for three. A mood to call a cab more. That's left. And, uh, through to George Bell. And there's no run. There's a couple of handsome drives down the ground from. Both these batters is already this morning. Lamanby as well last night. There's a firm hit by Cola Cadmore. I suppose been reasonably successful over this. There's been nine off it so far. Final ball coming up. Mahmoud brushes him past the umpire. Forward goes Cola Cadmore. Mm. Solid front foot defence up towards mid off, and there's uh, no run. Luke Wells fields so 136 for three at the end of the over. The Durham Yorkshire match, as I mentioned a few moments ago, so Yorkshire still need two more wickets to win that game. Durham have got a target of 246 and They're are nearly closing there. in. They're yeah, nearly there. Ben Rain and Matt Potts almost getting Durham to a, what would be a very good win against yeah. against Yorkshire at Chester this week. They're having a rough time of it, Yorkshire, aren't they? One way and another. But they've got some very, very promising young cricketers. Here we've got Will Williams to bowl to Tom Lamanby. Slip in a gully. The lead now 171. As Williams is in the bowls, and Lamanby calmly forward. Steve Tancock on Twitter. Thinking about your recent correspondent, this is debate about the uh, who should be opening the batting for Somerset. I think we spent more time on Always Look on the Bright Side of Life podcast talking about that than anything else this season. And he says, um, we haven't found a solution. I'm not sure that um, Andy Hurry, the director of cricket, and, and Jason Kerr, the head coach, have found a solution either. And I think we'll see a change for the match against Middlesex as Williams is in the bowls and Lamanby again defends. Steve, who lives not very far away, says he's gutted not to be at Old Trafford <laughs> this week. Mm. But, uh, not sure what I'd do f for the... Ma I th I'd be tempted, I think, to give Tom Banton a go as to open with Tom Lamanby and tell him to play his, uh, his white ball game, his natural game, see what happens. Williams in a bowls, and this is turned into the onside by Lamanby. Croft is in pursuit. They'll come back for the second run. As uh, Croft doesn't pick it up cleanly. And is that a subfield down, yeah, down it's there? Matthew Hurst. Scott, Matthew Hurst. Tell us about Matthew Hurst. Yeah, he's a young wicket keeper batter. I think he's from Merseyside. He played for England under 19s um, over the course of the uh, last winter, I think. Sander 
think he signed a rookie contract last summer. Williams to Lamanby, 138 for three. Lamanby with that two moved on to 54. He doesn't look very old, was he? 18, 19, something like that? I think he's 19, yeah. Yeah, 19. So, yet to make his Lancashire debut, but young wicketkeeper batter who's, uh, let's say, part of the part of the team now and signed his first kind of rookie contract a couple of years back. Williams to Lamanby, again, comes solidly forward. Do you think he'll stay here? Given that George Bell, well, the man in possession, yeah. is only very young and yeah, that's true. highly regarded. And there's George Lavelle as well, who's kept wicket for Lancashire last season again. They well thought of. Yeah, it's it, tough, isn't it? Mm. <laughs> Somerset like have got the sa same problem, you know, with, with very promising young cricketers who can't get in the first team. And it, you know, there will be uh, other counties, probably in the second division. Would be only too eager to snap them up. Williams bowls and Lamanby's looking for a single. It might have been a single there, but uh, Curly Cadmore not interested. Just stood his ground at the non striker's end. 138 for three. Just the two runs from that over. Nine overs, one maiden, one for 39 to uh, Will Williams. And we have had, what's the time? Just over half an hour's play. And nothing so far, Scott, to suggest that um, this isn't going to end in a draw. Yeah, that's that is the that's where the safe money is at the minute, isn't it? But you know, we see lots of these games that we think are heading one way, and they might they might turn, and something else happens. But 89 overs left, lead 173. That would feel like it's the uh, likely likely outcome at the minute because you're looking for a little burst of wickets in the morning session but nothing so far as Colin Cadmore plays up towards um, mid-off where Luke Wells fields and there is no run and 38 for 3 73. Take a look at uh, the Derbyshire Gloucestershire game in a moment. It's been badly affected by the by the weather. It's my mood in balls. Oh, that's Colin Cadmore pushing through to the keeper. No run. Lead of 173. Creeping back to his mark. Just a second game back from injury for Saki Mahmoud does represents a very good chance clearly to lead the attack and try and take some wickets on this final day, but he's just building back to full fitness. It will take some time, I'm sure. Call the cabin off the back foot defends to uh, to cover and there's no run. Sun George still going in the Devon coast to coast. Excellent. He's Excellent. got 90 miles and 27 hours and a half gone. Right. And <laughs> another 20, oh. 20 miles across Exmoor as well. He's, in, he's near Tar Steps on Exmoor. Those of you in the West Country will know where Tar Steps is. And where did he sleep last night? Oh, he kept going. He kept going through the night? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know whether he, whether he had a nap at, uh, at any stage, but yeah. Blimey, exactly. <laughs> I, think, I think he's completely bonkers. Absolutely is. I didn't want to say anything. He's your son, but he's <laughs> <Yeah>. completely crackers. <laughs> he's, he's in about 15th, I think, in the um, the coast-to-coast -coast race. <laughs> Mahmoud just altering the field there, pushing out a fielder towards deep backward square legs. There's two fielders on the leg side boundary, front of the hotel. Fine leg, deep square. That's a run down to third man by Corley Cadmore. Nice shot. Yeah. Yes. Up to 11. It's 100, 116 miles, right. and they're allowed a maximum of 40 hours in which to do it. And George was targeting 33 hours. <laughs> <laughs> over some, uh, over Dartmoor and Exmoor, and 
they both take a bit of uh, crossing, e even walking, let alone, I think it's a mi mixture of walking and running. Must be puddled. Mm. <laughs> Lamanby, the left-handers back on strike. He's going to come over the wicket to Tom Lamanby. Just plays neatly off the front foot. And uh, defends the ball. Trickles down past the umpire. No run. And get a further progress support. His sister, Joanna, is waiting to meet him at Withypool, which again is in the heart of Exmoor. <laughs> so more. <laughs> a further George bullet bulletin a bit later on. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you can track his progress. Yeah, yeah it's very, very good, isn't it? I wonder what supplies he's taken. What's in his rucksack? He must I have a few. don't know. It's something for all occasions, wouldn't you? Yeah. Mahmood bowls full but wide. Kendall uh, mint cake, probably. That's what <laughs> okay. that's what the mountaineers take. Isn't Is it? All oh, right. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Kendall mint cake. That's the end of the over. One thirty-nine for three. So a lead of one hundred and seventy-four runs for uh, for like I should mention that Derbyshire Gloucestershire game in uh, Division Two. Yeah, lost the, f the the first day because of the weather, so the game is heading towards a draw. You would think there. Gloucestershire two sixteen for five. That's their first innings. Replying to Derbyshire's declaration, they made two fifty one for nine. Declared Derbyshire. There's lots of rain around in Derby, unfortunately. So that's in Division Two. We mentioned the Durham Yorkshire game. There's one more Division Two game, which is Leicestershire against Sussex, which we might take a look at as well. Here we got uh, another over from Will Williams. Somerset have added 25 to their overnight 114 for three in just under 40 minutes. So just carrying on in sort of normal ways. This is pushed into the offside looking for a single. Is uh, Coda Cadmel isn't there. Stephen Croft is very quickly in like this Anthony with the keeper standing up the way that Williams is bowling here mm. Belk standing up well as we observed he was he has been standing out of his crease Coda Cardinal George Bell will keep him honest now pleasant sunshine here at Old Trafford as Williams is in and bowls and defensive shot from Coda Cardinal doesn't look as if Somerset are going to try anything is particularly extravagant. I don't think they're going to take many risks in setting up some sort of target. As they could even bat through the day. Yeah, good. Yeah. Yeah. Which would be disappointing, I think. It'd be good to see. Uh, at least a couple of fight bold! And... Uh, Kola Cadmore playing a defensive shot, just pushing forward and the ball nipping back between bat and pad and knocking back the off stump. In fact, I think he might have beaten the outside edge. But, uh, it certainly nipped back. And that's the end of Tom Kola Cadmore. Perhaps he would have been better advised to have been a bit more aggressive. He's gone for 11, bowled by Will Williams. It's 139 for four. That's a, an excellent plan that Lancashire put together there to call the cab more. I think Williams has bowled beautifully to him. I think Bell standing up, just cramping him for room, not allowing him to use his feet and get out the crease. I think that's just a really well executed plan from Lancashire. Yep. And Williams has bowled beautifully in that little spell to call the cab more. He just couldn't find a way, call the cab more, to kind of release the pressure that Williams was cranking up. Well, I think um, any real hope of Som Somerset batting aggressively to set up a uh, some sort of run chase has just disappeared with Tom Kona Cadmore into the dressing room as uh, James Rue can play attacking shots but I'm sure his priority will be to stay with Tom Lamanby to make this game safe mm. Somerset do not want to give Lancashire a sniff no I think that I agree entirely and that's kind of taken the possibility of Somerset trying to progress to any great extent out of the equation don't want this Somerset will not want this to kind of unravel here they've put a lot of hard work into this inning so far led by Lamanby and Abel yesterday so yes safety first I think at the moment this this moment in time for Somerset there's an opening 
for Lancashire, if they can get Rue early, Rue, as we, as we know, as we watched the other day, was battered beautifully in the game. He seems to score runs all, all the time against Lancashire. So if, they, if Lancashire can get Rue early, they'll, they'll, they'll fancy perhaps be able to force something here. Well, these are the last two specialist batsmen for Somerset. We've got the all-rounders still to come. In the shape of Casey Aldridge, Craig Overton, Josh Davey, and uh, Matt Henry, who, of course, scored a quick 50 not out in the first innings without looking entirely convincing. But uh, Lancashire can pick up another wicket now. They'll be right in this. This is down the leg side and not taken cleanly by George Bell. And there will be two byes, I suspect, as it's retrieved by Luke Wells. Two byes, it is. 139, 141 for four. Yeah, there's been quite a few byes in this game, but I, I certainly, you could certainly feel for George Bell on the first day. That looked <laughs> a pretty tricky task, keeping wicket on that, uh, on that Thursday. It was. That was down quite a long way down the leg side, but he'll be disappointed not to have stopped it. This is outside James Rue's off stump. He's following through well is um, Will Williams. He, he gets through the crease nicely when he's bowling. He uses the momentum of his of his run well. Looks a He's, he's no spring chicken, is he, Will Williams? Oh, is he 29, I think, from memory, something like that. Th yeah, 29. And uh, he's got first 52 first-class games to his name, mostly for Canterbury. This is tucked away down to fine leg by James Rue. It'll be cut off down there by the uh, young substitute, Hurst. And they have taken just the single. 142 for four it means that Rue will keep the strike Will Williams now two for 40 in 10 overs so yeah. relatively expensive but he's bowled really well this morning much better this morning than he did yesterday evening yeah a little spell there to call the Cavmore was a well devised plan all four wickets to fall have been have been bowled Davis First up, and then uh, Abel Bartlett and Caller Cavmore, Williams, Hartley, Mahmood, and Williams with the uh, wickets for, for Lancashire. Sakib Mahmood. And he's uh, going to, to continue. Mahmood and Williams unchanged so far in the first 45 minutes of play. That's uh, Tom Bailey, who he's talking to. So Bailey's on his 12th mm. man now. Yeah. So he's having a conversation with, uh, with with Bailey. Plenty of experience there at, uh, at mid-on for, for Lancashire. This is very uh, precise, this, isn't it? From the moon, just altering his field a little bit. He's, got, mm. he's gone for the two slips in the gully. Rue's the batter on strike. Here comes Mahmoud. It's left by James Rue. Pulls the bat out of the way. Through to uh, to George Bell. Some cheering in the first innings, James Rue. Second of the summer against Lancashire. He's third of his first class career. He got runs in at Southport last season as well. So he's he's enjoyed his, his time batting against Lancashire. Starts in again. Rue waits as Mamou bowls. Oh, he's made up a fraction there. Ooh. It's come back in towards Rue a little. Yeah. Came off the inner half of the bat and mm. deflected back down the pat at the pitch. Just have nipped back in a little bit that to Rue. He looks a much better bowler, Mamou, when he's bowling to that full length. Getting, he's getting a little bit of late swing. And uh, did well there, James Rue, to keep that out. Just anxious moments, these for Somerset. Another wicket now, and they'd be in the soup. <laughs> Mahmoud to, to Rue. 
onto his toes and defending this delivery back to the bowler. No run. Or possibly in the cart. <laughs> in the soup. <laughs> I've never heard that phrase before. Oh, there you are. In the soup. Yeah. <laughs> One four, two for four. And it's certainly a, you say a slight sense of anxiety for a Somerset fan at the moment. The mood and Williams are bowling well. Ruse just got out there to join Lamb and beat. A move back in to, to Rook. It's full of ball. Just brings him half forward and he he drives up to Villas at mid off and there's no run. Rook takes a walk away to square leg. Pace of the morning has certainly slowed down with the dismissal of Colin Cadmore, but actually I think the, the build-up of pressure just prior to it. Quite intriguing little passage of play now. Something is going to happen in terms of a result in this game. You suspect this little period now, next half an hour, 45 minutes, might, might well shape it. Change of line from Mahmoud. He's going to come around the wicket to Root. He goes back and defends against. Guides the ball away to square leg. George Balderson fields, no run. It's been good from Saki Mahmoud. Did admit the other day that he was hoping to to have played in more than the two. I think he but then qualified that by saying it will take time for him to get back up to full fitness and mm. maybe just as kind of slightly more gentle approach back into the game is what he needed. Forward goes Rue in defence. And there's no run. That's a maiden over from Mahmoud. 142 for four, lead of 177. Yeah, a decent over from uh, Mahmoud. That last one just sort of almost floated up outside off stump. Now, Tim Symes on Twitter says, looking forward to you mentioning the match between these two sides at Taunton 30 years ago, back in 1993, when Marcus Triscothic made his Somerset debut and so did uh, Mushtaq Ahmed. Somerset made 195 in their first innings. Mark Lathwell, 71. Lancashire replied with 222. Michael Atherton in the side. Gihan Mendis, Nick Speak. Somerset were then bowled out in their second innings for 114. Nobody much getting any runs, which meant that uh, Lancashire had 88 to win as Williams is in and bowls to Lamanby, who plays that into the offside. And they were bowled out for 72. <laughs> <laughs> With a certain Andrew Caddick taking nine for 32. So what year was that? 93. 1993. Tr Triscothic on debut made three and one. Michael Atherton in the Lancashire second innings caught Tavare, bowled Caddick naught. <laughs> Mike Watkinson was uh, th the... Um, Lancashire's main hope in that second innings, he made 39 before he was bowled by Andy Caddick. This is pushed into the offside. Think about a single that's not there. A good piece of fielding by Josh Bohannon. Yes, quite quite a game that must have been. I, I didn't see it myself, I must say, but um, good win for, for Somerset. I'm not sure that on this pitch, history is about to repeat itself. Well, even as things stand, Lancashire would need 178. And this is run off open face, not fielded cleanly by Hartley, but they, they didn't take a single. It was a very comfortable single there. No doubt mindful of the old adage, don't run on a misfield. <laughs> but uh, 142 for four if Lam if uh, Lamanby's out to the next delivery they will regret not taking that single yes thanks Tim for reminding us of that happier memory for Somerset supporters than for Lancashire ones this is pulled away through the onside handsome shot by Tom Lamanby 
Williams just dropping short, and he's not fast enough to um, to drop it that short. And Lamanby latched onto it and pulled it away fiercely through a straight mid-wicket for four runs. Doesn't often drop that short, Williams. No. A bit of a rarity, but as you say, he's got all the time in the world to play that, hasn't he? Just a little bit short and muscled away through mid-wicket. Powerful looking shot. 146 for four, he goes on to 58. Williams going around the wicket now to Lamanby. This is just short of a length. Good pace, a little bit quicker that from uh, Williams. Bent his back there. Played out into the uh, onside by Lamanby. Very pleasant day here mm. at uh, Old Trafford. Hardly any breeze at all. The flags on the pavilion, the Union flag and the St George's flag hanging limply from their flagpoles. High cloud, it's not really cloud at all, it's sort of, uh, there, there we are, there's the Union flag hanging limply from its flagpole. <laughs> <laughs> As Wilkinson is in a bowls and Lamaby runs this down to third man. Wide third man where it's fielded by George Balderson. And they take another single, Lamaby moves on to 59. Another over ticks by and it's 147 for four. The lead now 180. 82. Durham against Yorkshire, by the way. It's come down to Durham needing two runs to win and Yorkshire need one wicket. Ooh. That's a Martin Emerson will be on the edge of his seat. <laughs> the, the nine down. In fact, I think they've won. They've him. just done it, haven't they? There, yeah. there it is, yeah. They've got over the line. They've reached their target of 246 to win with one wicket remaining. Great finish in that match. Yeah. Terrific result for Durham as well. Excellent win for, yeah. uh, for Durham. We're going to have a bowling change. We are. George Balderson replacing Saqib Mahmood. So the first bowling change of the of the morning. And here he comes in to, to Lamanby. That's uh, left. Taken by Bell, no run. 147 for four. I'm sure that everybody is aware, but if you're not, and if you're just perhaps joining our coverage either on Lanx TV or the BBC Sport website and app for this fourth and final day, Lancashire are still a bowler light. Anderson unable to take any further part in this uh, in this game. Any further news on his no. state of health? No. The only update was he's being assessed. Is uh, Balderson forward goes Lamanby that's pushed away into the offside. No one I saw him this morning. He was out. He was watching the, the players warm up this morning. So he was out with his teammates. He wasn't warming up. He wasn't doing anything. He was just out there watching his uh, his mates warm up. So he's obviously still in and around the ground. But yeah, no James Anderson. So they are a bowler light, and it's <laughs> quite a significant bowler yeah. that they're light as well. Uh, Balderson oh that's edged down towards third man it had Hartley leaping away to his right hand side and there's four runs in between the gap where Mitchell at first slip and Hartley is located yes he didn't get a hand on it but um, it was that sort of shot that got uh, Lamaby out in the first innings Although the one that he got out to was even wider than that one. Mm. It was full and wide. That was a good length ball um, going across his bows. And he went after it and fortunately nicked it over the top of slips. Balderson to Lamanby plays forward and defends. And there's no run. Yeah, actually, the, the, in the first things, it was a pretty spectacular catch from Rob Jones, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah, he was on his 12th man. his head at yeah. um, second slip. 151 for four. Brought up the 150. Did that, uh, that edge down to third man for four. The lead is now 186. Balderson for Lancashire. Right arm over the wicket to Lamanby, the left hander. It's angled across him. It just rocks onto the front foot. Pulls a bat up above the shoulder. And the ball travels into the gloves of George Bell, and there's no run. 
As you can see Tom Hartley on screen, the second slip, just twirling his arm, arm over. So we might be seeing the left arm spinner in the not too distant future. Which will be interesting because it'll give us a pointer as to um, how much of a threat Jack Leach is going to be. Final ball of the over for Balderson. That's just running shot. it down to third man, but as Anthony said, that's a shot where he's, he's in control of it and steering it very deliberately and safely into the ground, just through the gully region for a single. And takes his total up to a 64 not out. And it's 1 5 2. Uh, for four at uh, the end of that uh, over so the lead of 187 Colin Smith on Twitter important double sporting header in Manchester today I'm more confident in Somerset doing the business given sensible batting than I am Everton because Everton I presume are playing Manchester City this afternoon they are yes yeah. I thought it was at Goodison Bar but oh is it I, th mm -hmm. I thought it was but it is, but yeah. yes, it's still a, still a significant game, I'm, I'm sure. Yeah, I think if we said important double sporting header for Manchester yes. today. Yeah. Yeah. Or for Mancunians, or for Lancastrians. <laughs> <laughs> Tom Hartley's going to bowl from the uh, Anderson end. We must have had just about coming up to an hour's play. And uh, we have had... 13.4 so far. Hartley bowls. This comes off the inside part of Lamanby's bat all along the ground out to Young Hurst, the uh, substitute fielder, who is patrolling the deep square leg boundary. Another run to Lamanby. Moves on to 65, equaling his best score of the season thus far. It's called a century against uh, Lancashire in the second innings down at Taunton towards the end of the uh, 2021 season. Ru oh, edges. It went all along the ground between wicketkeeper and slip, and it's gone for four. But that was, in fact, his buys. His, it, ooh, I thought he got a nick on that, I must say. It just it went, it kept very low and went between George Bell's legs. It did, yeah, it's a nutmeg, wasn't it? Yeah. Can't really blame him for that. That, was, that's, well, that will have encouraged uh, Jack Leach. Mm. Just a little bit of uh, inconsistent bounce. This is tossed right up, encouraging Rue to drive. He does so, but without timing. So four runs, 157 for four, but they're buys, not runs for James Rue. Hartley bowls. It goes for the reverse sweep and gets it. Four runs. I'm not keen on the reverse sweep. <laughs> it was going to do him for, for I mean, I don't mind, you know, white ball cricket, fair enough. You know, they, all, they all play it. And good luck to them. It's a very important weapon, but not sure this is entirely the, uh, the moment to be unfurling your reverse sweep <laughs> although he did he certainly middled that to James Rune this is a shot he plays well it brings him five runs 161 for four Hartley bowls again it goes for the reverse sweep again and there's a big appeal for LBW oh, goodness me <laughs> <laughs> I don't know let's have a look at this I don't know it's not oh. Here comes Hartley again in and bowls and Rue this time back on his stumps. This is a nice shot, just punching it off the back foot. It'll only be a single as uh, Dame Villas fields. End of the over, 162 for four. The lead goes on to 197, 65 for Lamanby. Let's just have a look at this. It's going down, in fact. It wasn't a particularly convincing appeal but even so it's a risky shot to yeah. play yeah well, it is. if you miss it you can be LBW and, and top edge it you're gonna be you could very well be caught Dam and be just just having a word with young James well, it'll be interesting to see how Hartley and what impact Hartley can make with the uh, with the ball it's a really good impact with the 
with the bat so far this season. His contributions with the bat is worth his place in the team just for his batting. Mm. But what can he do on a fourth day pitch? Whether there's too much or there's much help from out there, I'm not so certain, but maybe just a little sign. That's jabbed away into the onside by Rue. That's an excellent stop by Stephen Croft. Interesting shot, that as well. It's one of his own making, I think. That's uh, played it with a, a straight bat out into the onside. Good piece of fielding. Prevents the run. As Scott goes off to provide listeners to BBC Radio Lancashire with an update. This is driven that's by Rue, not timed up to Dane Villas. It's an inviting looking delivery, wide outside off stump, almost on a half volley length. The, uh, the off drive was a perfectly legitimate way of playing it, just didn't quite get hold of it. Here comes Balderson again in and bowls, and this is a half cock drive out into the offside to Luke Wells, who's come out of slips and is patrolling the extra cover area. We've got a slip and a gully, backward point, cover point, shortish extra cover, mid off, mid on, Josh Bohannon, mid wicket, and long leg. It's the field for George Balderson to James Rue, he's in and bowls, and Rue covers up, plays it back to the bowler, and there's no run. Dave from Cork, morning Dave, formerly Grumpy Gibbs says, uh, agree wholeheartedly with Gibbo, Somerset could lose this easily from here. Well, that's still a possibility, the lead is pushing on to uh, 200, but there's still plenty of overs left in the day. 82 after this one. This is driven by Rue, but not convincingly. Didn't quite get to the pitch of the ball and it came off the inside part of the bat. Back up the pitch to the bowler. Decent crowd. Smattering of uh, spectators in the stand beneath the uh, Point Conference Centre. There's Balson in and bowls. This is pulled away. It's in the air. It's safe, but it wasn't timed at all. They'll come back for two runs as Bo Bohannon retrieves it from the uh, straight mid wicket boundary. But, uh, James Rue moves on to eight and the score on to 164 for four. So Lancashire would need 200 if Somerset were to be bowled out now. But not a convincing shot, that from James Rue. It wasn't quite short enough for the pull shot. Hartley's going to bowl another over. He's yeah, just uh, reviewing the, uh, the crowd situation. Good smattering of supporters sitting in the stand in front of the pavilion as well. And I'm sure tractor driver must be over there somewhere. Oh, we found him yesterday, didn't oh, we? Oh, sorry, we must call him tractor driver. Just tractor. 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 He took some filing, though, didn't he? He, he did. I managed to locate him in the end. Here's Tom Hartley to, uh, to Lamanby. Oh, oh, slightly awkward way to play. Kind of going back and trying to work it to the leg side. Into, caught in two minds, yeah. I think, there, Tom Lamanby. Ended up not really playing it at all. Slip and the leg slip in place. Hartley, left arm over the wicket, balls forward in defence. Mm, a little bit of turn there. A bit of turn. Took the inside edge onto the pad. Hartley back in, balls again. And he's given some chance to watch this, isn't he? Lamb and he's going back, he's mm. given himself some little extra time. Plays it safely back towards Hartley, and there's uh, no run. In once more, forward <laughs> goes Lamb the ball squirts down to short fine leg, where Matt Parkinson fields. <laughs> Certainly ringing the changes with <laughs> <laughs> the 12th men. Nice to see Matt back <laughs> with his Lancashire cap on. Having had a brief spell 
on loan at Durham. A one-match loan. Oh, the ball's again. Some shot clipped away towards mid-wicket. It's fielded by Will Williams. And there's uh, no run. On 64 for four. Leg slip goes to short leg. And Lambie goes back and glances the ball down to, to Parkinson at fine leg. And again, there's no runs. It's a, a maiden over and I think enough in that to keep Hartley in the match at the minute. Yes, I was just uh, looking at the um, Lancashire batting lineup. And uh, left handers, Luke Wells is a left hander, George Balderson is a left hander. The rest, apart from Tom Hartley, all right hand bats. The, um, the significance of that being that Hartley is getting it to turn out of the rough outside the left handers off stump but there's a lot more rough outside the left handers off stump than there is outside the right handers with the bowling from the Anderson end this is defended by James Rue so Jack Leach would have something to work mm, with would. and of course you can make it make life awkward for uh, right handed batters by bowling into rough outside their leg stump which was a, a tactic that Jack Leach did employ in the uh, in the first innings. Balls and bowls, it's driven by Rue up to Dame Villas. 164 for four, the lead 199. 80 overs remaining in the day after this, so 78 are allowing for the uh, change of innings. No prospect of a declaration anytime soon. Can't see it coming before lunch, if at all. This is driven, well, not driven, pushed into the offside by James Rue and the uh, building work on the new hotel continues. <laughs> some banging and crashing as they're you know, taking down the, some of the scaffolding. Obviously, f finished whatever work they need the scaffolding for. It's looking ra rather more complete now, isn't it? <laughs> than it did uh, start of the match then they're working well as Balderson is in and bowls and gets James Rue in a spot of bother with that one just coming back into the left hander I've got a message about that hotel because we, we were wondering whether or not um, w when it would be finished and when it would be open there was a AGM on Thursday at the club and mm -hmm. in that meeting it was um, it was said that the, the first floor and seating will be open for the Ashes and the rooms, hotel rooms, by the end of the autumn and the rest of the of the complex early into into the new year. Mm. Good work. Balderson in a bowls. This is driven. It's floated right up there, inviting the drive. And James Rue, again, not entirely convincingly, played the drive. It's in the air for a time. Dame Villas fielded it at a deepish mid-off just wonder whether there would be the case for that to short straight yeah. mid-off that we saw posted in the uh, in the first innings that shot will encourage the prospect of that happening mm. there's Balderson in a bowls and Rue playing that from the crease out to the offside that's a second successive maiden over Balderson, nine overs, two maidens done for 30. Hartley at the other end, 11 overs, two maidens, one for 37. 65 to Lamb would be eight to Rue, 164 for four. The lead remains 199. Yeah, just a little passage of quite kind of calm, slow progress at the moment, but the wicket of Colour Cadmore certainly slowing Somerset down and perhaps kind of altering their. their view on how this get this day could progress it's been cautious it's been careful watchful so far oh he's coming down the pitch to Hartley he'll have a little s skip towards the bowler and eases it through mid on for a single and uh, that gets the lead to exactly 200 a ripple of applause <laughs> must be some Somerset yeah. supporters <laughs> yeah we haven't heard tractor this morning. 
Oh, it's Somerset. Tends to be more vocal when Somerset are in the field than when they're batting. Shot. Yeah, Rue sweeps out towards deep backward square leg. Where Hurst fields. And Rue moves on to nine, 166 for four. Yeah, so we got two subs on. Who yeah. are they on for? Well, I need to ask well, we know one of them, obviously. Yeah, it, but Jimmy Anderson. Anderson. Yeah, yeah. So Hartley's into uh, to Mitchell. And uh, he pushes it back to the ball, but there's no run. Can we work out who the other one? Can we see Saki Mahmood out there? I don't think we can. No, can I don't we? think we can. Yeah. Hartley to uh, to Lamanby again, shuffling down the pitch and working it to mid wicket. There's no run. I think it's a good move from Tom Lamanby to use his feet. It's a bit of a sitting duck with uh, if he hangs in his crease with Hartley targeting that uh, rough. Whipped to the leg side again by Lamanby. Gets through for one. Moves on to 67. Score to one six seven for four. This is highest score of the season, Tom Lamanby. James Rue back on strike. Hartley in. Balls. Rue looks to try and drive. Could easily have dragged that back onto his, his stumps. Just tossed up a little bit more that by Hartley, that last delivery. Just encouraging Rue to try and drive. Yeah. Two left handers, of course. So. Ideal scenario for the slow left armor. Bowling over the wicket. Targeting that quite big patch of rough left by the bowler's footmarks. Hartley has looked the more likely to make the breakthrough these Somerset's the last two specialist batsmen, so it's an important partnership. Balderson is going to be bowling to Lamanby outside the off stump. Good ball, and uh, Lamanby this time resisting the temptation to to have a drive at it. If I was George Balderson, that's where I would be aiming F on a full length mm -hmm. outside his off stump. Because, as we saw during the first innings, while he does have a great deal of patience, it is not unlimited. And sooner or later, he would go after one of those outside the off stump. Balderson in bowls, and that's a good, good leg delivery on off stump, which is defended by Tom Lamanby, who wanders away towards. Square leg umpire, Tom Lungley. Umpires haven't really had anything to do this morning. No, they haven't. Easy, an easy Sunday morning so yeah. far for them. Just been a couple of appeals, neither of them. Very close. Balderson is it in and bowls. There you are. That's the, <laughs> the ball outside the off stump. And he did go after it. And he got plenty of bat on it. But there's a man out at... Uh, Deep backward point, so it's just a single to Lamamu. Moves on to 68, 168 for four. The lead 200 and three. And I think these these two are targeting, targeting, getting through to lunch. Make the game safe. Not that it will be safe necessarily by lunchtime. Balls and in and bowls, and James Rue. Plays that up to Dane Villas at mid-off. Not seen any of um, Daryl Mitchell yet, have we? Might might replace uh, George Balderson after this this spell. Got wickets in the first innings. Daryl Mitchell three for thirty-two. Balderson in and bowls. And this is a nice shot into the offside by James Rue. Just waited for that, punched it away, but fielded by the uh, substitute. Some Hurst. Sometimes if it's your game, it's your game, isn't it? It's, it's wicked some runs on his debut, Mitchell. Might just be worth a little go with Mitchell. He's enjoying a terrific uh, debut. Three wickets in the first innings. Maybe he could be the one that breaks the partnership Balderson in and bowls and this is 
nicely driven into the covers, but straight to uh, Luke Wells, who feels end of that over 168 for four. That was the 47th over of the innings. 76, is, is, or is it 78 overs remaining in the day's 78, play? yeah. Mahmoud's coming back on, but uh, Williams is going off now, so Parkinson's still staying out there. Hartley, one for 40 from 12 overs. Just a sign that he's causing one or two difficulties for these two batters. Lamanby comes back and works the ball to uh, backward square leg. It's through for a single to 69 not out, 169 for four. So Hartley's got uh, Josh Bohannon under the helmet at forward short leg and Luke Wells is at slip. He's pushed uh, Bolson to deep backward point. Into Rue, looks a sweep. So this attacking shot's not really coming off at the moment, uh, James Rue. Tried a couple of reverse sweeps and time a conventional sweep. And through to Bell, Hartley balls again. Sweeps. And gets runs. Mahmoud chasing after it. And turn and come back. And run two, James Root. Moves on to 11. On 71 for four. Running between the wickets, not entirely convincing. Just uh, exchanging glances there, Tom Nowen being James Rue. It was a comfortable mm -hmm. two there, but. It was certainly a feature Moments of Lamanby and Abel, wasn't it, when they were yeah, batting they yesterday? Yeah, bat they batted very well together. And running between the wickets was good. Well together. Yeah. But uh, Daryl Mitchell has been the um, the best runner between the wickets that we've seen. Tom Hartley. And uh, Ruse paddles the ball around the corner. Parkinson comes stomping up from backward square leg to field. It's a 172 for four now. Lamanby be back on strike. It's, uh, taps the bat. And Hartley's in and bowling. Shuffling across the stumps and working it to the leg side. No run. So one ball remaining. And then that's it. Uh, Lamb and be coming towards Why Hartley didn't they again. take a single there? <laughs> no, he's pushed up towards mid on and <coughs> entirely poor. certain. That's That's why poor. They, I didn't cross for one, but it's the end of the over. Lead of 207. 172 for four. I suppose they mm. won't have batted very often together, mm. these two, given that uh, Lamb and B opens and James Rue comes in at uh, number six and also, James Rue is only in his 12th game for Somerset. So, there isn't much of an understanding between them at the moment. So, Balderson will eventually bowl this over after a long chat between Josh Bohannon and um, Dane Villas. Is Bohannon the sort of de facto vice captain? Well, I don't know if there, if there is an. Yeah, a, a, a an official vice captain, but he's, he's been quite busy, hasn't he? He has. Balderson then to Rue, drives uppishly but, uh, to Luke Wells at extra cover. Bohannon's coming across to have he another is. word. A chat with his skipper. With his skipper. He's obviously spotted something. And, uh, I wonder if we're going to see a change in the field, or possibly a change in the uh, line of attack. No obvious field changes. Of the two batsmen, James Rue is looking the more vulnerable at the moment. He's looking to attack, but not really timing the ball particularly well. This time it's a much better shot and a good stop by Luke Wells moving to his left, which is appreciated by his teammates. Normally fields at uh, first slip, does Luke Wells? Well, that's yeah, he, is he first slip if Keaton Jennings is playing? Yeah, or? he is, yeah. 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 Jennings at second. Ball 
Harrison. Into Rue, who turns this away nicely through the onside. A flick of the wrist to get that wide of, uh, of Bohannon, at, uh, who's quite wide at uh, mid-on. And a uh, nice shot by James Rue. Brings him four runs, much more convincing. 176 for four. Plenty of bottom hand in that, mm. wasn't it? Yep. Good looking shot. Actually, think about. It. I think Jennings actually just fielded at first slip because Jennings is squad number one. Hartley's two, and Wells is three, and sometimes they're all in one, two, three order. <laughs> Balls and bowls, and this is pulled, and for four more. That was a, f a nice shot as well. Short arm pull to a ball just short of a length. It wasn't that short. Didn't wasn't the the obvious shot to play to that particular delivery, but. Uh, onto it very quickly was uh, James Rue. So signs of uh, some aggression here from these two Somerset batsmen. 180 for four, the lead now 215. I suppose it's shot enough, isn't it, really? You just don't need to get it too wrong, do you? Certainly on a well. pretty placid pitch like this. Muscled it away for four more. Balderson. And scurrying in, he's there and bowls, and this time Rue contents himself with a defensive shot. Back up the onside of the pitch, 20 from 39. James Rue with three fours, 69 from 133. For Tom Nullenby with seven fours and a six. Coming up to the last ball of the 49th over, 76 overs remaining in the day after this. This is driven sure. back down the ground. That'll be a third boundary in the over. Villas in pursuit, but he won't overtake it. And uh, nice shot, over-pitched on that occasion from George Balderson. Over-correcting from mm -hmm. having bowled a little bit short earlier on in the over. And uh, 184 for four at the end of that over. Yep, strange sort of shot, wasn't it? Was a conventional he straight drive. It he's, was he's played some quirky shots in that he over, has, hasn't he? he has. Played with, almost with a horizontal <laughs> bat, straight straight drive with a horizontal bat. But it wasn't a, a sort of baseball shot, which you see them sort of smashing the ball down mm. like a like a forehand at, at, at tennis. It's more controlled than that, but mm. he's got shots that are all his own, as James Room. <laughs> Invented by James Room. Mm. Trademarked by James Room. Oh, Hartley. He's in again. Mambi comes down the pitch, drills it towards long on where Mahmoud fields. Mambi moves on to 70. Great opportunity for Tom Lambenby to convert this 70 into three figures now. The ball's not doing much. Pitch is good. Nice pleasant day. Sin Rue get a ton, Sin Mitchell get a century. Can we see a third centurion of the of the match? And he's 70 not out at the non-striker's end. Rue is back on strike. And Hartley's in and bowling. And off the back foot, it's a good shot, four runs. Hit firmly through the offside. He had all the time in the world to play that shot, didn't he? Wasn't a very good ball from Hartley. 189 for four. I've enjoyed that route. On the back foot. Hammered firmly away through the offside for four. It's Hartley. In and balls fuller. Maybe a little bit quicker to him. It's left. And taken by Bell. Short legs disappeared now, so it's just the one slip. Bannon was at four short leg, but has retreated. It's Rue forces the ball back past the bowler. Puts the dive in to try and field off his own bowling, but can't stop it. Gathered by Mahmoud. Breeze just getting up at the moment. Mm. Slightly thicker cloud overhead. Hartley to, to Rue. Swept. And that's four more. He's tried the sweep shot on a couple of occasions, Rue. Gets it away on this, on this one. one. He did. Nice looking sweep for four more. Score moves on to 193 for four. A lead of 228 
It does all feel a little flat, doesn't it, out there? And it does all feel like it, the, the inevitable is going to happen yeah. at some point later on today. Well, I think Somerset, they want, they want to get the lead up above 300, I think. And then just have a bit of a dip and see, see what happens. Miss Hartley to, to Rue. Trying to force it out through the up, up, off the back foot through the offside. Villas gets across the ground quickly to, to field. And there's, uh, there's no run. That lead is 2-8 two, two at the moment with uh, 30 minutes to, to, until lunch. We're back on regulation times for lunch. 1 o'clock again today after 10 past 1 lunches on days two, 2 and 3. Well, if they were to be bowled out in this over, mm. Lancashire would need 229 at 3.2 runs and over. But the equation is going to get more challenging with every over that um, that goes past, and we are going to have a bowling change, and it will be Daryl Mitchell. Yeah, worth a worth a go. This isn't it. Mitchell bowled nicely in the first things. He's, he's just enjoying a game. It might just be a match. Where he can do no wrong. He bowled beautifully, actually, in the first innings. Got the ball to wobble around a little bit. Yeah. Got a slip in the gully. He's just uh, bringing George Balderson into a shortish extra cover. He's bowling to Lamanby. He's there and bowls full length, driven by Lamond, being very well fielded <laughs> indeed by Balderson. Well, that was an inspired piece of field placing. <laughs> Absolutely walloped it too, didn't he? He <laughs> did. It was <laughs> it's a good start. It was a juicy <laughs> half volley yeah. outside the off stump. And, uh, you'll feel he he's missed out for uh, Tom Lamond. Mitchell in and bowls oh, down the leg side. Getting a little bit of movement on the ball is um, Daryl Mitchell. What a great stop that was by George Balderson. Mm. Watching back on the replay. Certainly saved his side four runs. Daryl Mitchell, let's see what he's. Um, First class bowling is taking 91 wickets at 31.45. He's in and bowls and driven this time by Lamanby. Comes off a thick edge down to Matty Hurst at uh, third man. Deep backward point. Single is taking 71 to Lamanby. 194 for four. His uh, best. Bowling five for forty-four. So he's a he's a a batsman who bowls a bit. I think is probably the yes. a batsman yeah. who bowls. I think that's fair enough. <laughs> he's taken test test matches. He's played eighteen test matches for New Zealand, taking just three wickets. Doesn't get the chance to bowl very often in that very strong New Zealand side. New Zealand bowls. This is driven by Rue, a nice free-flowing drive on the up, out into the covers, fielded at uh, deepish extra cover by Will Williams. It's not quite as warm as it was no. earlier on, this crowd sitting quietly, most of them in shirt sleeves, sun hats. Pleasant day for watching cricket. More of a batting day than a bowling day. Oh, and there's a swing and a miss from James Rue. That was an unnecessary risk to take to a ball well outside his off stump. Didn't get very close to it at all. He does get a li he does get some action on the ball, does um, Daryl Mitchell. He did in the first things, didn't mm, he? He yeah. did. He's not the most accurate, but uh, he, he reminds me a bit of Tom Abel. Who again can can get the ball to swing? I mean, he'll he'll go for runs with with Tom Abel, but he'll also pick you up the odd wicket. Somerset are missing his bowling at the moment. This is not timed. 
by James Rue. Again, pitch right up, inviting the drive. It was driven, but Rue is looking ha oh, ruefully <laughs> <laughs> at his the bottom of his bat. <laughs> yeah. End of the over, 194 for four. The lead, 229. It was a maiden over from uh, Daryl Mitchell. No, there wasn't. It was one. There was one run, wasn't there, down to um, deep backward point. So he's conceded just the one run in his first over. I wonder if Dane Velas will be tempted to have a little go with Luke, Luke Wells well, before why not? lunch. Why yeah, not? I mean, great. He, did, he bowled down at Taunton, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah, he, he bowled quite a bit last season as well. well he only bowled he bowled two over seven times. Oh, okay, yeah, <laughs> two over three. That's right. <laughs> it's going to be left arm spinner, Tom Hartley, and he's going to continue. Been a little bit more aggressive to Hartley over the course of the last couple of overs. Mm. It's Lamanby on strike. Reverse sweep from uh, Lamanby. And there is a fielder posted precisely for the reverse sweep. Yeah, Daryl Mitchell there. Well, 94 for four. Hartley balls again. Comes towards the ball at Lamanby. Drives up to mid off. That's better. Yeah. Although, again, Rue was slow taking off. Lamanby played the shot and ran straight away. But Rue was a little bit slow to respond. Takes him to 72, no doubt. Rue's back on strike. They're going to send an extra reinforcement out towards the leg side. He's, he's swept quite well as Rue so far. Oh, Hartley's bowling, so there's a deep mid wicket and a deep backwards square leg and a short fine leg. Yeah, well Doesn't sweep here, just goes back and nudges the ball away through that vacant region that's been created. Very sensible batting. I'm just just, just thinking with those two men back on the leg side, there's all the room in the world just to playing it with the spin out into the onside and picking up the single. Nine, six for four. Again, Lama becomes forward and that's worked away to mid wicket where Croft feels. And there's uh, no run. 72 not out. Hartley bounces in, balls to Lamanby. It's worked to the leg side, just beats the reach of Bahanum, but it's okay, he's mate. Croft is there, backing up just behind him, and he completes the fielding. Again, there's no run. Final ball of the over. Hartley to Lamanby. And that's played away to square leg for a single, and he keeps the strike as well. So one nine seven for four. Lamanby on seventy three. Rue on uh, on thirty three. Okay. Twenty five minutes until the, the lunch interval. A lead of two hundred and thirty two runs. Well, seventy three overs left in the day. After one ball of the next over, it will be seventy effectively, allowing for the mm -hmm. change of innings. Craig Overton saying last night he he would need 85 to 90 overs mm. to bowl Lancashire out. It's looking more and more like yep. a draw. If Lancashire could get pick up a wicket, oh look, Ooh, there's the big there's bird. An aeroplane. That's a the big bird's landing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, outside the off stump. That must be close to being a wide. Which, which airline is that then, that, that plane is from? I think that's associated with Emirates Old Trafford. Oh, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> there we are. Coming back from somewhere nice and warm. Yep. My brother Adam is at Abu Dhabi, headmaster of school out there. So we do have Emirate connections. Is Mitchell in a bowls full of length, and this time they take the single. Lamaby is better at taking singles than, than James Rue because um, Dane Bellas is really quite deep at mid off. 198 for four. Lamaby on to 74. He's played very nicely, Tom Lamaby. 
under far more benign circumstances than he had to endure on Thursday morning. Jimmy Anderson steaming in under cloudy skies and a juicy pitch. Ball seaming around all over the place. This is handsomely driven by James Rue, but the, uh, the offside field is well defended. That was Will Williams at uh, extra cover making that stop. We've got, uh, well, yes, he is extra cover. He's sort of extra cover. He's extra, extra cover <laughs> <laughs> with, with uh, Bohannon at... Uh, uh, not Bohan, Balderson at um, a shortish extra cover. So you've got actually got two extra covers. As Mitchell Bowles brings this one back into yeah, Rue, who adjusts well, plays it out into the onside. Nothing too outlandish from these two at the moment. Occasional reverse sweep. But uh, they're certainly not on the charge. Uh, Somerset, I think, if, assuming they get through to lunch, we might see a burst of, of scoring for half an hour after lunch and maybe the declaration then. Mitchell in and bowls. Rue shuffles across to trigger movement that uh, Luke Wells remarked upon. At least I think it was, it was Luke Wells. It was either Luke Wells or David Lloyd Bumble who remarked upon that uh, just a slight trigger movement that uh, James Rue has just to get himself going moving he's still examining the uh, bottom of his made in taunton bat mitchell he's in and bowls down the leg side tucked away down to deep backward square leg It'll just though be a single as uh, Saqib Mahmood is back on the field, does the fielding. Rue will keep the strike. Another over goes by. It's 199 for four. The lead now 234. Looking at the game at uh, Canterbury. Kent have lost three quick wickets. Mm. Boo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so behind in the in the game. 127 for three, but they've lost Crawley and Compton relatively quickly. Here comes uh, Hartley to root. Was there a chance? Mm, possibly. Yeah, looking at Luke Wells' reaction at slip might suggest it was a chance. It was a pretty firm hit back towards the bowler. And bowls to. Rue, oh, he's got that in between <laughs> Luke Wells somehow. I don't think he hit it. I think that's did a bye. Or did, no, he oh, did. He, he did. got something yeah. on it. Yeah. So that brings up the 200 for Kent. 200 for four. Rue moves on to 35. And uh, Talking about what's happening elsewhere, looks like Surrey are doing the business again to, against um, Middlesex. Mm. They're on the charge, aren't they? 200 for four. Lamanby back on strike, 74 not out. Hartley in, balls. That's drilled firmly down the ground towards Mahmoud at long on. Lamanby moves on to 75 not out, 201 for four. Brings Rue back on strike. He wants to get a little thin bottom edge on that reverse sweep previously to get himself a, a single. Down on one knee and sweeping again for uh, for one out towards deep backward square leg. Two hundred and two for four. Uh, Lamb seventy five not out. Comes down the pitch and heaves the ball through mid on and keeps the strike as well. So seventy six to Lamanby. Ruse on thirty six. And Somerset a 203 for four. That's a lead of 238 runs. Middlesex 205 for eight. We 
which means that they are just 34 runs ahead of Surrey with only two second innings wickets in hand. So it looks like Surrey are going to go back to the top of the table. Yeah, currently occupied by Warwickshire after their win yesterday. They've got such a strong squad of um, Surrey, so that even if they get a few injuries, yep. England call-ups and what have you, they've got plenty of good reinforcements. Increasing numbers of them homegrown as well. Yeah. With the days of Surrey trying to buy in success are, have long, are long gone. Here we've got Daryl Mitchell in and bowls drive driven by um, Lamanby and he drove it just a little bit too firmly to allow the single he set off as if to pinch a single but uh, changed his mind pretty quickly he looks a fearsome character doesn't he Daryl Mitchell so five or six days growth on his ch on his chin and uh, buzz cut on what remains of the hair on the top of his head <laughs> he looks like a, a New Zealand all back this is stroked away through the covers and will be fielded by Will Williams a little clumsily but effectively enough it keeps them down to just a single 204 for four and his father of course John Mitchell was a New Zealand all back yeah. I was reading last night actually. His, his, his father was also a coach at Sale Rugby Club, mm, just up the road. Yeah. yeah, quite a few connections in the to the northwest to the yeah. Mitchell family. He looks like he'd be an aggressive. I don't know, open side <laughs> wing forward, something like that. <laughs> You'd want him on your side in a in a game of rugby. This is driven, but with a slightly crooked bat on that occasion by James Rue. It's one of his uh, less orthodox shots. Seemed to come right out the middle, judging by the speed with which it reached Josh Burnham at uh, mid-on. But certainly not a conventional on-drive. Maybe a little bit of late adjustment, given that uh, Mitchell is getting the ball to uh, to do a bit out there. He's in now bowls to Rue, and this is tucked away into the onside. There should be two here, and there will indeed be two as uh, Saqib Mahmood eventually does the fielding. 205 for four, Lamb be on to 77. It's a waving going on, trying to attract someone's attention in the dressing room. <laughs> Josh Bannon and Dave Bellas were both waving up towards the Lancashire balcony. Helmet, possibly. Mm. Mitchell. Nice, easy approach. Drive from uh, Lamanby up to Villas. And the cricket has just lost a little bit of an edge recently, hasn't it? Yep. These, <laughs> these two going along, you know. Taking advantage of the gaps in the field, not trying to go for the big shots, just ticking, ticking the scoreboard over. And Lancashire, who must have thought they were right back in it when they took the wicket of uh, Tom Cola Cadmore. Body language suggests that they're. Um, this is driven by L Lamb and B, and this time they're going for a single. It's not picked up cleanly by Dane Villas, who made the the. <laughs> The classic mistake of taking his <laughs> eye off the ball as he was lining up the stumps to have a underarm shy at the stumps with Lamanby bearing down on the, uh, the crease at the non-striker's end. Fielding pads, I think, was what they wanted. Ah, oh. maybe a little twirl of uh, of extra spin. Maybe a bit of Luke Wells. A bit of Luke Wells. Yeah. See a bit of Luke Wells before lunch. That's the, the game at Canterbury. We mentioned the Surrey on course for a victory. Hampshire will be hoping to to match them. Got Kent three down in that game, 141 for three. Yeah, they've got the big two out as well. They, they have, yeah. Crawley and Compton have gone. Kent still trailed by 137. Good to see Sam Billings back captain in Kent rather than um, playing in the IPL, which he could very well have done. But he decided, I uh, was with him down at uh, Canterbury last match of the season, he did some excellent summarising for us, and he said then that he was dedicating himself to Kent. Lambie comes down the pitch, stumping chance. 
Oh, he must have got back. Oh, what a moment. Oh, he must have got back. It wasn't. I don't think it was taken cleanly by George Bell. It wasn't taken. Ooh, oh. I still think he was out. <laughs> I think that. I think George Bell can consider himself hard done by. My instinct was that the he got the uh, got the bales off at the, at the second attempt, a fraction of a second before Lambert be back came down. Down oh, the pitch he comes. He's gone this time. Oh dear. Well. He made a bit of a mess of that as Lamanby. He survived a stumping chance just a few moments ago. And the very, very next delivery, he comes down the pitch again. And this time, Bell takes it and flicks off the bales. It'd be a relief for Bell that uh, he's been presented with a second chance. And Lamanby has been stumped for 78. And Lancashire absolutely needed a wicket before lunch. And they've got one, 206 for five. Let's take a look at it. Yeah. <sighs> Well, it was a it was a really good innings, spoilt by the manner of its ending. It was having having escaped the previous delivery when he should have been stumped, and possibly was stumped, but uh, the umpire giving him the mm. benefit of the doubt. Then he came charging down, and it was it wasn't a sort of it didn't come down with any real purpose. It was just almost as if he wanted to make a statement. And, uh, well, there you are. It's bizarre that, having survived the previous ball, mm -hmm. that he's then he's, he's coming down the pitch. It's a real shame. I thought he's batted really well across, yeah, the, across the match. And yeah, he's he, had a, he had 100 for the taking. Absolutely did, yeah, I agree. But out for 78, stumped by Bell off Hartley. Well, Lancashire needed a bit, of a bit of a boost, needed a bit of life injecting into them, really. A bit of hope, and maybe that's, uh, that opportunity has presented them with that. So what's the lead now? Two two forty one is the lead. So Lancashire would need two forty two. Somerset would be how many overs have we got left? Sixty nine after this one. It's only three and a half. So Somerset not out of the woods yet. No, so I still I, I have a feeling that you know the. 350 overs is the sort of target they'll want to leave. But it might be mm. 330 and 45. Casey Aldridge, the new batter. As Hartley comes around the wicket to him, plays off the front foot and defends, and there's no run. Yes, Aldridge batted, uh, batted very well in the first innings. He did against Lancashire in, in Taunton a few weeks back as well. Fuller ball, a little quicker, punched into the offside, no run. It was a 58. 58, 58 not out. out, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Game in, in Taunton. 206 for five, Hartley in balls. Forward goes Aldrich. And uh, there is no run. Gathered by Tom Hartley. It's been to be second wicket, two for 60 now. He's on the verge of a of a wicket maiden too. Final ball of the over. And he gets his wicket maiden. 206 for five. So lead of 245. We've got 10 minutes until we get to uh, the uh, the lunch interval. Yeah, 58 not out down at Taunton. 46 in the first innings here. So 104 against Lancashire for once out. So he's averaging 104 in the county championship against Lancashire this season, which is not bad going. A few of these Somerset batters like playing against Lancashire, don't they? <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, especially they like playing against Lancashire minus Jimmy Anderson. <laughs> yes, yeah. Is that the only caveat? <laughs> You're not allowed to pick Jimmy. <laughs> well, he, he got a five for Dan at Taunton. He did, didn't, didn't he? he? Yeah, and he was flat pitch. I think he would have got a five for in the first innings here today, at least, if he hadn't hurt himself. So, Daryl Mitchell is going to bowl the next over. How long have we got for lunch? Ten, Ten minutes. minutes. So probably three overs. Mitchell sends Mahmood back to long leg. He's bowling to the left-handed James Rue, he's in and bowls, and Rue strokes this into the covers, but uh, Williams at that uh, deep-ish extra cover position 
It's a good fielding yeah. position, that. It's well guarded, the offside, isn't it? Mm, There's not it much is. room for him to work the ball through. Yeah, we've got cover point, a shortish extra cover, and a deepish extra cover. No one patrolling the boundary. Daryl Mitchell in the sunshine. In and bowls to Rue, who plays this, uh, plays that peculiar sort of half drive, half turn of the wrists with his bottom hand coming into the shot, looking to uh, direct it past Josh Bohannon, who's fielding it to sort of wideish mid on to the uh, the left handed left hand right hand combination of course so all the more reason for rotating the strike Mitchell in and bowls and it's a slower ball changing his place nicely mm. waited for by Rue who with the uh, the fall of Tom Lamanby I, I think will probably go back into his shell focus on staying out this still be there at uh, lunchtime then someone said don't want to give Lancashire any more encouragement it would still be quite a, a, st a stiff ass 242 but by no means impossible on a good pitch Rue drives but won't get a run as it goes up to uh, Dane Villas captaining Lancashire in the absence of uh, Keaton Jennings, and from what Luke Wells said, it didn't sound as no. if Keaton Jennings is going to be back anytime soon. No, it's going to be a while, I think, isn't it? Hamstring strain. Still, I, I suppose you haven't got another championship match until early June. That's right, yeah. I think I Somerset's next match, where we've got Middlesex at Lords next week. Yes. Mitchell bowls, and this is driven by Rue, and there might have been a single there, but decided not to take the risk. Yeah. And then we've got Essex away at Chelmsford in the second week in June. Yeah, Lancashire's next championship match is in Southport. Oh, very nice too. Against, uh, against Hampshire. I was, uh, there was talk at one stage of this match being played I at Blackpool, wasn't there? I thought, I thought that was the case. I don't know whether that, that, that was ever likely or not. But they, I mean, they do have a championship match at Blackpool mm. in the summer. They play in Essex there. I've never watched cricket at Blackpool. This is driven and... Uh, not timed by James Rue. End of the over, 206 for five. That was a maiden over to uh, James Rue, and I think the previous over was a maiden over as well. So Somerset runs have just dried up in this uh, last little spell of play before lunch. 206 for five, 241 runs ahead. James Rue on 37. Aldridge yet to score. Yeah, it must be a it's at least a decade a bit since Lancashire last played a four-day match at Blackpool. I think it actually may be longer. I'm wondering whether it might, might be the 2011 season, the last time that they, they played there. It's been a while since we've watched four days of cricket at Stanley Park. That'd be good in July. Four, because Aldridge is Hartley continues. Yeah, there's two championship matches, isn't there? Kind of in between all the T20 yep. stuff through yep. May and June yep. and July. He balls forward is Aldrich and there's no run. So Aldridge on naught. Rue on 37. Hartley balls. Aldridge off the back foot. It's easy into the offside. Villas fields and there's no run. He's in past the umpire again. He's around the wicket and balls forward. Goes Casey Aldridge is a tall man. It's a good stride. Plays it with a straight bat, pushing it back along the ground, gathered by Hartley. In again, balls. Again, it's dabbed away calmly back to Lancashire's left arm spinner. And he's got one ball left of the of the over. Mid on two mid wickets, deep backward square leg, mid off cover. That's clipped out towards the leg side where Bohannon fields. And it's the end of the over. It's a maiden. It's 206 for five, so a lead of 241 runs. Yeah, and that over occupied no more than a minute and a half, I, I would say. Yeah, rattled through that, didn't they? They did. Yeah. Defensive shots 
six defensive pushes from uh, Casey Aldridge. So we'll probably get two more overs in before lunch. How many overs have we got left in the day? 67. So 66 after the first ball and less two. So the uh, rate, the required rate, theoretical required rate, pushing up towards four. Short. And it's hooked by Rue. He's got a top edge and it's gone over the wicket keeper's head for four distinctly streaky runs. A smile on Daryl Mitchell's face. Jeez. <laughs> Lucky so and so. 210 for five. Asked Daryl Mitchell about, what it, about facing Matt Henry last night and that. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. The battle of obviously their international teammates, their teammates in New Zealand, they're obviously good friends, and he did say he quite enjoyed it. So there's a lot of smiling going on between the, between the <laughs> two of you. <laughs> <laughs> Mitchell into Roo has moved on to 41, and he just plays that with Pat Angle down. Yeah, I asked um, Craig Overton, who's the quicker, you or, um, or um, Matt Henry? And he said, I. Henna's probably slightly, he said, but my bouncer's quicker. <laughs> <laughs> he gets plenty of bounce, doesn't he, big he Craig? Does, yeah. Well, I think he just put, he puts that extra effort into the bouncer, really hits, bangs it into the pitch. But, uh, yeah, Henna's is just a fraction quicker than Craig Overton. From the horse's mouth. This is punched back to the bowler by James Rue. I must say he looked... Um, as happy as I've seen him all summer, Craig Overton. He's not, he's not been um, at his best, and he hasn't, he hasn't borne much resemblance to a ray of sunshine. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he was all smiles last evening. As Mitchell is in and bowls, and Rue goes for a drive to a ball that wasn't there for the shot, leaving him outside the off stump. He was looking to hit that on the up, which is quite risky in any case, given the offside field that uh, has been set. And uh, not the shot really to be playing. Five minutes, well, two minutes before lunch. He did get himself out. When he got 89 against Northampton at Taunton, five minutes before T playing a reverse sweep. His excuse was that he wanted to move the game on. <laughs> keep the game moving. Yeah, keep the game moving. <laughs> but anyway, he's young. He'll learn. Two more balls in the over. Mm. Might just get another one. I don't think they're keen on it. No, it's... Uh, <laughs> Mitchell in and bowls. This is driven, but straight to uh, Will <laughs> Williams and that deep-ish extra cover position. No, I don't think Lancashire are in any hurry. It's now ticked over to 12.59. Yeah, it's going to eke out 60 seconds between yeah. uh, <laughs> between <laughs> deliveries here. Dame Villas giving the ball a very considered polish at uh, mid-off. I think the two batsmen are quite happy to settle for lunch as well yes uh, James yep. Rue has discovered that his uh, he just needs to make some adjustments to his cricket boots Mitchell was on the charge wasn't he he's coming he into was. ball he was <laughs> still saying 12.59 here he comes possibly the last ball before lunch driven off a thick edge down to deep backward point it still says 12.59 on the uh, scoreboard, so I guess we are going to get another over in. Uh, 211 for five. The lead now, 246. And 66 oh, overs remain. One o'clock. It's just ticked over to one o'clock. <laughs> oh, we're off. <laughs> oh. <laughs> how, how fortunate. How fortunate. So there we are, 211 for five. Uh, Somerset, they started this morning on 114 for three and they have lost the wickets of Tom Kohler Cadmore who was clean bowled by Will Williams for uh, 11 and Tom Lamanby who batted really nicely for 78 and then just had a rush of blood and came charging down 
the pitch twice to Tom Hartley. The second time he should have been stumped, and the, uh, the first time he should have been stumped, and the second time he was. So the match situation: Somerset have a lead of 246, 66. Oh, is it 66 or 68? 66. 66 overs remain in the day. The likelihood is that this game is going to be drawn, but with cricket, you never know. We'll be back with you in around about 40 minutes for the afternoon session. Indeed we will. We'll get catch you in around about 40 minutes as the players head off for lunch. We will do something similar. Welcome along to this edition of Beyond the Boundary. Uh, with me today is one of Lancashire's finest, Neil Harvey Fairbrother, who was a diminutive left-hand middle-order batsman for Lancashire and England through the 80s and 90s, played over 20 years cricket here at Emirates Old Trafford and was fundamental to Lancashire's one-day successes in those years. Well, Neil, nice to see you. Um, Good of you to come back to, to the old place. I said Neil Harvey Fairbrother. With those names and those, uh, <coughs> those Christian names that you were given by your mother, it was destiny that you would become a cricketer, surely. Um, well, I don't know about that. It, it, unbelievable that I ended up a left-hander as well, that's for sure. Um, but I think I did all right because our two favourite cricketers were Neil Harvey and Herbert Sutcliffe. So I think I did all right with my name in the end. I've been called a Herbert a few times. But, <laughs> but um, how, I mean, your mother and your father were obviously hugely instrumental in your development, um, not only as a cricketer, but as a person as well. I mean, uh, what's your earliest memory of, uh, of sporting uh, interest in the family home? Well, my dad played club cricket. Um, and as I was growing up, he played at Earlstown, which is Newton Lee Willows. Mm -hmm. So I can remember as a six, seven year old lad uh, going down there on a Saturday and a Sunday. Um, and my dad's teammates would throw me balls on the outfield and things like that. Um, Mum did the teas. Um, and that was how our, how our summer weekends were. Um, and that, that, I guess, is my first cricket memories and then when because we lived in in the village of Grappen Hall so Grappen Hall Cricket Club was clearly nearer than Earlstown and Grappen Hall weren't taking youngsters at that time till they were 11 years old and I think I was sort of nine or ten and dad managed to sort of squeeze me in and that's that's the junior section at Grappen Hall. You weren't just a, a, a good schoolboy cricketer you were a, a pretty good schoolboy rugby player as well. You played for Cheshire schools in both sports. Uh, which, was your, which was your favourite growing up? Um, it was 50-50. You know, I, I, I loved rugby, like I obviously still love cricket. Um, and the day that I signed here, uh, Jack Bond offered me a two-year contract and he said one of the things is that rugby will have to stop. Uh, and actually that was a, it was a sad moment and a sad day. And I, I played rugby at, at Lim Rugby Club um, and enjoyed myself immensely up there. I still have, have good friends from all that time ago through the, through the rugby connections. Um, and, it, you know, I used to go and watch. And I, th I think it was a good job it stopped. I remember coming to watch you once, and it must have been probably in 82, so you might have just played. You might have been in the winter of 82. Yeah. Anyway, I got there five minutes after the start to see you being helped off the field <laughs> <laughs> and that was the end of that well it happened a few times on the cricket pitch as well didn't oh, it oh gosh so did it ever I remember that one of your best innings ever in my opinion was at Chesterfield yeah when you got hit under the chin 
Was it Michael Holding? No, it was Ian Bishop. Oh, Ian Bishop. <laughs> Crikey, yeah. I remember no, he was well. fast. He was, well, before his bat went, he was rapid, wasn't he? He was. He was absolutely rapid. Um, and that was a quick wicket that day. Chesterfield, Queen's mm. Park, was one of the best pitches in the country, wasn't mm. it, at, at the time? Mm. Mm. And I remember you got hit under the chin and, a, and a, you had a, I think you probably had some stitches in the end. <laughs> and I remember, I remember saying, well, what's the matter with you? Get out there now. <laughs> in fact, I think I can remember that as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and it's it's purely so I batted with, with Foxy. Yeah. We were 10 or 20 for two and I batted with Foxy for uh, two or three hours. And I remember we were both flailing it around everywhere. Um, with our eyes shut most of the time, I think. Yes, it was pretty fearsome. Anyway, back to back to your your, your early years. So, rugby had to stop. Yeah. Um, uh, you made your debut here in in eighty two. But prior to that, you'd played uh, for Cheshire schools and club cricket at Grattan Hall. Yeah. Where was the leap between that and getting into Lancashire's? So I played. Obviously, I played at Grappen Hall, which was Cheshire. Went to Lim Grammar School, which was Cheshire, although the school didn't play much cricket at all. But that enabled me to play for Cheshire schools. So that was 13, 15 and 19 back in those days. Mm. Um, and I remember doing well as a 16-year-old playing in the under-19s. I did well against Lancashire under-19s. And I don't know if that was a bit of a catalyst for somebody at the club here to say, oh, there's a lad who plays for Cheshire that might be worth looking at. It's an interesting, because there's, there's always been a path. I mean, I was a Cheshire lad, played Cheshire schools and came here and played, I played in the Nets at Easter and had a club and ground game or two. But the, you were a contemporary of John Morris, weren't you? Didn't you play together yeah, for so, Cheshire schools? Yeah, so... And he didn't come here, did he? No, but he was from, I guess he was from well, Crewe. Crew, yeah. yeah, he was from the Crewe area. So yeah. we played all the way through together for Cheshire, and he clearly ended up at Derbyshire. Mm. Um, so, you know, it was, if you were minor countyish, it was, it was potluck, wasn't it, to mm. a degree. There was obviously a little bond between Cheshire and Lanx at the time, which I believe has got stronger as, as the years have gone on, thankfully. Um, and now there's a bit of a pathway, hopefully, for, for lads from our area. When, when did you become aware of your talent and, uh, and did you, did you have the will and the belief that you could make it as a professional sportsman, either as a rugby player or a, a, as a cricketer? I, th I think it's, it's something... I mean, I loved rugby. I loved playing football. I loved cricket. So it, it, was, just, it was just a hobby, and it was great fun to start with. Um, and I, it was around... We'd done the under-13s and the under-15s, and then I started playing for Cheshire under-19s early. And I immediately did well. So I think then, you, you know, you're two years young and you're doing well at under-19s, and all of a sudden you're thinking, oh, I mm. might be all right at this. Mm. Um, and then got invited down here, like you, played two or three club and ground games, and then, and then played a second team game. Um, and... <laughs> thought that I needed a new bat to play in the, the second team. So we went into Stockton Heath, which was a village next to Grappen Hall, uh, and there was a sports shop called Buller's Sports. Mm, yeah. And mum and dad took me in there and I bought a Grey Nichols bat for, for the second team game, and it was about three pounds too heavy. No. So coming to Old Trafford, it was here. We played Glamorgan seconds, and I couldn't lift the bat up. The ball was hitting the pitch and was quicker than anything I'd ever seen. So I had no chance. And the combination of the two, yeah. heavy, <laughs> heavy bat and a quick pitch, no, no, no good. No, not good. Not good. Not good. Oh dear. So that was a lesson uh, very quickly and early learn. You, you used grey nickels in your early, early days, yeah. didn't you? Yeah, very, very then you early. Moved on, then you moved on. But, yeah. Um, um, what, you, interesting, what weight of bat did you use then? <clears throat> so all the way through my career, it never moved from £2.8. So that was start to finish. Yeah. Clearly, through my period, there were people that used lighter and there were people that used heavier. Um, now, I think the generalisation is that the lads use £2.10, £2.11 bats, but they pick up 
they pick up so well now. The, the bats are so big and they pick up so well that you pick a bat up and you think it's 2.7 and mm. there's actually that much wood in it that it's heavier. Here's a speculative question. Do you think you'd have been a different type of player with a modern bat? Because you were, you were very much uh, a batsman who, um, who structured his innings around moving the ball around, placing it in gaps, etc., etc. Would you have been tempted to hit, um, play differently? Well, you never know, do you? You never know. I, I, do, I do think that when we played... If I didn't hit the ball in the middle, then there was no chance of it going over the boundary. Mm. These lads at the moment, they're, they're fitter, bigger, stronger, and they have bigger bats. So if they get half of it, it's still, it's still clearing the ropes, isn't it? Mm, that, you know, I, I never had that feeling. If I didn't middle it, it wasn't going anywhere. That is for sure. Probably made you the player you were then, actually, because you, 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 know, you had to be meticulous in, in the way that you, you chose your stroke. Yeah, I mean, I think I look back at the way I played and I think early on I tried to hit big balls a lot of the time. Um, and it, you know, I hit my fair share of sixes on, on, on this ground, not like the boys today, obviously. Um, and then I think realised that there was another way to play the game in one day cricket especially and that was to hit gaps and run mm. and run hard and that, that is how my game developed and then I had a period where I mixed both very well the hitting and the manoeuvring of a cricket ball and then latterly I think probably went too far the other way towards the end of my career where it was just nudging it around into gaps whereas the game perhaps was going the other way and that's when boundaries were needed. Were you aware when you were playing and you played 85 one day internationals for England were you aware that you were developing a style of play that was pioneering? You were, I think you were the first uh, whether you were to called it at the time, but certainly in retrospect, you were the first finisher in the international game. I don't think at the time you, you realised that. Um, the one thing that I enjoyed was the run chase. I enjoyed the run chase. I enjoyed being in at the end. And I enjoyed getting this team or the England team over the line if I could. Um, and I got immense satisfaction out of that and perhaps my game developed on the back of those feelings as well. You were a great manipulator of the strike though and also you were excellent at marshalling the lower middle order uh, to, uh, to chase down totals. Hmm. Well, it was great. The lower middle order here for many years uh, was full of strikers of a cricket ball. Um, which complemented often the way I was playing. And if I thought we needed a boundary or we needed the next over to go for a few, then we all had confidence in each other and whatever the advice was, the lads were taking it. So, you know, for long periods of time, there was Wazi Makram here, Mike Watkinson here, Warren Hegg here, Phil DeFratis, so all these lads, lower middle order, could all hit the ball into the stand. So when the time came, they were up for the challenge. Um, and we complemented each other well. Uh, we knew each other inside out and we trusted each other. Mm. Let's just go back a bit. 82, you made your debut, but you didn't do anything in your first game. You were called out of, <coughs> out of nowhere, basically. To Yeah, I was, I was actually playing for Grappling Hall on the, sat on the Saturday afternoon heard the phone go at about quarter to nine uh, and mum came running upstairs into the bedroom and said Jack Bond's on the phone um, and they want you to go in and play for the first team and I'd only played two or three second team games not scored a run so I s turned around to my mum and said somebody's having a joke with you <laughs> and she said no it's Jack Bond <clears throat> so literally jumped in the car came here and you were all in the nets at the back. Mm. Um, so I came up into the changing room, was hurriedly getting 
changed and it must have been half ten because you all came back in um, and all of a sudden I was surrounded by my heroes people that were playing for England people that had made the history of this club during the 70s and, and, and early 80s and I was absolutely dumbstruck um, knew nobody Clive Lloyd was captain that day <laughs> and he came over to where I was changing introduced himself he, he talked in this big deep voice didn't he yeah, he did, and yeah. I didn't understand he the word he was, yeah, well. I didn't know what he was saying <laughs> and he sat me down in the cinema seats that were, that were in the changing room and he put his arm around me um, and I felt obviously ever so small <laughs> when he was sat next to me and the day just went from there and we fielded all day um, and on the way home um, I had to stop the car and I was physically sick on the way home I think from the nerves of the day and, and everything that had gone on that day um, and then Monday afternoon when it rained and then Monday afternoon we chased Kent's total and I didn't bat uh, and David Lloyd got 150 um, and obviously Bumble at the time was at, at the end of his career yeah. and he opened the bat and got 150 it was a, I remember it being a wonderful knock um, there were two knocks early that, that stood out to me one was that day and then the first year on the staff we went down to Horsham and I, again I, it was only my third or fourth game uh, and Frank Hayes was at the end of his career as well and he got a huge hundred at Horsham um, 140 odd I think yeah, it was yeah. yeah against Imran yeah Garth LaRue yeah um, and that innings also stood out and those two were almost something for me to aim at um, and Frank didn't play much after that either no he didn't he, he, it's interesting you say that because that innings of Frank Hayes came after your debut innings, which yes. didn't, didn't occur until 1983. And you, you made 94 not out against Warwickshire. John Abrams was captain. He was. And there was, well, tell us, tell us about the scenario there, because 94 not out was a, a hell of a total. Mm. So, obviously, that was my first knock. Uh, my first four in first-class cricket was a bouncer off a spinner. So the last over before lunch, Norman Gifford, oh, yeah. Giff, yes. and he had a penchant for bowling the odd bouncer. <laughs> so he must have thought, well, young let this kid. young lad have it. Yeah. And he bowled me a bouncer and I managed to get it away for four. That was my first four in first class cricket. But later on that day, I think there was an agreement that we would come out at 250. And Bob Willis was captain of the was. He was. And I ended up batting with Jack Simmons. And I was 94 not out. And I think we needed four to get to 250 and Jack said we'll stay on now it won't matter we'll stay on till, till you get 100 and he hit a six and that was 250 and I looked around and Bob Willis was just walking off you know he was the op opposing captain he was just walking off and looked around again and could see John was in the doorway of our changing room um, oh. and nothing happened and everybody just walked off so I'm 94 not out and I'm walking off thinking, well, that's a great, I've had a good day here, 94 not out. <laughs> Got into the changing room and I remember you and Graham Fowler shouting as I went in and then Jack came in behind me and Jack threw his bat across the changing yeah. room. I've never um, seen Jack, it's mad. And Jack threw his, and he, he said something along the lines, if that's the way you want to play your cricket, you can all go and do one. Yeah. Um, and Clearly, people were having a go at John saying, why didn't, you, why didn't you keep him out there? It was a strange scenario, because I remember that clearly. And Bob just walked off, didn't he? Mm, absolutely. Because Bob, I, mean, I came to know Bob very, very yeah. well, obviously, over the, over the last um, 20 years or so. Uh, and that's exactly the sort of thing he'd do, you know. But there was a bit of mischief in him. Yeah. I think as he, as he got older, he probably realised it wasn't the nicest thing to do. No. Well, but he did, it, it affected you less than, than you probably didn't realise what was no, going on. No, I, I remember that night, we, went, we, we were staying up Hagley Road somewhere and we went in a Chinese. And um, there were about six of us round, round one of those big tables. Table, and yeah. I can remember that. And I was just, I, I was just pleased that I'd, that I'd <laughs> got double figures. You, 
You have got the best memory for games and occasions, instances, call it what you will, that I have ever come across in a cricketer. You and I played together for the best part of 10 years, and I have very little memory of these games. And you, you just come out and, and can, not only can you say who was bowling, I like, you, you would remember hitting your first four, yeah. but inconsequential, well, I think, inconsequential things. Where's all that come from? I don't know, but I can't remember yesterday now. <laughs> um, but I, I can still remember, you know, some of those things. And we got our own back on Bob Willis, didn't we, when we, when we won the 84 Bensons. And, oh, yes, we did. Um, and you were, you, were, you were out there at the end of that, mm, weren't you? Mm. That, was, uh, that was a fantastic day. It was about our only, it was our only success, wasn't it, for a great a period of time. Yeah, you'd just become a dad, hadn't you? I had the night before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ben was born on he the was. Friday night. Yeah. And Bondy, bless his cotton socks, wait, you all went down on a bus, I think, and he waited behind for me and brought me down in the car. Yeah. I yeah. didn't get to Lord's till to one o'clock yeah, in the morning. Yeah, yeah it was late. Um, yeah, no, that was a, that was a euphoric day. Um, but we had some bad we had some bad times in the in the eighties, yeah. didn't we? Really, yeah. we weren't very good, were we? No, I we think. weren't. We kept um, losing games hand over fist. You know, 80, 85. 85 was a bad year. Yeah. Eighty six was a bad year, apart from um, getting to the final at, at Lords. Mm. Um, just before before we go on with that, um, you've already mentioned Clive. Let's just talk a bit about overseas players at, uh, at Lancashire. Um, Clive was obviously uh, an adopted Lancastrian and played for the county for 16, 17 years, maybe, maybe a bit longer. Did he longer. play that long? Yeah, right. 68, 68 to the mid-80s. Missed a couple of years when he was captain with the West Indies, of course, or playing with the West Indies. Um, but we've been fortunate enough to have two of the very, very best in mm. Clive and Wazi Makram. Mm. How much influence did those two guys have on you and the way you played the game? Clive, well, Clive was, you know, he was left-handed. He was, he was one of my heroes. So to share a changing room with him for two or three years was, was fantastic. Clearly, um, we didn't play like each other because uh, he hit the ball Thunderous hard. hard, yeah. yeah. Um, but it was just for a young lad to be in the changing room with the West Indies captain, you know, a, a heroic figure, was, was fantastic. Um, I mean, that game, that, the final at, at Lords in 86, he got a duck, if you remember. And his first ball. Um, and he walked on and he walked off. And I, as he walked off, I, I, I was walking in. I remember having tears in my eyes as he, he was coming off because, you know, it had been built up into his final, hadn't it? It mm. was his last, mm. last games for us. Mm. Um, and he got a massive ovation as he walked on. Uh, mm. And I think the only person in the ground that, that, that wasn't clapping him on was Imran Khan that day. Mm. Um, and then I followed him in. Um, so, he, you know, he was a massive idol. But Your demeanour was distinctly different, wasn't it? You were nervous as a kitten before you went into yeah. that, and Clive would, would regularly be asleep on the floor Absolutely. in the dressing room. Absolutely. Um, but with, with Waz, I mean, Waz joined us um, 88, and, you know, he was, a, he was a young lad. So we actually, in many respects, he played here to, what, 98? Mm, 10 years, yeah. So uh, in many respects, we we almost grew up playing cricket here together mm. um, and you know it was amazing watching him him develop uh, he came over and he showed he showed the group of bowlers straight away reverse reverse swing and that clearly helped <laughs> it helped us i would say immeasurably from from an old older pro down to the young lads like ian austin mm. at the time who mm. all all of a sudden began to understand what, what reverse swing was. Um, and it, I think it, it set us apart from other teams for, for a little while. Well, Wazim became fundamental in, in Lancashire's makeup, quite obviously. He was one of the finest cricketers that ever walked. Mm. Um, but you were fortunate, I think, in a, being able to play in two separate 
eras of Lancashire cricket. You, you played in that team that developed from 87 onwards mm. and uh, we won a number of one-day trophies through uh, 89, 90. We started in 88 with the Refuge Cup, didn't we? Mm. 88, 89, 90, 91. And then, um, and then there was another incarnation of Lancashire which uh, developed around the mid-90s. Yeah, I mean, 86... I remember we didn't win a championship game till August because we weren't very good. Um, and I remember Steve O'Shaughnessy grabbing a stump at Leicester and running off like we'd, <laughs> like we'd won the Nat West because um, we'd won a championship game. So that's, that's where our standing was. Then in 87, um, David Hughes took over as captain um, and then Alan Ormrod became began man, to... Manager be, stroke coach, yeah, wasn't he? Yeah. Well, that's interesting. I mean, I was playing as yeah, well, yeah. but I, I, I've, I've still, still to this day, wonder what the difference was and what happened in, in 87 to make us... Uh, we were challenging for the championship. We, we came second. What yeah, was the I difference mean, there? What, what well, if, if, you, if, if you look at the stats, I would imagine that a third of the way through the season, we were the same as 86. Mm -hmm. um, and then... By hook or by crook, we won a couple of games. Lads started getting a few runs and a few wickets, and then we got on a roll. And we won, I think we won the last eight championship games mm. uh, to end up second. Um, and I think uh, Yozza and, and Alan started putting a bit of discipline into the changing room uh, and a bit of structure on and off the field into the changing room. And then you know, those, those lads that had played well in 87 carried, carried on, didn't they? Uh, yeah, they did. And did, then it, from a personal level, did you start feeling comfortable in 87? Did, did you ever feel comfortable as a batsman? We know you're nervous. We know you, mm. you, you, know, you spent time sitting in the back room with your, in the loo and mm. all that sort of stuff. That's just the way you were. But as soon as you walk down the steps, all gone. Yeah. It was. A, I, I, I don't know why. I never. I never understood it. To no. Be honest. No. But but you know, as soon as I crossed the white line, yeah. all the nerves and the worry went. So, did you fe start feeling comfortable there, or were you always uncomfortable during the build-up to a match or an innings? Yeah, or I mean, I, nervous dis disposition, disposition, whatever you want to call it, and that never went away. You know, from from the first day to the last here, that never went away. Um, but you get more experienced as, as time goes on and you, and you learn to, to look after yourself and you know your emotions and, and, and you work from there, don't you? I suppose so. Were the nerves worse or was it just always the same, whether you were playing for England in a World Cup or, or whatever? No, it was no different, whether it was Grapnall under 21s <laughs> or the World Cup final in 92, it was just the same. Mm. Um, and... When I walked on the field, it was just the same the other way. Mm. So was... You've got a phenomenal record um, in terms of performance and longevity, really. You played in three World Cups. Um, that World Cup final in 92, you were playing against one of your best mates in the game, in Wazim, mm. and you very nearly got England over the line. Mm. I, I mean, it was... a. Would that be one of the greatest and, and worst days? Of yeah, your cricketing? Without, without, without doubt, mm. without doubt. Um, you know, at that point we played here for five years together um, and we've become great friends, as you mm. say. And that day we actually, we actually before knock-ups was lunch and we actually sat opposite each other at lunch um, and then... We did our training, we went out, had a net, etc., etc., and then he threw me a few balls <laughs> yeah, um, into the net, and then, and then the game started. Obviously, he, he came in and got 50 when they were struggling, got them up to a good score. Um, we were doing all right, and then he came back on to bowl, and we talked about him, uh, you know, and I had to obviously talk about him, and what do we do if it starts swinging um, and all I could say was make sure you play with a full face if, you, if you're trying to run anything down and it's swinging it's playing with over. half a bat at your peril yeah so so it was full face and 
Alan Lamb and I had, had got a partnership going. He came back on and he bowled two Jaffers. Jaffers in two balls, bowled around the wicket away swinger to Lammy, knocked his off pole over, and then he bowled a massive in swinger to Chris Lewis uh, and bowled him. So his hat trick ball was the first ball of the next over, and I was on strike. <laughs> and he used to have different ways of presenting the ball, whether and, and he got to here, and I knew that he was going to bowl me an in-swinger on the hat-trick ball. But it was that quick, and it swung that far, that it basically hit me on the pad. It was just going down leg stump, and it hit me before I, before I, was, I was ready to play it. Um, and I looked up, and, I, and it, he was there, and we just smiled at each other. <laughs> uh, and that was his hat-trick ball in the World Cup final. I mean, he was... Um, <laughs> That, well, that performance alone sets him, sets him apart from most other cricketers. But he was, um, he was phenomenal. You say he had different ways of presenting the ball. He had a bit of a bunch of flowers, didn't he, when he, yep. you know, uh, and the rever sort of reversed his wrist. Yep. Um, but it all happened so quickly that you, you couldn't... God, I feel it at slip um, mm. all the time, really. But everything happened so quickly. It was just on. The ball was on you. you mm. You'd been batting for an hour or... Mm. And, and you said the ball... Just hit me. Why was that? I don't know. I don't know. I, I mean, that, that, that day, when, when he ran in, mm. you knew that people were in trouble. There were, there were days when he'd, he'd not jog him, but he wouldn't be at full speed. But he had such a quick arm and shoulder action mm. that, it, that he got it down and through rapidly. But that, that particular day, you watched footage of him running in during that little spell and he was charging in hmm. um and i can well here i can we played on some hard fast wickets didn't we, we um, did. and i can remember you and warren standing <laughs> miles away when he was bowling oh yeah we were a good pitch length back yeah. probably more more i would say yeah 25 uh, yards back yeah. which was which was great but, hoping, you know, i was hoping that warren would dive in front of me <laughs> He did a few times. He didn't did. He? he did. He did. Um, so you know, to play with him and to play with Clive was great for all of us. Mm. You know, it, it was fantastic. But you know, you say Clive became an adopted Lancastrian. Well, so did Waz. He did without yeah. a shadow of a doubt. Yeah. Um, and every time he comes back here, you know, it's a joy to see him, uh, and he and he's so well loved. I think we've been very fortunate in that in Lancashire that we've had Clive Farouk as well alongside yep. Clive, yep. who still lives down the road. Um, Wazim, every one of the the, the, the long-serving and some of the shorter-serving overseas players has always seemed to regard this as home. Yeah, yeah. I mean, back early in my time, Stephen Jeffries. Oh yeah, Jeff. Oh, yeah. Jeff was. I mean, he was a great man, wasn't he? Yeah, he was. Um, and he only had a couple of years with us, didn't he? Um, he wasn't dissimilar to Waz when he got it right, was he? Left arm, yeah. swung it. Yeah, he wasn't quite as no, wasn't quite as sharp, was he? No. Um, and then it, you know, I guess the other standout during my period, and he wasn't here that long, was Murley. Oh, true. Yeah. And Murley did Murley play two or three years, and he he was another great a great man, mm. absolute cricket badger. Mm. Came to play for Lancashire and knew what all the county players were, how they played. Incredible, the, the knowledge he had and what he was reading up on just county players. Um, and his, his first two games, his first game for us was at Southport, and I think it was against Warwickshire. He got 16 wickets in the game, and we lost. <laughs> and then we had two days off, and the second game, he got 14 wickets, and we lost. So he'd got 30 wickets in two championship games and the rest of us had done rock all. It's interesting you say this. We were, Lancashire was hugely success, successful from 88 to, till you finished, 2002. Certainly in white, in, in white ball or one day cricket as it was then. Why didn't we win the championship? I don't know. I don't know. Because, um, I mean, the size... It, it wasn't, for, it actually the size. wasn't for the lack of trying. No, no, no. It actually wasn't for the lack of trying. Um, and we got close. You know, we were... I think we were runners-up three or four times uh, and never quite, quite got over the line. Hmm. I, 
Well, yeah, I mean, you and I have probably puzzled over this for years. Not, mm. not much point puzzling over it. We didn't, we didn't get no, there. No, it didn't happen. We did got it? close and that was it. Um, you also hold a record, a couple, couple of records, actually. Um, you've scored more runs on Old Trafford than any other cricketer. Do you know that? I, I do know Not that. Not first class, but yeah. because you've played so many, yeah. so many yeah. one-day games. No, I do know that. Um, and it's a nice little... Is it ever? It's, it's a nice phenomenal. little thing, yeah. Um, but we played on some good wickets. We had, well, the best, you, we had the best groundsman in the world. In you, Pete, you were in <laughs> Peter Marin, and you had a very good relationship and friendship with Pete, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, you, absolutely. You, you encouraged him obviously to make good um, flat <laughs> batting pitches. I was looking at Glenn Chappell's record here. He played um, twenty years, obviously, and he he was a f fantastic bowler. And he averages thirty two here, does he, with the ball? Which is high. Yeah. Uh, everywhere else, he's in the low 20s. Yeah. Um, but they were phenomenal pitches, weren't they? Yeah, but I mean, when he, when Chappie started, what, 92? Mm. Um, you know, that was in the midst of really good wickets. I mean, they were quick wickets, bouncy mm. wickets, yeah, yeah. but there was no sideways movement. No. Um, and once you'd got in, then it, it, was great to, it was great to play your shots. And I think those, that period... Um, was when we had those two different one-day teams, or different yeah. teams, not one-day teams. So we yeah. had the team from, let's say, 88 when we won that Refuge Cup to 91. Yeah. And then we had a transition period, and then we came again in 95, 96, 97, 98. Um, and then at the end of 98, Fred came along mm. and was part of that 98 team and then and then it went from there so there were two distinct good good periods during my time mm. um, and there was an overlap of one or two people um, let's just move on slightly and uh, you've been involved in the game for 40 years and you've just mentioned Fred Andrew Flintoff who you who you managed as well and played alongside who's uh, who were the finest cricketers in that time, both as a, when you were playing and subsequently? Because you, you, you're fortunate enough to... What, here? To, or... Uh, no, I think generally. Uh, but st <coughs> we'll start with here. Who's, who's, who would you say, if you had to pick one player, and I'm not talking about an overseas player for here, a homegrown Lancashire player, who's the most influential, best player in um, that 40 years? I think there are, I have to mention two or three, I think. Yeah. Um, I think others, Mike Atherton. Um, Well, welcome back to uh, Old Trafford, where the uh, players have just emerged from the dressing rooms after lunch. I'm Anthony Gibson from uh, BBC Radio Somerset. I'll be joined in the merest hint of time by Scott Reid from BBC Radio Lancashire. And we're on the uh, Lanx excellent Lancashire television live stream. This is, is Hartley bowling to James Rue. 211 for five, so the Somerset lead is 246. We have 66.5 overs left in the day as uh, Rue stretches forward. And Somerset, in all honesty, Scott, didn't, they didn't show much enterprise this morning. Uh, once Tom Kohler Cadmore was out, they seemed not quite to shut up shop. As this is short and tucked away into the onside for a single by James Rue, but uh, there wasn't any great sense of aggression to set up a declaration and bowl Lancashire out. 
No, perhaps uh, try and make sure that the game is uh, is safe and uh, they leave Manchester with a, at least a draw from it, but steady progress, isn't it? Ooh. This is, ooh, Casey Aldridge, <laughs> who has yet to score. He's faced uh, 11 balls now, and he's dead batted all of them. He nearly dead batted that one onto his stumps. Hartley in around the wicket to the right-handed Aldridge. So I, I presume some are just going to bat out time, are they? It looks that way, doesn't it? Mm. Hartley in and bowls a sweep, a paddle sweep from Aldridge. And they might, well they should, come back for two, as yes, they do eventually, as Balderson does the fielding down to our left. The cloud has filled in over the uh, luncheon interval, and the clouds are a little bit thicker. I don't think there's any threat of a premature curtailment through a rain or bad light. But the way things are going, I think they will be shaking hands at around about five o'clock this afternoon. Yeah, the uh, prospects of maybe something a little fun happening on the final day appears to have, uh, have ebbed away, in truth. But, um, to be fair, I thought I mean, Somerset recovered really well on the first day, didn't they? Because it, mm. it could have all unraveled pretty quickly, but it was pretty slow going through, through the Somerset first innings as well. There's a lot of time taken out the, the game just in the first innings of the of, of the match and you put a bit of weather in there as well which we had a bit of poor weather didn't we on the second day mm. here's Balderson and uh, Rue flicks the ball out towards mid wicket where Will, uh, Luke Wells fields and there's no run the weather forecast is um, yeah he's, he's, he's okay suggestions that might get a bit of shower but we're looking at kind of after six o'clock really dry afternoon at least here's Balderson that's uh, driven nicely by Rue but to mid off and there's no run it's a comfortable single there wasn't it yeah there's been a few actually that yeah. they've not, they've not <coughs> actually uh, it was the same with Lemonby and Rue as well didn't hmm. really they haven't shown much it. they haven't shown much urgency no yeah. 216 for five Balderson again. That's uh, worked to square leg for a single this time for, uh, for Rue. So he moves on to 44. It's 217 for five. Middlesex hanging in there against uh, Surrey. 235 for eight. Ryan Higgins. More than useful cricketer. Back from Middlesex to Gloucestershire. Now back to uh, Middlesex. Middlesex, they're still in. Perilously placed, 64 uh, runs ahead with only two wickets in hand. Yeah, we've seen one result today, which was a, a victory for Durham, beating Yorkshire by one wicket. They could finish up in the North East and a good win for Durham. There could be some other interesting finishes. The, the, the game between Leicestershire and Sussex is quite intriguing. Balderson's in. It's off the back foot and driven into the offside for no run. So Leicestershire in 91 for four they trail Sussex by 69 runs they're still behind in the match and they've lost four wickets so could be an intriguing um, final day but they're following on Leicestershire in their second innings it's Balderson to Aldridge forward in defence blocks the ball up to, uh, to Dane Villas, no run. Yeah, 58 not out with Casey Aldridge in the reverse fixture a few weeks back, and he's uh, showing resistance again here in this fixture. Here comes uh, Balderson. He must defend it again, there's no run. The other game in Division 2 is Gloucestershire against Derbyshire. With uh, Gloucestershire 306 for 8 and they're now 311 for 8 
So they lead by 60, but again, that game's been uh, had a lot of rain around. They lost the first day in that uh, fixture due to the, the wet outfield. So that's the other game in Division 2. There is Balderson. <sighs> Beats Aldridge. Just crept a bit, that one. Mm. Crept. A bit like the one that um, pinned Dane Villas LBW. Just yeah, didn't did. get up. Interesting tweet from uh, Mark Weisel, who says, James Rue is only nine runs off becoming the top run scorer in the county championship so far this okay. season. Hugely impressive for a 19-year-old coming in at number six. Yeah, I think that position's held by Josh Bahannon. So he would be mm -hmm. overtaking Josh Bahannon. Let's have a look at the county championship leading run scorers. Yeah, Bannon 471. And Rue. And so Rue defends this next to the Riven Hartman. There's no run. 463. Sam Hain 436. Mm. Hartley in and bowls. And Rue defends. I'm sure he's not conscious of that particular milestone. <laughs> Bowls and Rose swings and misses, and uh, I think will be a bye. Yep, a bye. After a wild swing from uh, James Rue, he nearly didn't um, reach that particular milestone, being the leading scorer. I think he needs 52 to achieve that. 218 for five. is going to bowl to Casey Aldridge who's done nothing but defend against Hartley so far and <laughs> doesn't change the routine on that occasion pushes it gently into the onside Somerset's first priority is to ensure themselves against defeat this is turned down to short fine leg but Balderson is waiting for it that is definitely not possible <laughs> and, uh, I was talking to Paul Edwards about it and uh, it just doesn't seem to happen uh, there's all this talk of it filtering yeah, down from yeah. the England test team to county cricket I haven't seen it I must say this is turned again to the uh, onside the first priority of coaches and captains is to avoid defeat um, and the fact that the points for a draw have been reduced from eight to five doesn't seem to have had as much influence mm. as you would have expected it to. I mean, this was a game here this morning that Somerset could have made a real effort to uh, to set up, but even when t before Tom Kohler with Cadmore was out, he wasn't going particularly hard. It didn't. It wasn't that sense of quick runs and then a declaration and let's get in amongst Lancashire. It's the number one thought at the top of. Jason Kerr and Tom Abel's um, agenda was we played well in this match let's not chuck it away I spoke to James Anderson about this before the season started is that Bolton comes around the wicket and balls and that's defended by Rue and there's no run I said I asked him if he thought that his England team and how that his England team were playing at the minute that will be reflected in the county championship and he, he said uh, and it, his opinion was probably not because because it's a diff it's almost a, a different game, isn't it? With with promotion and relegation mm. and with bonus points and the, the structure of the of the two divisions. Um, it, it didn't, you know, he said you might get individual players perhaps looking to change their games a little. It's defended to to mid on. There's no run, but he didn't think that it would be a particularly big thing um, because it's just a different different way of playing there's different priorities mm. you know, promotions and relegations and you know, players that have come in towards the back end of the career but younger players want to get into the game so I think the kind of just that sweeping statement will we see it in county championship cricket it's just there's just too many variables involved in it all for that to happen I think we trying to force this away through the offside just a little inside edge and bounces back down the pitch and there's no run Yes, it's interesting, isn't it? It's, it's the context, I suppose, 
I mean, if you lose if you lose a test match, well, you might lose a series, and it would affect your position in the World Test mm. Championship. Mm. But it's not a matter of life and death to lose a test match. We're in county championship cricket. If you go down to the second division, mm. the, the the jeopardy is almost endless. I mean, the number one consideration: you might very well lose some of your best players, who will be attracted to you know want to play first division cricket. Short mid wicket in place as Balderson comes in to root. So worked out towards Stephen Croft. And there's uh, one run. Root moves on to 45, not out. 219 for five. And it depends, obviously, from county to county, but the prospect of going down to Division 2 for Somerset is very, very frightening mm. because you know, we're not a particularly wealthy club. We've got lots of good players. Balderson to Aldrich, forward and drives into the offside, no run. But how many of them are, are we going to keep if if we go down to Division 2 and then lose a couple of players? Then you stay in Division 2 and you end up in a sort of Gloucestershire situation. Or a Leicestershire situation. It's the nightmare scenario. Mm. Balderson to what Aldrich and just hopping back and pushing out into the offside. There's no run, it's the end of the over. 219 for five. Somerset in the second innings. So it's a lead of 254 runs. So 254 in 59 overs. Four point three. So I said probably only need to bat for another half an hour or so. Perhaps a bit longer. I still think they've got three hundred in mind. A, three, a lead of three hundred. Hartley then to Rue drives pleasantly, but not at full power, and it's cut off by Stephen Croft. That extra cover. Not exactly gloomy now, but it's not nearly as summery as the yeah. weather was this morning. Hartley bowls and Rude back on his stumps, turning it into the onside. And uh, Josh Bahannon does the fielding. Got just the slip, backward point, extra cover, mid off, mid on. Short mid wicket as Rude stretches forward. Conventional mid wicket. Backward square leg for the um, for the sweep and a deep backward square leg. Matty Hurst who's being brought up to where the square leg umpire would be if he wasn't on the other side. This is a reverse sweep and will be cut off by Tom Bailey. Fielding sub. We've got two subs on. At the moment, unless I'm very much that is Matty Hurst at uh, Square Leg. It is, yep. Not quite sure who besides Jimmy Anderson is on the field of play. Hurst will do the fielding here. Will Will he use his own? No, he's there. Hartley. Dane Villas, I think. There's a sweep and a miss. Taking on the pad, James Rue. And um, his attacking shots have, haven't always been entirely successful, James Root, but he's still there, 45 from 89 deliveries. And Somerset still going along, 219 for five, the lead, 254. It was Dave Velas who was off the field. He's coming back on, but yeah. Daryl Mitchell's now going off. So Bailey and Hurst are still out there. And we welcome listeners to uh, Radio 5 Sports Extra with the news that Somerset are 219 for five, a lead of 254. And I'm sorry to have to inform you that it looks very much as if this game it, at Old Trafford is drifting towards a draw. As Balderson is in and bowls to Casey Aldridge who's been in for 23 deliveries for just two runs. 
<laughs> yes, it's um, it's not the most exciting um, final day in the county championship of the season so far. Somerset have, haven't shown much enterprise, in all honesty. Tom Curley Cadmore was out fairly early on this morning, clean bowled by a really good ball from Will Williams. This is tucked away by Aldridge for his third run down to deep backwards square leg. And from that moment on, it seemed that Somerset, if they hadn't settled for the draw first thing this morning, they certainly settled for the draw when Tom Kohler Cadmore was out. Well, I wouldn't say settle for the draw. They would settle for making the game safe. Let's, let's be fair. And of course, they'll still have a they'll have a go at uh, trying to bowl Lancashire out in probably about uh, 40 overs, something like that, 45 maybe. Balders and bowls driven by Rue. Nice shot, beaten the infield on the offside. And it's going to be pulled in by Tom Hartley. Just inside the boundary, they'll come back. They should have come back for three. They have come back for three. Taking Rue on to 48, 223 for five. Of course, Lancashire doing all this. Um, still a bowler light. And we have no news, I'm afraid, of Jimmy Anderson. He's no. I saw him this morning, didn't we? He was out there mm. watching these, these mates warm up. He wasn't taking part in the warm up, mind you, but he was out there watching. Balderson to Aldridge. Aldridge, nice straight bat, playing it up to Bohannon at lid off. I'm Anthony Gibson from BBC Radio Somerset. With me is Scott Reid, our host broadcaster from BBC Radio Lancashire. And the weather is not as nice as it was this morning. So yeah. Lovely warm morning this morning. Very high wispy cloud and plenty of sunshine but it's just filled in over the uh, lunch break. Balls in and bowls and played into the onside and the breeze has got up as well from the west which is where the weather is coming from we're threatened with light rain later on this afternoon I suspect this will be done and dusted before the weather becomes a factor 2.23 for 5 we've seen some uh, some nice passing this morning from uh, Tom Lamanby yes. this is driven by Aldridge nice shot but um, Cut off in the covers by Tom Bailey, who's one of two substitutes fielding for Lancashire. Yeah, this morning, Tom Lamberby made. I can reveal to you. I should remember it really. 78 from 153 deliveries, seven fours uh, and a six. He went down the pitch, giving Tom Hartley the slow left arm of the charge. Should have been stumped by. George Bell was given the benefit of very considerable doubt by umpire Nigel Long, and the very next ball he did it again. <laughs> he did. <laughs> this yes. time George Bell made no mistake. It was a bit baffling. It was one it? of the most brainless pieces of batting I've seen all season. It's a real shame for him. He was absolutely <laughs> like nailed yeah. on for a century, didn't he? Yeah. Batted really, really nicely. Here's Hartley to uh, Rue. Uh, off the back foot away to Croft at cover and there's uh, no run 48 to Rue so he's eyeing up a another 50 here swept and there is the 50 as he sweeps out towards deep back with square leg and uh, takes his total on to 52 not out and his uh, captain there Tom Abel be a proud man. He's uh, watched his young batter reach another half century. His uh, second 50 of the season to go with two centuries, and uh, those four runs take him to the position of the highest scorer in the county championship of the season so far. 2 2 7 for 5. Hartley balls to Rue. Ooh, he's fighting a Yorker there as Hartley, full and straight. Mm. Jabs the back down as Rue piece of keeps it out. Hartley to Rue to reverse sweep it. It's a half an appeal from Hartley. 
He hasn't had much success with his reverse sweeps, as uh, James Rue. Yeah. Of course, it cost that shot cost Tom Abel his wicket last evening. Forward goes Rue in uh, defence. Again, there's no run. Two, two, seven for five. So one ball left. Of the, uh, of the Tom Hartley over into. Rue to force the ball away. It squirts away to square leg and looks at the toe end of his bat and there's no run. That's the end of the over. 227 for five. Ah, there's Jimmy. There's Jimmy. There he is. Give us a thumbs up, Jimmy, if you're all right. <laughs> <laughs> Aldridge on three and Rue on 52. It's worth a try. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the uh, proceedings do not have much of an air of urgency ab about them at the moment out there. <coughs> What's the lead? 262 with, uh, well, it'll be 58 overs, less 256 overs left in the day. Balderson then to Aldridge, full of length, driven back, and there will be runs here, and there will be four of them, I suspect. Although, no, it won't, as um, Josh Bohannon does the fielding and Dane Villas half stopped that, oh, yeah. just parried it. Um, whether he hurt his shoulder as he went down, he's just taking his uh, left side. I think he's all right. He took a bit of getting up there, didn't he, Dane Villas? Mm. Yeah. Two runs taken, 229 for five. Balderson to Aldridge. Aldridge plays this freely out into the offside but it won't get a run he's on five the uh, the possible victory target for Lancashire if they were to take these last five wickets in a hurry is getting more difficult with every over that goes past Balderson to Aldridge on the back foot this time, punching it into the offside. Bohannon shies at the stumps, but uh, Aldridge is safely home. Those long legs carrying him quickly up the pitch. 2.30 for five. I suppose the only question mm. remaining is whether Somerset declare at all. <laughs> yes. Well, is it, it wouldn't be a sign of any, anything that would suggest that that's in their mind, just yeah. just, just bat. Bat and make the game safe. Balderson game's coming round the wicket to Rue. Gets a slightly pace off delivery and waits for it. Either that, or he does have a lot of time to play his shots, seemingly James Rue, doesn't he? Gets into good positions. There's nothing flamboyant about uh, James Rue, apart from the occasional reverse sweep but he, he does have shots which are all his own he's a very well organized batsman Balsons in and bowls and just waits again on this one and works it down to backward point where um, young Matty Hurst 19 years old wicketkeeper batsman who's on as Sub is George Bailey still? Tom Bailey, I mean. George Bailey. Plays for Tasmania. 2.31 for five. That's Balderson, he's in to Aldridge, who punches this into the offs onside, where it's well fielded by Will Williams. End of another over. 58 remain in theory in the day's play. 2.31 for five, the lead now. 266. We had an absolutely terrific finish last week, last Sunday. It was at Trent Bridge. Mm. It was a really superb end to a four day ch championship match. But, uh, I hope that we're going to have that type of drama here today. Two, three, one for five. Rue on 53. Goes for that reverse sweep. He managed to reverse sweep 
before lunch, didn't he? And got a little thin edge, which went in between Luke Wells' mm. legs and yeah. <laughs> went down the, to the boundary. It doesn't look, doesn't look the most secure shot that he plays. Hartley to Rue. It's east to mid wicket, and there's no run. Fifty-three not out. Change of line here from uh, from Hartley. He's going to come uh, round the wicket to Root, and that's a hit down the ground and deflected by Hartley off his right hand. I think we're trying to deliberately deflect it onto the stumps at the non-strikers mm, end. It was a good half stop there, wasn't it? Was. It was hit quite fiercely. If it, if it had got past Hartley, I think it would run away for four. In the balls. Muscled out through the onside for four runs by Root. So they got a hold of that. And, uh, yeah, Somerset wicketkeeper keep a batsman. Takes him to 57 not out. 235 for five. Pushes the lead up to 270. It's 57 it's looking to me like 350 overs. Or thereabouts. Hartley to Rue. Well, I can see Luke Wells twirling his arm over. I see a bit of Luke Wells' leg spin, maybe. Final ball of the over. Hartley to Rue. It's off the back foot and pushed into the onside for no run. It's the end of the over. So we've got 68 overs gone. We've got 57 remaining. A lead of 270 runs. Aldridge on six and Rue on 57. And you've got a bit of Luke spin. Luke, Luke Wells and leg spin, rather. Ah, good. Yeah, let's see. A tweet from uh, Darius Plumden. Uh, I said that the first Tom Lamanby stumping was very, very close. And to my untutored eye, I thought the bales were off just a fraction of a second before Lamanby's bat came down. Darius Plumden takes a different view. Having re-watched the Lammers stumping several times on YouTube, I have to say the angle is not square on, but it was very, very close. If the umpire was wrong, it was a very, very close decision. Yeah, I agree with that. That's what I said at the time. It was a split second. And if you're not sure as an umpire, you give the batsman the benefit of the doubt. So I didn't criticise Nigel Long at the time, and I certainly don't now. So the tall, bald figure of Luke Wells is in to bowl his leg breaks and gets a nice bit of uh, flight on that one. It's driven up to mid-off by Casey Aldridge. He's bowled a couple of overs down at uh, Taunton in the Somerset second innings in a situation rather like this. This is Eldridge back on his stumps and a little bit of turn there for Luke Wells who uh, I wouldn't call him an all-rounder but he's no he's a uh, it's a useful extra string to his bow mm. yeah this is short though and pulled away but uh, he misses out there does Casey Aldridge hits it more or less straight to Tom Hartley it was a long hop from uh, taken 82 first class wickets as Luke Wells for Sussex and Lancashire oh and this time Aldridge tries to something fancy a little late dab misses it unfortunately for him the ball misses the off stump Wells in a bowls this is short again, but again, Aldridge rather misses out. Just pushed through, and it might even have been the googly, that one. How tall is Luke, Luke Wells? Six foot three, something like that. He's tall for a, yes. a spin bowler. So that's a good ball. That's a good ball, and played respectfully by Casey Aldridge, and that was a maiden over. From Luke Wells, the score remains 235 for five, the lead 270. Yeah, decent stuff, isn't it, by Luke Wells? I, th mm. I, th I think he's a very handy option. Lancashire have got up their sleeve. He bowled a decent amount. 
six foot four. Six foot four. I think he was struggling to get his top on there. So there wasn't <laughs> he? <laughs> trying to put his head through this bit where his arms go through. <laughs> He's Hartley, so enough spin from both ends as Hartley twirls in again. Bowls to, to Rue, plays forward and defends. And there's uh, no run. And James Rue, if he's got any sense, he'll, he'll be focused on staying not out at the end of this innings, whenever that comes. Oh, Punch shot. Yeah, yeah. Runs here through cover. Mitchell will catch up with it. Who comes back for two more, moves on to 59. 237 for five. Again, textbook off drive. Only thing it was missing was a bit of power. Mm. But he wasn't looking to power it away through there. It was a, a measured shot. Not me around the wicket Ooh. to him. Oh, that's the <laughs> inside <laughs> edge. <laughs> Dear. Every time I say something about how well Lamanby or Rue or whoever it might be is batting, then something goes wrong the very next delivery. Comes Hart again, balls, forward goes Rue in defence. Couldn't really have two more opposing shots there, could you? The, the nice little punch mm. through the covers for, for a couple, and then a streaky inside edge past the stumps. Again, that's off the front foot and forced up to uh, mid off where there's no run. Where it's fielded by Darrell Mitchell. 237 for five. Forward goes uh, Rue again and defends once more. It's the end of the over 237 for five, a lead of 272 runs with uh, 55 overs remaining in the day. Yeah, the rate, um, the theoretical rate is now above five. I think Somerset won't declare until it's above six. That's my prediction. They may not, may not declare at all. Wells in and bowls to a full toss. A nice juicy full toss to Aldridge, who <laughs> takes full toll of it and will not get four, as it's very well cut off out there on the boundary by Darrell Mitchell. Out in the outfield, and they come back for two runs. Yeah, good piece of work that, wasn't it, mm -hmm. by Mitchell? He well to get across the ground. In comes the dive. Flicks the ball back. Excellent work. Aldridge on to eight. 239 for five. This is short and pulled four runs. <laughs> <laughs> Wells' experiment might not last too long. <laughs> <laughs> he, didn't, uh, he didn't miss out there, Casey Aldridge. No. That, that was, that was a, a pie, to use a technical <laughs> term. Might be all part of the ploy. So oh, come on, I'm going to th throw a few pies down at you. You can whack it a little bit and try and declare and put us back in. <laughs> Two seventy-eight, the lead. I still think three hundred is going to be the mark. Wells to Aldridge, another short ball, but this time it wasn't quite as short, and it was on uh, outside off stump and uh, driven to short extra cover. So no addition to the score. Aldridge on to. 12 he too will want to be not out at the end whenever that comes it defends this into the onside and Williams picks up he's averaging 104 in the county championship against uh, Lancashire is Casey Aldridge before this inning so this Wells tosses this one up driven up to Dane Velas at mid on uh, there's no running made to 58, not out at uh, Taunton. 46 in the first innings here. The ball is there's a little bit of loose twine on the on the seam. Looking a bit battered, that ball. How many overs old? Oh, it's yeah, nearly 71 overs old. So nine overs to go before the new ball. Wells bowls and a reverse sweep, and he's no more successful at playing that shot, Casey Aldridge, than um, Tom Abel and James Rue have been at playing it. And indeed, Tom Lamanby, who tried to play one or two and, and uh, failed to 
make any worthwhile contact. End of the over, 2.43 for five. The lead has gone on to 278. Aldridge has 12 and Rue has 59. Middlesex have been bowled out. 240. Oh dear. Sorry, you're going to get this <coughs> wrapped up by the halfway stage the way they're going. Yes, so we need 62 to win. Who's picked up the wickets there for Surrey? Jordan Clark, 4 for 25. Sean Abbott, uh, 3 for 31. How come you let him go? Oh. It's uh, Hartley to uh, to root. It's turned to mid wicket and there's no run. After he'd taken just about the most distinguished hat trick of all time. <laughs> <laughs> That's a long time ago, that one. Yeah, yeah. Root leaving this delivery from uh, was it Hartley? Not sure the order. It was Root, Bearstone, and Williamson, wasn't it? <laughs> Something along those lines. Yeah. <laughs> Two, four, three for five. Well, he's turned into a. Oh, fine, a fine yeah, player. Terrific cricketer. He's driven away by Root to cover, no run. He's kind of almost first pick, isn't he, for Surrey at the mm -hmm. minute? He's super player. Yeah, so he's had a good good game with the ball. So Surrey have got a pretty modest target, 62 to win. Hartley to Root. Not out, says the umpire. And so Root tried to get forward. Comes in and balls again. And it's pushed away off the front foot. Slowly trickles its way out to uh, to Dane Villas. Back to the point. There's no run. Hartley to to Rue. It's a nice shot. Just works it to the right of mid off where Mitchell picks up and fields. Rue gets a single. Moves to 60. Runs come pretty easily to Rue, don't they? The, he, you've obviously watched him more than me, but he looks like this type, type of player, a little bit like, kind of like a Joe Rue, where he bats for kind of half an hour, 40 minutes, and you look up at the scoreboard, and he's like, oh, he's on 30 mm -hmm. already. You know, that yeah. He seems to tick along at a really nice rate. He does. He had a bit of luck in the first innings as well. He was put down twice in the slips, but you need a bit of luck as if you're a, a batsman. And he has been blessed with it so for the most part this season. He's on strike now to Luke Wells, who's bowling around the wicket, running his leg breaks and googlies. He's in and bowls and bowls a good one, which does indeed turn a little bit out of the rough left by the bowler's footmarks outside James Rue's off stump. They back up the pitch. To the bowler. 279 is the lead. Root back on his stumps and pushes this into a gap on the offside and trots through for another single. Takes him on to 61. To go with the 105 he made in the uh, first innings. Century down at Taunton against Lancashire. Big partnership with his captain Tom Abel. Wells bowls and Aldridge. That's a little bit quicker that one. That might might have been the flipper. Aldridge was late on the shot. Wasn't looking to play much more than a, a dab down in the general direction of uh, a third man, but could easily have been bowled. He wasn't. And Wells tries again. Gives this one more air and Aldridge he can't pick the googly playing that one from the crease Aldridge on 12 from 45 245 for five As this game seems to be drifting towards a draw this is a reverse sweep which again he doesn't really get hold of we'll pick up just a single some fancy footwork out there by Stephen Croft uh, it's a slightly casual air about proceedings at, uh, at the moment. 2.46 for five. 52 overs remain in the game after this one. So if Somerset are going to declare leaving Lancashire 50 overs, now is the time. This is punched away into the offside and beats the, the dive 
of Tom Hartley and they'll come back for the second run as Matty Hurst retrieves. Casey Aldridge takes off his short sleeve sweater and will hand it to 12th man Peter Siddle. So no declaration yet, which I think suggests that someone's uh, probably going to bat, bat through until the uh, the end. So there was an, and it won't be a bitter end. It'll be an end which will leave these two counties at, uh, where they were at the beginning of this game, 7th and 8th in the uh, Championship Division 1 table. Yeah, that table at the minute has uh, Warwickshire sitting top, but to be replaced imminently by Surrey. And of course, for um, be their third win in five games. So Warwickshire have won, played five, won three. Surrey hot on their heels in second place. Hartley into Aldridge. And that's uh, punched square of the wicket for a single. Moves on to 14, 2.49 for five. Nottinghamshire a third, Essex fourth, Hampshire a fifth. Again, they could yet force a win. A bit. Uh, Kent have found a partnership in that game. This is driven by Root. Through the covers for a single. Moves to 64, 250 up now for Kent. Yeah, Jack Leaning and Sam Billings have uh, settled things down for Kent in that fixture because they had lost three pretty quick wickets. Still 100 behind, but seven wickets in hand. Just prods forward there's uh, Aldridge the ball goes past the edge of the bat and taken by the keeper lead now 285 Hartley to Aldridge nice looking shot driven down the ground partially stopped by Hartley and there's Mahmood to complete the field just behind him at mid off Aldridge moves on to 15. Score moves on to 251 for five. Forward goes Rue and defends. And there is no run. This is the 26th over sent down by Tom Hartley. Two for 77. Balls again. And that's uh, played quite deep in the crease by Rue off the back foot working the ball the way to square leg for a single and he keeps the strike and he ticks along nicely to 65 not out and Somerset to 252 for five and as the uh, scoreboard tells us on the far side of the of the ground a lead of 287 now news of my son George who's doing the uh, Devon coast to coast his uh, elder sister Joanna met him at uh, Withypool in the heart of Exmoor. He said, and she says, everything hurting, but he's still going. Should be done between five and six this evening, which would be close to his 33-hour target for the 112-mile ultra marathon. Are they in the league? <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is a defensive shot by uh, James Room. Quite an effort there. Uh, glad he's, he's still in one piece, even if everything is hurting. <laughs> Luke Wells ran the wicket to the left-handed Rue. Gets one it's a little bit quicker. Might have been the flipper again. Just short of a length, but seemed to hurry on to, to Rue. I used to bowl leg breaks, but like one or two others, Max Waller, for example, as Wells bowls, tosses this one up, and it's defended by Rue. I lost the ability to uh, to turn the leg break. I could, I could bowl googlies and I could bowl flippers, but I couldn't turn the leg break. It was, uh, which was sad, really. I think it's as you get older, you lose mm. flexibility okay. in your wrists. Root goes right back on his stumps. Yeah, good over this from Luke Wells so far. Good line, good length. Varying his flight. One delivery that might have been a, a flipper, which is the one that's the top spinner. He's in a bowls and 
Rue opens the face, plays it into the offside, but not with any force. And it's quite a crowded offside field with those two extra covers and a backward point and uh, a mid off. Wells bowls, tosses this one up. Oh, I think that was just short of uh, Will Williams at shortish extra cover. Judging by the body language, it wasn't a chance. It just came to him on the half volley and he rehearsed the s scooping the ball up off the turf. 2.52 for five. What's the lead now? 2.87. And we have 50 overs left, so 47 it will be, even if all the remaining five wickets were to fall in the next over. There's Tom Abel on the live stream with uh, Jason Kerr just discussing whatever the the plans may be if indeed there are any plans of them just to bat out time yep well, Hartley new ball will be a available soon, not that I think that's going to make a huge amount of difference. But Hartley to Aldridge then, Aldridge on 15, oh. attempts to sweep, oh, balloons away into the offside, there's, there's no run, he's got a slip in place, that's Luke Wells, the cover, mid wicket, it's dropped to the leg side for no run, mid off and mid on, Push a little deeper. There's a square leg, which is uh, Luke Wells. A short fine leg and a deep backward square leg. Forward goes Aldridge in defence. Again, there's no rum. Hartley to Aldridge. He asked the question as Aldridge looks to sweep. Leg by signalled by the uh, umpire. So Aldridge remains on 15. The score moves on to 253 for five. That brings Rue back on strike. Hartley to Rue. That's turned out to. Will Williams at uh, a mid wicket, and there's no run. And again, and balls forward goes Rue. Well, that's got through him. Kind of burst into and out of their gloves of, of belt. Seemed to breach the defences of Rue's forward push. Mm. It's the end of the over 253 for five. I don't think he got an edge on it. Judging again by the by the body language, although George Bell hasn't mm. had his best match, has he? Well, it's been tricky, hasn't it, for, for George Bell? Certainly was on Thursday. Mm. For Bell on Thursday, the ball was doing plenty. Anderson was tearing in. Right. Here's Wells in a bowls and. Aldridge makes room for himself and carves it away down to deep backward point. Today, I can reveal, is Surrey Day. <laughs> Sorry, Saturday 13th. Oh no, it's yesterday. Yesterday oh. was Surrey Day. Steeped in history, it's an opportunity to explore their rich heritage whilst enjoying all they have to offer today. This is defended by Rue. Most people wouldn't have a clue, I think, where the where the county of Surrey begins and ends. <laughs> but, uh, counties don't matter quite so much in the south of e east of England as they do in the West Country. This is tossed right up. Mm. Rue is not to be tempted. Where people are, are very conscious of their county, particularly if you're Cornish, of course. Cornwall is different. I'll say campaign for Cornwall to have its own devolved administration 
Wells is in and bowls and uh, it's defended by James Roos. Not the remotest chance of them getting it, but that's Cornwall for you. <laughs> <laughs> he says as a devoted. <laughs> yes, uh, a bit of rivalry though. It's uh, Wells in defended a government minister who was responsible for the regional things once said the only thing that unites Devon and Cornwall is a shared hatred of Bristol <laughs> <laughs> and there's a lot and you could say the same of Somerset and Gloucestershire as well but, uh, Bristol is a sort of oh, oh. short bouncer and hooked very well hooked by <laughs> James Rue because that might easily have taken him by surprise just that uh, was quite a quick delivery from yeah. uh, Luke Wells, but uh, James Rue equal to it, hooked it away down to deep backward square leg. For four runs, 69, he has 258 for four. It's like a Marnus Labashain bouncer, that wasn't it? He, was, he sen yeah. occasionally sends one in, doesn't he? he he's twirling his leg spin. I don't know how much he's bowled for Glamorgan over the course of the last couple of weeks, probably not much. The lead is now 293. Sorry, I've lost a wicket. Rory Burns is out, 17 for one, but their, their target to win it is uh, 70. But Burns, the man out. Leicestershire have found a bit of a partnership. They're fighting back. They're following on. They're four down. But they've won 36 for four now to trail Sussex by 24 runs. Tom Hartley to Aldridge. And that's swept. And Bailey and the square leg boundary fields and the score moves on to 259 for five Aldridge moves on to 17 that brings James Rue on strike Tom Hartley bowling from the James Anderson end we missed a 50 partnership James Christ catch as that's thumped up towards mid off where Mitchell feels I thought he'd hit it into the ground maybe it was uh, in the air, but bouncing short of uh, well, true. of Mitchell. This is along the ground, certainly. As Rue eases the ball off the front foot to Mitchell again, no run. Two fifty-nine for five. Hartley's got some very fetching red socks on. You can just see as he comes into bowl. It's just batting practice now, isn't it? Here's a bit. Straight to Mitchell again, and there's no run. Two, five, nine for five. It's flicked off the, the hip down to short fine leg where Balderson fields. Who moves on to 70? Well, Tom Lamanby was uh, unable to convert a very good a, a good score into a, a big score. Maybe Rue can back up his first inning century with a with another this time around he, he looks well on course for it he looks absolutely untroubled oh, he runs this down to third man that's Ooh. a nice shot he's waited for it and up at the face of the bat steers the ball down to, to third man it's three for a single and that's the end of the over there's a new ball due for if Lancashire would want to take it in two overs time 261 for five Aldridge on 18 and Rue on 17 I don't think the uh, Lancashire chief executive would be terribly impressed if they were to take it because <laughs> they're quite expensive new balls and the, uh, the home club does have to pay for them. At least that's my understanding. But whether they'll bother, I don't know. Mm. Mm. Might just want to give um, Saqib Mahmood another run out. Maybe, yeah. Because he is, has been short of ma match practice. I thought he, he actually bowled as well this morning as he has done at at any stage during the game. In the meantime, though, it's Luke Wells in a bowls to Casey Aldridge, who just works this away into the offside and ambles down to the other end for a single. The lead climbs to 297. If we're going to get a declaration at all, I'm sure it will be in the next couple of overs when the lead goes beyond 300. Wells to Rue, who's on 70. Turns this into the onside. 
<laughs> Stephen Croft seeing the funny side of things. Come shuffling in to do the fielding. Sort of air resignation about the proceedings now. Wells in and bowls on leg stump. Turned again out to Stephen Croft. He's got his shirt untucked from his cricket trousers. Doesn't he have um, most of the, most but not all of the Lancashire fielders? This is short and pulled, and that will be four runs. Didn't really get hold of that, uh, James Rue. Came off a sort of th thickish inside edge. He was looking to hit that for six into the open area. And uh, the dive by Stephen Croft to try and make the stop. But unavailingly. That's a 300 lead. Yeah. End of this over, do you think? 74 Rue has. Perhaps they'll just let James Rue go on to his 100. Can't see Somerset bowling Lancashire out in B46. 44 overs. Rue plays this back to the bowler. On this pitch, even with a mm. as potent a new ball attack as Craig Overton and uh, Matt Henry. This is tossed up, driven by Rue. Should have been a single there, but he's not that bothered. End of that over. The lead has gone past 300. It's now 300 and one. I'm not getting any pictures of the um, Somerset balcony, but judging by. There we are. Jason, Jason Kerr, the head coach, with his hands on his knees. The fact that everyone's in their trackies <laughs> <laughs> rather than their whites <laughs> might be a bit of a clue. Absolutely. There's George Bartlett there. Craig Overton, he's in his cricket whites. He'll have his pads on because he'll be next in. Ah, there's Tractor. <laughs> there's Tractor. He's been very quiet, hasn't he? Yes, he's, he's, got, he's got his pint there, though. P probably a pint of good Mancunian ale. <laughs> his heart leads to Aldridge. And that's off the back foot, they hit nicely away through the covers. I'll come back, they might run three here, I suspect. They, they should be, yeah, there is. Yeah, run three by the time that Mamou catches up with the ball in front of the hotel at uh, deep extra cover. Aldridge moves on to 22. 269 for five. Might the Lancashire captain turn to to have a bit of a ball? Maybe Stephen Croft. Yeah. Mm. Josh Bannon, he used to do a bit of bowling. Not done that for a while. Hartley to uh, to root. It's worked out to mid wicket. Well, Stephen Croft has 72 first class wickets to his name. I can't remember the last time he had a bowl in a full day match. Balls again, a much quicker delivery from a different angle and a curved approach. Yeah, I mean, Tom Hartley's getting a good bowl, isn't he? He's he is. 29th over. Won't do him any harm. In and balls. <laughs> and uh, Rue of the, uh, the back foot fields. 269 for five. Comes heart with balls. Root goes back. And that's uh, defended. And again, there's no run. What's he bowl these days, Stephen Croft? Uh, medium pace or no, off a bit breaks? of off, bit of off spin. Yeah, yeah. I think he did start out as a medium pacer. Swatted away towards um, long leg. Oh, yeah, before I think yeah. it is. And Root is absolutely eyeing up. A second century in the match. He's 78 not out. He looks well on course for it. And looks utterly untroubled. 273 for five. Interesting. If he does get 100, there'll be two very different 100s, won't they? I mean, the first yeah. innings, all the pressure in the world yeah, was, yeah. On, was on him when he scored those runs. If, you know, if, he, if he got out, yeah. then Somerset were in deep, deep trouble. Mm. Whereas here, <laughs> you know, it's been pretty, pretty straightforward on a flattish pitch against uh, an attack 
minus their main weapon. Yeah, true. Are we going to get a new ball then? So yeah, yeah on the looks that way. Yeah. Yeah. So very good job here, Tom Bailey. There you go, sir. Pick a ball. Pick a ball from those boxes. Two boxes to choose from. Who's, who's going to take the new, the new ball? Oh my! Well, actually, they may not take the new ball straight away. S Stephen Croft's going to have a ball, but that <laughs> it's currently with the old ball. What's he going to ball there? Nice no, for long sing. He's going to bob in a medium pace, isn't he, Stephen yeah, Croft? And he's going to he's going to take the new ball. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh what a honour for Stephen! He's been waiting, he's been waiting all this time, and now he gets chance to take a new ball. What a moment in the career of Stephen Croft! <laughs> yeah. Here he comes, just jogging in. This is short. Warmly applauded by his teammates. He's called for a drink. <laughs> 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 Just sort of jogs gently in. But he's, he's, he's a strong man. Got a good pair of shoulders on him. Generate a little bit of pace off the pitch. He's in a bolster to Aldridge. Tries this up to Williams at uh, mid on. Company to oohs and ahs. Well, I, th I think we could say to say this, this will be a first. Stephen Cross ever had a new ball before. Bowling media, I can't remember the last time I saw Stephen Cross bowl medium base, <laughs> probably 15 years ago. <laughs> He's in and bowls short, and Aldridge cuts, and he'll pick up a single uh, to uh, George Balderson on the deep point boundary. So James Rue will. Jollywell ought to move on to a second century in the match and his fourth century of the season. Was in Kent, I think so. It would be his fourth of his first class career. Wasn't fourth it? of his first class career, that's right. Yeah, third of the season. Right. Third of the season, yeah. Croft bowls, it's driven into the offside. Can't niggle. Cut it off. He's got a slip in the gully, extra cover, mid off. Mid on, mid wicket, deep. Backward square, or deep square leg, really. A long leg and a cover sweeper. So three men on the boundary. As Croft wanders in and bowls one way outside off stump. And James Rue has nothing whatever to do with it. George Bell sees the funny side. George Bell wasn't born when Stephen Croft made his Lancashire debut. Has he ever played for anyone else, Stephen Croft? Oh yeah, he had a club yeah. in New Zealand, I think, didn't he? Yeah, no, I mean in this country. Oh no, no. outside the off stump again. So I think the word for that over was innocuous. I thought it was outstanding. Well, <laughs> well, ball, <bowled> Crofty. <laughs> you should have get the new ball more often. Have a word with your captain. Ridiculous. Oh dear. <laughs> The trouble is it's sessions like this that give county cricket a bad name. Well, well who's going to take the new ball from the other end? I dread to think. It's just, this oh, is it's Dane Villas, I think. It's meaningless cricket, isn't is that it? Da it? Oh, it it's is. Dane Villas. Yeah, he's going to have a, have a go. <laughs> well, it's a, it's, a, it's a new look. Bowling <laughs> attack. Croft and Villas. How long till tea? <laughs> We've still got another hour, I think. <laughs> yeah. Oh dear. Oh blimey, what's he doing here? In <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh dear. And he's sent down a loopy full toss. Yes. I think some said ought to declare and end oh. end end this. <laughs> and it's, it's not good. It's not good for the eyes. It's, it's not good. It's not good for the reputation of Kent. Driven to mid off, and there's no run. I think 
I think Dame Vanessa is just making a point here mm. about the lack of enterprise that yes. uh, Somerset have shown. So. And I think that's you know, fair enough. In the bowls. That's it. <laughs> Back down to Villas. Fields off his own bowling and there's no run. Tony Hardwick, who kept us informed about the um, the trains that were running past Trafalgar Road at mm -hmm. Southport last season when these two sides met. Balls again, worked into the offside. Has sent me a photograph of a 777 class mm -hmm. uh, unit, I think they call them. Um, decorated with uh, the Eurovision Song Contest. It's very colourful, I must say. It was finished last night in Liverpool. It's wide and left by route. The driver's working into the small hours to get people home. Well, that's good for them. Very good. And he thanks us for the informed commentary and Lanx TV for excellent coverage. Dave from Cork, formerly Grumpy Git, says, who was the last Somerset batsman to score 100 in each innings? Villas to uh, Rube down the leg side. That's the end of the over. 275 for five, lead of 310. I think the answer there was Tom Abel. Meanwhile, for those on the live stream, we see ah. our old friend Mike. With the uh, Rose's hat on. We've seen two famous fans, haven't we? Tractor from Somerset and Mike with his Rose's hat on. Yeah, Tom Abel got uh, 111 and 115 last season in the game against North Hans. Is Croft in and bowls, and this is cut nicely by Baldridge. Should be two runs here. There's Balderson Fields down at um, deep backward point. 277 for five, so it's not long. That was last September, last game down, last game at Taunton in last season's county championship. Croft in and bowls short. And way into the onside by Aldridge who has moved on to 27 278 for 5 how many more overs have we got today 40 in theory well yeah. they can Somerset can declare at 10 to 5 can't yeah. they and so that's probably the this is turned away again just for a single James Rue takes him to 79. I think this is the quickest scoreboard in the country. <laughs> one here. Very quick. It's Matt and Colin. They've got they've got the um, the run on the board even before it's been completed <laughs> by the batsman. <laughs> Croft comes jogging in short and again just dab down back with a square on the offside by Aldridge. See, runs for old rope going up here. It, trouble is, it sort of devalues the averages as well, doesn't it? When runs are so easy to come by. Croft in and bowls just. He's not really putting any effort into it at all, just rolling his arm over, mm -hmm. isn't it? Just hoping that the batsman will make a silly mistake. Going to go round the wicket. Obviously spotted something. <laughs> a chink in James Rue's armour. Here he comes and bowls. Ooh, a little bit of swing, a little bit of swing there. Away swing to the uh, left-hander. Would have been in swing to right-handed batsman. End of an over. Another deeply meaningless over. <laughs> <laughs> 280 for five. Peter Siddle's coming out with a drink. Is he going to come out with a message from the Somerset <laughs> dressing room? He's probably uh, he's probably asking them, <laughs> what do you want to do? Do you want to get 100 or do you want to declare? A 
Then us is going to build another over from the Anderson end. Yes. I'm sure it was his best. What extraordinary contrast this is. Yeah. You know, it's lackadaisical cricket yeah. compared with the atmosphere on that first morning mm. when Jimmy Anderson, with, with ball in hand, was, was running in from the Anderson end. Everything was so tense and wound up then. And now nobody really could care less what happens. Except possibly James Roof who's looking for another hundred. In comes Villas. It's chopped away into the offside by Aldridge. To 81 for five. Yeah, in contrast to last, last Sunday, I mentioned it before, mm. the game at yeah. Trent Bridge, just had the most brilliant finish. But right down to the very last ball of the match. It was, uh, it was wonderful drama, but <laughs> a little different today. Villas to Root. And that's turned out to uh, mid-wicket for a single. Rue moves on to 80. 282 for five. Lead of um, 317 runs. Don't forget that T will be at the at 340 today. Mm -hmm. It's uh, final fourth and final day, so a bit to go of the afternoon session. Worked away off the hit by Aldridge. Away to backward square leg. And moves on to uh, to 30 to 83 for five. with a couple of slips in place and that's off the front foot and into the offside for a quick single he's on to 81 not out to 84 for 5 we've got Dane Velas bowling and Stephen Croft bowling with a new ball Velas to uh, Aldridge. I wonder what Daryl Mitchell makes of all of this. <laughs> Flicked out to mid wicket for no run. Oh, my mood at first slip. He's uh, onto the hip of Aldridge. Oh, he's gone down towards the boundary. It'll glance away for four runs. On to 34, 288 for five. Is that the end of the over? Oh, I was trying not to watch. <laughs> 288 for five. It is the end of the over. 288 for five. What's happening elsewhere? Any excitement around the country? Leicestershire lead now, so they're following on. They're 162 for four, and they lead by two. So they've, they've got themselves a partnership. They've settled things down there after losing quick wickets this morning. Looks like the Pushing the game towards safety. Siri are well on course. They're 38 for one. Target of 70 to beat Middlesex. Kent holding out pretty well against Hampshire. 187 for four. Still 91 runs behind, but uh, edging closer to safety. Yeah, Billings out, LBW to Barker for 29. Croft to uh, Aldridge. Gets four more bonus runs. Yeah, down to the uh, boundary in front of the pavilion. Moves on to 38, not out. Okay, see Aldridge has batted a lot better than he bowled. I think it would be fair to say. Doubt he'll keep his place in the match against Middlesex at Lords with uh, Peter Siddle and Lewis Gregory both waiting in the wings. Croft again. That's uh, played into the offside, no run. I think both Aldridge and um, Josh Davey will give way to Siddle and Gregory. And that will be quite a formidable attack that Somerset will have with um, Matt Henry Craig Overton, Peter Siddle, 
Lewis yeah. Gregory and Chad Leach, we presume. Croft to Aldridge. Takes a single. Works the ball out to deep point where Balderson feels. 2 9 4 for 5. Aldridge on to 39, not out. Ooh, back on strike. That's defended by Root. To Hartley. Wouldn't a few keepy up his but Tom Hartley. Bumble was asked by Annie Chave to give a plug to her magazine. Mm. Annie Chave who summarises for us on commentary on the BBC Sports website. Her, her uh, magazine is called County Cricket Matters. Pulled the way to uh, backward square leg for a single. Uh, moves on to 83. And the reason I mention it is because in this instance, <laughs> county cricket is not mattering. Uh, uh, <laughs> I'm afraid it's, uh, as I said earlier, it's se sessions like this, and we've still got another two hours of this to go potentially that give the uh, the county game a bad name. Wouldn't have happened years ago in the days of three day matches when, unless one side was completely dominant, there had to be a bit of uh, artifice to, in order to set up a finish on the third day. But I think with promotion and relegation, as you were saying earlier on, Scott, it, you know, being in the first division matters so much to these first division clubs that they're, they're not going to put their status at risk by uh, any. Risky declarations. Still Villas from the. Oh no, he's yours, isn't he? Villas. Oh, sorry, I just did Croft. That's right. Villas uh, bowls to Rue, who's on 83. And uh, to be fair to James Rue, he's just batting in his normal way. He's not looking to take advantage of some bowling that's not far short of joke status. This is turned into the onside and shy at the stumps from Hartley. This is. And I think Aldridge would have been home in any case. He was the one running to the uh, danger end. His long legs carrying him quickly down the pitch. 296 for 5. Rouen to 84. Gloucestershire were bowled out for 383 in their match against Derbyshire. Derbyshire 19 without loss into their second innings, so they trail by 113 runs. Well, that's another fairly pointless exercise. This is turned square into the onside, although that's no reflection on Gloucestershire and Derbyshire, who lost the whole of the first day and a big chunk of the second day. Very hard to uh, conjure a result with if two sides are fairly evenly matched. In two and a half days. This is stroked by Rue into the offside. There's no run. Lead now of academic interest only 332. There are 39 overs remaining in the day after this one. As that's turned square out to deep backward square leg for a single. 85. Rue moves on to. We'll be uh, talking to um, Tom Abel at close, and I'll ask him at what stage they decided to uh, shut up shop, whether it was um, overnight or whether it was when um, Tom Cola Cadmore mm. was out this morning. I suspect the latter. This is turned into the onside by Casey Aldridge. I say the, the bowling is perfectly respectable. We're not seeing full tosses and long hops. Mostly just uh, gentle medium pace, just short of a length, and batsman content to work it around. 2.99 for five. James Rue, 15 runs short of a second century of the match, and Aldridge on the way to matching the 46, or even exceeding the 46 he scored in the first innings. Surrey are edging nearer to victory, so they're 51 for one. And got 
So Don Sibley on 19, not out. Ryan Patel on 17, their target to win. I think it was 70, wasn't it? Burns, the, the man out to Surrey. An impressive win against Middlesex. They keep mm. churning these wins out, don't they? They do. Matching what Warwickshire have done a little bit earlier on. Their Warwickshire's game finished yesterday. They beat Essex by uh, by four wickets. The results yesterday were also wins for um, Nottinghamshire by an innings and 25 runs and Warwickshire by four wickets and Glamorgan beat Worcestershire by ten wickets. There's also been a change in the field here as Croft comes in and bowls and that's worked to the onside for no run. Josh Bohannon is now keeping wicket for Lancashire. And George Bell's gone to mid-off and Bohannon's to keeping wicket. I suspect George Bell may be given a bowl. <laughs> Why not? 299 for five. Down the ground by Aldridge and stopped by Croft off his own bowling and there's no run. Yeah, so wins for Nottinghamshire beating Northamptonshire, Warwickshire beating Essex and Glamorgan beating Worcestershire. They were all confirmed yesterday. We've had Durham beating Yorkshire in a, in a good game for Chester this week. Runs for Aldridge. As he uh, drives away through the offside, Luke Wells fields and there's a single to bring up the 300 for Somerset, 300 for five. Yeah, Durham beat Yorkshire by one wicket. Um, and a good finish at Chester the Street, so good win for Durham over Yorkshire. Croft bowls, and that's drilled for four by Root. The back foot punched away through the offside for four. And Root is now 11 runs away, I think, from second century but as uh, Anthony made the point <laughs> the, the, the first was a, 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 an innings that was really memorable and of high skill and high class and very different different conditions and very testing conditions the latter part of this uh, hasn't quite been that way take nothing away from him as he works his ball away to mid-wicket where Luke Wells fields and there's no run I mean the lead's irrelevant now isn't it really it, but for uh, for those that want to know, it's 339. We've got 38 overs left in the day. We've still got 40 minutes until tea. This has worked our way down to fine leg. Will we see a declaration perhaps if uh, Rue if Rue gets to three figures? Just to you know, change it up a bit. 305 for five. Rue moves on to 90. And he keeps a strike as well. So he's 10 away from his... Uh, Second century of the of the match. The end of the over. Sun George has reached Simmons Bath in the heart of um, Midland Expo. So the homeward stretch. Stretch. Yeah, it's got about another fifteen miles or so to go quite tough miles over the top of Exmoor and then down into uh, Lynmouth. 305 for five as Villas is bowling to ooh, James Rue <laughs> let's that go that would be that would be a, a good example of bathos that would be if um, James Rue was clean bowled not playing a shot at um, Dane Villas Villas has no slip. It's Bohannon keeping wicket. This is dug out down the ground by Rue. And they'll just take the single being invited by Daryl Mitchell to come back for the second. No dice. That's the 100 partnership. Is there a ripple of applause? Mm, just about. That's probably Tractor <laughs> and his mate Steve. It's not a huge match to celebrate. Villas in and bowls. Driven by Aldridge, cut off by Croft. 
no run. Nicky Thomas says about teams not risking, uh, won't risk declaring, but makes the point. That's what Lancashire did at Trent Bridge last week. They did. They, mm. they, they, they were quite happy, it would seem, you know, to give the possibility of a win to, to Nottinghamshire. This has worked away into the onside to uh, Luke Wells. I mean, one decent partnership for Notts last week, and they probably would have won the game. Lancashire ball well and bowled them, and almost bowled them out. But that's a fair enough point, Nicky. I thought Lancashire's declaration last week was was that it uh, left the game in jeopardy. Yeah. Villas has got two short extra covers outside the off stump to Rue. Just leaves his bat resting on his shoulder. Yeah, I don't know. The game's meant to be <laughs> enjoyable, though, for players and spectators. Mm. It's not just about results. Quite. Vinas to Rue. Short, quick, quicker. Punched away through the offside just for a single. Good piece of fielding by Luke Wells. He lobs the ball in with a flick of the wrist to... Josh Bernard. George Bell just has a chat with James Rue. With yeah. whom I, ex yeah. I suspect he would have played for England under 19s, probably. He's going to have a ball as well. As I predicted. Well, it's, it's good for the little lad, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> what, what's the bowl? I have no idea. Well, I'm sure Playfair won't even won't <laughs> tell us. Bell. It's yeah. right hand back. Looking for a bit of off spin, I reckon. A bit of off spin. Right, George. <laughs> Come and have a ball. Oh, dear. It's uh, down the leg side. Gone all the way to the boundary rope. Mm -hmm. Just mm. stopped the run forward. Yeah. No, they haven't. They've run three. Or even three two. buys. Three buys. Three. Yeah. Bell to Aldridge. That's yeah, uh, just about landed on the pitch. Plague of missing his Aldridge. I think he's quite enjoying this, isn't he? He's got a little smile on his face. Well, I expect he gets the ball in the net sometimes. Yeah. Aldridge gets one run. Driven through the offside for a, for a single. He has bowled mm -hmm. for England under 19. So ah, excellent. So he's bowled five overs. Okay. 37. Yeah. One wicket. Oh. One wicket. He's into root. And uh, drags his delivery out towards the leg side. He's got one ball left. George Bell of his first over bowling for Lancashire. And Root gets forward and defends, and there is no run. He took one for 26 against the United Arab, Arab Emirates <laughs> under 19s. <laughs> <laughs> Surrey have beaten Middlesex by nine wickets, meanwhile, and go back to the top of the county championship table. How many points have they got? They have got 82. How many of these two sides going to have? T uh, ten for his Somerset. And nine for Lancashire, isn't it? I think. Probably says on the board. Somewhere. Yeah, yeah, the Lancashire's got four bonus points. Yeah. Somerset got five bonus points. Villas to Aldridge, who's on 44. 
uh, these these two Somerset batsmen, to their credit, are not exploiting the situation. They're just batting normally, treating the bowling with rather more respect than it deserves. But can't blame Lancashire. Benas is just making a bit of a statement about what he thinks of the Somerset lack of ambition, as this is well fielded by um, George Bell. Normally the wicket keeper, but he's fielding at short extra cover. Seven minutes past three, so we've got another hour and forty minutes of this to um, <laughs> look forward to. <laughs> One way to describe it. Now this is edged by Aldridge down to towards third man. I don't think it'll reach third man. Matty Hurst has had a long run to reach it gets there now, sends in a good return to Bohannon, and they come back for three runs, taking Aldridge on to 47, and meaning that James Rue on 92 be a has the strike. Be a second 50 for Aldridge against Lancashire if he gets it, well, 58 not out with Taunton a few weeks back. Yep, it will. Vilasian and bowls wide of the crease and nearly gets his man. That was a quite a good delivery, actually. There was nothing wrong with that. He bowled, bowled from wide of the crease, as I said, and angled it in at uh, the left-hander and then got it to go away off the seam and left James Rue on 92 yes. groping. He did. He had a nibble, didn't he? Yeah. And he's rewarded, well, he rewards himself by posting a slip and again in bowls and uh, that's punched down the ground by Rue but uh, it'll be fielded and it's just a single 93 James Rue has from 178 deliveries 13 fours 316 for five at the end of that over have another one with George Bell. Well, not bad, previous one. Here he is, Bell. It's the back foot and hammered away into the offside. So a second over in first class cricket for George Bell. Rue defends. Again, there's no run. I should have lost a fifth wicket, so maybe Sussex. Oh, that keeps a bit low. And, uh, flicks the ball away to, uh, to square leg. He's on to 94. 317 for five. So Leicestershire following on 187 for five. Lead Sussex by 27, but have just lost their fifth wicket. This is Aldridge. Playing the ball through the offside for one. She moves on to 48, 318 for five. Bell to Rue. Him back and playing it back down the pitch, and there's no run. I think George Bell's enjoying bowling at <laughs> James Rue. He is. England under 19 teammates. Bell again, forward goes Rue. Oh, giving it a good tweak as well. Is that the over? It is. 318 for five. He's not a bad stature for a, a spin bowler either. I always think that shorter. Spin bowlers, I mean, Jim Lake is the obvious exception to this, but uh, just get the ball up over the batsman's eye line. Tom Hartley, of course, very much the exception to that particular rule. He's bowled pretty well. Big smile on James Rue's face, as well there might be. But it's Aldridge to, bow to face the next over from uh, Dane Villas. And Aldridge defends respectfully into the offside. 
I can't imagine Five Live Sports Extra is still with us. No, I think they, 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 they left a long time ago. Villas then. Crowd quiet. Not much to cheer. That's played on the bounce to George Bell, who takes it nicely. A short extra cover. The workmen are finished for today on the uh, the new hotel, part of which is nearing completion. Vinas trotting in. And Aldridge defends watchfully. And uh, Daryl Mitchell just walks in to pick the ball up. Bit of a contrast from his recent exploits isn't yeah. it? Uh, in New Zealand. Proceedings having a desultory air at the moment. That's uh, Aldridge just taking advantage of a little bit of batting practice, but is that to Stephen Croft? 84, 48 from 94 balls. Casey Aldridge. Partnership worth 112. Finas bowls down the leg side. Shall catch it? But nothing on it. Nicely taken by uh, Josh Bannon. It's a bit less, I don't think Bellas has taken a wicket, has he, before? I, I've, I've, I have seen him bowl before in not too dissimilar circumstances to this. I'm not sure if he. Here he comes in and bowls down the leg side to Aldridge. It's a, well, applause. For, it was a maiden over, wasn't it? It was, yeah. yeah. That's his first. Six overs, one maiden for 20. And the uh, Lancashire captain. Yep, he has. He's bowled has he? two yeah. overs right. in um, first class cricket mm -hmm. for nine runs. That's the only bowling that he's done at uh, the sort of level that is recorded by Cricket Archive. Bell to Root. And he moves to 95, not out, but he got off the back foot. Drilling the ball away through wide mid on. 319 for five. Bell. In. Ooh. Left alone by Aldridge. Mm. It's a belt. Right arm over the wicket. Oh, it's a full toss. And that's uh, hit for four. And that uh, brings up the uh, 50 for Aldridge as well. 52 not out. 323 for five. Well, if there's any, ever anything such as a soft 50, I'm afraid that that's been it. Yes. A nice juicy full toss to get there. It's a f 52 from 98 balls. It's played into the offside by Aldridge, but straight to uh, Luke Wells. Bell to Aldridge. It's squirted back down the pitch. Well, before that uh, full toss, I was going to say that the one Lancashire player really enjoying this would be, might be Matty Hurst because um, George Bell is making a case for himself to be included <laughs> as <laughs> purely as a batsman and an off spin bowler. <laughs> and Hurst could get the gloves. Defends Aldridge. End of the over. 3 2 3 for 5. What have we got until tea? No time is it? 20 past three, so I've got 20, 20 minutes, minutes to go. To tea in there. I have a chocolate bauble. Yeah. I might even go for a digestive. And then uh, 40 minutes. Is it 40 minutes or 50 well, minutes? 50, 50 minutes, 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 something minutes, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So James Rue is on uh, 95. I suppose just thinking of the 
sort of statistical significance of what's going on at the moment. Lots of uh, players' averages from the uh, three-day cricket, three-day county championship era would have been influenced by setting up declaration targets and so on. This is driven by Rue back to the bowler on the bounce, who has threatened to throw the stumps down. But uh, wisely decides against. So it's nothing, nothing new, and uh, won't make a huge difference in the great scheme of things. Phil in a bowls, driven by Rue pleasantly, but cut off by Balderson at backward point. Most of the crowd staying put. I've hardly seen anyone wander away. They've, they've decided they've come here for a day at the cricket, and a day at the cricket is what they're going to have. Finas bowls, this is driven up to deep mid off where Daryl Mitchell fields it. Hardly a sound around the ground at the moment. Spinas is in a bowls. This is driven and it eludes the bowler in his follow through and he didn't actually make a huge effort to try and stop it, Dave Villas, and it brings James Rue four runs and it means he's on the verge of a second century in the game. This game, it will be his third of the season and his fourth overall it will make him makes him the uh, leading scorer in the county championship so far this season. This is outside the off stump, not far outside the off stump. And who's in ours? Just a little bit quicker then from Dane Villas. He's got a nice, easy action. I think both of these bowlers would take a few wickets in club cricket. He's just getting it to go a little bit off the seam. So James Rue is on 99, drives away and can't get it past George Balderson at point, so that's the end of the over and he won't get his 100 in that over. 327 for 5, 99 to Rue, 62, 52 rather to, uh, to Aldridge. The lead, now irrelevant, is 362. Kent have reached 200 in their second innings against Hampshire. Leaning and Cox currently batting. Pitch has obviously flattened out during the course of the game. As it tends to do at Canterbury, doesn't mm. it? Bell in. And Aldridge slogs the ball high towards the onside for, I think, for six. Yep, six. 3 3 3 4 5. Aldridge moves on to 56. It's a Perhaps they are going to declare when James Rue gets his 100 and Aldridge just wants to uh, make the most of the situation. Perhaps not. <laughs> Goes back <laughs> and <laughs> defends away to, uh, to Mitchell at backward point. No runs. So yeah, Kent to 201 for four. To lead by 77. So it's like. Kent are going to frustrate Hampshire. It's turned to the leg side by Aldridge. And Will Williams fields, and there's no run. Bell, a couple of steps and comes in and bowls. Again, work to the leg side. And again, there is no run. Bell, Aldridge drives, Croft fields, and there's no run, so a six off the first ball of the over, it's slogged away towards mm. deep mid-wicket, and then dot, 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 and another one, complete the 95th over, 330 
three for five. Aldridge on 58. Rue on uh, 99. Uh, Derbyshire have lost three wickets in their second innings. 38 for three. Trail Gloucestershire by 94. With seven wickets remaining. Well, I suppose a, um, an innings win for the Gloucester is not out of the question. No. Uh, Leicestershire still... Actually, they're now six down. They're 204 for six, Leicestershire. 48 in front of Sussex, but four wickets remaining. So, again, there's, there's life in that game. Bill has to bowl another over. James Rue's on 99. Plays this to the offside. He stays on 99. His uh, 200s in this game, assuming he gets the, the one run that he needs, will um, do his average no harm at all. He was averaging 45 before he came into this game, and this is well fielded by Stephen Croft at... Uh, short extra cover and Rue doesn't get his 100 there Dane Vinas in bowls from wide of the crease <coughs> Rue defends it's warming to his work is uh, Dane Vinas this is his 8th over he's only gone for 24 runs very accurate very gentle medium pace. Rue on 99 outside the off stump. No shot from the young Somerset left hander who has impressed many knowledgeable critics with his abilities both with bat in hand and with the gloves on as a wicket keeper even though Stephen Davis is keeping in this match for Somerset. Phyllis is in and bowls and Rue again, content just to play it back to the bowler. So one more ball in this over for James Rue to complete his second century of the match. And to confirm his unbounded potential. Pulls this away through the onside and that's a hundred for James Rue, his second hundred of the match he's completed it off 103 deliver uh, 196 deliveries is 103 with 15 fours and uh, not such a um, a glorious effort as in the first innings but very valuable to his side most of it certainly this morning when uh, Tom Kohler Cadmore was out there was briefly a moment of danger for Somerset, a, a moment of hope for Lancashire, but uh, James Rue has snuffed that out. Yeah, got a little tap on the back from Stephen Crawford to say well batted. He enjoys batting against Lancashire, doesn't he? He does. No declaration. George Bell pulls to Aldridge, that's swatted out through the leg side. Moves on to 59, 338 for five. It's Bell Paul now. This is his fifth over. And he's in to uh, to Rue. He goes off the back foot and turns it away to the onside. There's no run. We had the uh, excitement of seeing Stephen Croft take the new ball I was I mean I personally I was actually quite excited about that and Dane Velas took it at the other end oh LBW appeal bells down on one knee pleading towards the umpire <laughs> <laughs> he's got a big smile on his face leg by signaled he had little George Bell on one knee going come on umpire <laughs> give me a wicket <laughs> Two, three three nine for five Brings Aldridge back on strike. Oh, he'd love that, wouldn't he, if he had got Rue out? Mm. Yeah, and that's dropped away into the offside, and there is no run. Yeah, Josh Bannon's got the gloves to give George Bell a little twirl with his off spin. And he's, he's into 
Aldridge, who plays forward in defence. There's no run. Well, Somerset's lack of ambition is not going down well with well their supporters. I could well imagine. <laughs> I could well imagine. <laughs> in and bowls. And it runs down to third man for Aldridge. Mitchell will catch up with the ball. Aldridge jogs back for two. Yeah. Malcolm Elliott, for example, down in Plymouth. Or Plimpton, actually. Anthony, many Somerset supporters think the end of this game is a bit of a joke. We haven't won a game yet. We might regret not setting them a target if we get relegated. Apart from that, thanks for the excellent commentary. <laughs> We've done that best. It's been a challenging hour. It has. And uh, what else have we got? John Hayes says, awful. This has embarrassed the club no end. You work towards good scores, bowling sides out, having the upper hand on the final day, and bore us all. Shameful. Really shameful. I would rather go for it and lose than do this. Yeah, well, I think there'd be quite a few. Well, yeah, I mean, I made the point. I don't you know, did, and but but Nicky Thomas is going to make that. Teams won't risk declaring, except that's what Lancashire did at Trent Bridge last week. Is that? Yeah, they did. Yeah, they did. Shame Somerset can't be as positive. Yeah, well, I, I must say, I'm Andy Cleave saying what I said earlier on, sessions like this that give the county championship a bad name. If we've won a, any ambition in winning our first title. As Wells comes into the attack, replacing Dane Villas. We need to be more positive. What was the Dane Villas spell? I need to remember these things. It was, you don't often see these things. Dane Villas, oh, spell with a, with a second new ball. Far too excited about this. Wells in and bowls to uh, Rue. That's defended, there's no run. What did he bowl? Eight overs, one maiden for 28. I'm very disappointed that Villas didn't give Croft more of a, more of a go. He only had three overs with the mm. new ball. He's been waiting 15 years to bowl his seam. <laughs> and you give him three overs. Wells to Rue. Let's work down towards Croft at fine leg, no run. <laughs> Ian Shepherd don't always look on the bright side of life, says, so, uh, any chance you could decamp to a nearby club ground and give us something more interesting to listen to? Well, we're doing our best, Ian. We really are doing our best. It's not our fault that the cricket isn't uh, more compelling. I quite enjoy watching Stephen Croft bowl with, with, with the new ball. And I always enjoy watching leg break bowler. There we go. He's, and he's, he's, not, for he's not the worst by any means, Luke Wells. <laughs> There he is, into Rue. And there's a run, single through mid wicket. He moves to 104. 3, 4, 2 for 5. Well, th this certainly is not <laughs> what they tried to create by changing the point structure. This no. is exactly the opposite of what they were, <laughs> what they were trying to do. No, sides won't risk, well, some sides will risk losing, others won't. Lancashire in the first category, Somerset in the second. Wells to Aldridge. A little bottom edge of that, I think. Pulling the ball down towards Balderson at fine leg. And the score moves on to. Oh, they've been quicker. Get Matt and Colin downstairs. They've put the runs on the board already. Three, four, four for five. Final ball of the over wells from the Jimmy Anderson end Aldridge on 63 and balls that's uh, pushed out into the offside no run end of the over not too far away from a chocolate digestive <laughs> <laughs> no, what's it oh six minutes isn't it yeah six minutes a wicket. Oh, is it raining? That's that's useful. Is it? Yeah. I thought it was raining. Oh, no, maybe yeah. not. No, I don't think so. I was g just going to say that a wicket wouldn't be a bad idea because that would bring Craig Overton in. Oh, well, he'll give it a bit of a bosh, won't he? He would. Yeah. He would. Whereas these two, I think, are determined not to take too much advantage of a situation just to play their normal games. Not to be uh, accused of uh, padding their averages. So we've got another over from George Bell. We have takes off his cap, hands it to umpire Nigel Long. Takes 
great care in setting his field. Bowling to the left-handed James Rue is on 104. He's in a bow short and uh, just played gently into the offside. Picked up by Will Williams. These two Bell and Rue look to be here. Good mates by the judging by the good natured exchanges and smiles that we've seen between the two of them. Dane Villas coming in to where's he gonna field straight short mid off. No, he's going out to be a sort of short extra cover. In fact it's uh, it's not uh, Dane Villas, it is George Balderson. Bell bowls, and this is stroked away nicely by James Rue. Wasn't a bad ball, it was just a little bit short, made room for himself. And uh, stroked it away backward of square on the offside, fielded by Matty Hurst. Two more runs, 346 for five. Rue on to 106. This is the first time that Lancashire have used nine bowlers in a first class match since 2003. Mm. I suppose they could use all ten. Mm. All ten. We can't use Jimmy Anderson because he's out of the game. Tosses this one up to um, Bell and defended by James Rue. That game was against Kent at Blackpool in July 2003. And bowlers Martin Chapel Wood Hooper Mahmood Schofield Chilton Swan and Loy presumably in a similar sort of situation to uh, the one well, we got here yeah. yeah there were 602 for six declared okay. <laughs> <Lucky>. goodness <laughs> pretty flat pitch George Bell not um, hurrying through his overs so I've got three minutes to the team <laughs> he just says to, he just says to Aldridge, watch it, you know, you're going to get uh, man cat if you're not careful. He has big, big grin on his face. He's, yeah, he, he's got a good sense of humour. Nigel Long smiling as well. See the funny side of the situation. Bell tosses this one up, and again, it's defended by James Rue, who isn't doing too much damage to his uh, England under 19 colleagues career bowling averages first time he's bowled in first class cricket is uh, George Bell Tom Hartley giving him a word of advice and uh, he's moving Daryl Mitchell wasting a bit more time We've got two minutes, <laughs> two minutes to spin out the uh, the <laughs> remaining two deliveries in this over. Oh goodness! Can't really blame them. No, no. George Bell then eventually is going to bowl the fifth ball of this over, and James Rue defends. We've actually got two slips. It's. Uh, Lobbed to um, Will Williams, who gives it a vigorous polish on the back. Of him. Not quite why he's bothering to polish the ball with <laughs> George Bell is bowling off breaks. Well, I do know why he's polishing the ball. He's just wasting time. Fifteen thirty-nine says the uh, says the clock, and another field change being signalled by Luke Wells, bringing. Matty Hurst in off the boundary still says 15.39 he's done very well with this how long has this over been this is, this <laughs> is a world record for an, well, I for think an over 15.34 when yes it was it yeah. was so it's, it's taken over. five min minutes already well done so three slips go in look at this <laughs> have to get this a photograph of this and put it in James Rue. And it's gone. It's ticked over to 3.40. Oh, it's time for a biscuit. Oh, thank goodness for that. We can have a break. 3.46 for five. The lead, 381. James Rue's second century of the match.
Casey Aldridge. He has 106. Casey Aldridge is second 50 of the season. Both of them against Lancashire. He has 63 not out. We will resume will at we? four o'clock. Do we have to? <laughs> <laughs> when we will have to endure presumably another 50 minutes before they shake hands at uh, 10 to <coughs> 5. This match assuredly destined to be drawn. Cheers, Anthony. Go on, get a, get a biscuit. hard-working self-believers. Success is down to more than just luck and talent. It's striving to be the best, breaking the boundaries and never giving up. Are you ready to become your best self? Are you ready to unlock your greatness? So what are you waiting for? This is Education Evolved. This is UA92.
today we're sampling our Titanic Distillers Premium Irish Whiskey and our Titanic Distillers Premium Irish Sugar Beet Vodka. Our whole brand is about shipbuilding in Belfast and those people who built the boats and we want to honour those people. So our distillery will open October this year. It'll be the first working distillery in Belfast in over 100 years. Within here in the hospitality area, we have been given out some free samples and then we're also offering some cocktails on the bar, bespoke cocktails using both our spirits. In the fan village, we've been just chatting to people about the Titanic brand, they've maybe never seen it before, so just getting their feedback on the brand and how both the spirits taste. Our reception for both our spirits today has been amazing. We've had some great comments about the whiskey. There's a lot of whiskey fans here, so a lot of people really were excited to try an Irish whiskey. Vodka, because it's made from the sugar beet, it's naturally sweet, it's unfiltered, and it's had a really, really good reception. So it's been fantastic. We're really excited here at Lancashire Cricket to be working with New Balance Team Sport. It's always good to have a fresh approach and New Balance uh, Team Sport is certainly bringing a fresh approach to everything we do. Lancs were great to work with, they had a really clear direction of where they wanted to take it. We really wanted to incorporate both the old and the new within the kit design. The design of the kit's really important for us here at Maxwell Trafford. We look at the Red Rose, we look at the history that's established with us, and everything's got to weave together. We met up with Lancashire Cricket and the design team to learn about their values and what they wanted the kit to represent. The team really focus on what works not only for the players and the, the professional environment but what works well for the fans. New Balance and Lancashire Cricket share the same values of inclusivity so it's really important for us that the shirts can be worn both on the pitch but also when people are hanging out with the friends. There's a sense of pride there that we've found a partner that just fits with everything we're trying to do. I think a club with such a rich heritage such as Lancashire Cricket allows for much more of a story to be built into the shirt and what the club stands for. And it's just really exciting to think about our ladies and gents going to be walking out onto the pitch before long in their new balance red rose tops.
that looks like a lovely ice cream, is that? Look at that, a little bit of flake and a bit of... Any raspberry sauce on there? I can't see any raspberry sauce, but... Bit of bit of ice cream during the course of the tea interval. Welcome back to uh, Emirates Old Trafford. Live on Lanx TV and the BBC Sport website and app for the final... What are you, what are you describing, Anthony? The final what? The last knocking. That's <laughs> <laughs> the last <laughs> knockings. Yeah. We're knocking for the final time. Uh, the uh, two not out batsmen, oh. Casey Aldridge and James Rue. Rue 106 not out and Aldridge 63 not out. We've had the very exciting prospect of watching Stephen Croft take the new ball with Dame Villas. We've seen George Bell bowl his first overs in first class cricket. We've had nine bowlers used, and that's the first time that's happened for Lancashire since 2003. And the last time that Lancashire used ten bowlers in a match was 1987. Well, they've still got potential to uh, the eight, isn't it? Four, one, two, three, I think it's nine. Five, isn't it? six, seven, eight. Oh, yes, it is nine. You're quite right. Who hasn't bowled? Bohannon hasn't yeah, bowled. Bohannon, yeah. He can bowl as well, can't he? He can, yeah. I hope someone's told him that this not, it's not happened since 1983. And he can well, as a pretty um, unanimous verdict in the Twitter sphere about um, <laughs> the way this game has gone. Can today. I guess which way that, that is? <laughs> there is a, uh, Tim Cooksley, for example, Rube Brilliant, uh, disappointing in the lack of ambition. Lack of confidence in team. Nigel Long should have given Rue LBW just to add to the farce yeah. of the game. Give a spectator <laughs> a chance to bowl. <laughs> well, Colin was was uh, telling me during the tea interval he, he, he might go out and do a bit of something himself during the course of this uh, final session. Now, 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 now I think somebody should produce extraordinary impersonate Jimmy Anderson. Uh, what have we got? Stephen Croft to open up the bowling from the Jimmy Anderson end. What we could do with this is Graham Gooch doing some of his bowler impressions. Did you ever see him do oh, those? Oh, yeah, yeah. yes, yeah. He did a brilliant Bob Willis. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't Alistair Cook do a... Uh, yeah, Alistair Cook could did do a, it as well. A Bob yeah. Willis impression. Yeah. yeah. Maybe we'll see a few impressions. That'd be good. What else have we got? Robbie Robinson. I think grumpy old git has cloned a few of us, turned into one witnessing this cricket. Here comes Croft in and bowls. And this is pulled away uh, through the onside. There's a good half stop out there by uh, Luke Wells. Did well there. Another run to Aldrich. Moves on to 64, 347 for five. I had three chocolate bourbons in the end. Oh dear. No, I had, I had no. a couple of shortcake biscuits. Mm. biscuits. West Country Racing says, if you interview either Mr. Hurry or Mr. Kerr, please ask them why we didn't declare and give us ourselves a chance of winning. Well, I'm not going to interview either of them. I'm going to interview Tom Abel, Somerset Skipper. As Croft is bowling his uh, off breaks now. And that's turned into the onside by James Rue and uh, chatting to Paul Edwards, who's reporting this match with the Times during the uh, tea interval. He made the interesting point that when James Rue reached his 100 he didn't really celebrate it yeah. at all yeah. knowing that uh, it was money for jam this one doesn't bounce very much and it's well played by Casey Aldridge we have got just under 50 minutes to go 46 minutes to go before Somerset declare and the match is a draw is levered into the onside by Aldridge for a single. <coughs> I tell you what I did see during the tea interval, I saw St Steve Smith's catch at, in the Leicestershire Sussex match. Blimey, that was good. I He's seen taken that, yeah. an absolute worldy slip at Steve Smith in that. Um, well, he is very good in the slips, isn't he? This is driven up to mid-off where it's a shy at the stumps and um, Daryl Mitchell was just slow setting off there and attempted to make up for it with a violent 
throw at the stumps but missed. And I think that uh, Aldridge would have been home in any case. 350 is on the board for Somerset Croft Bowl Shaw. Be runs here for Aldridge. Two of them probably as uh, Matty Hurst has a lot of ground to make to his right out on the cover boundary. And 352 for five. And it's the end of the over. Ian Shepherd making a point on them. Always look on the bright side of life. If when we were Somerset were 12 for 3 at 11.30 on Thursday morning. If you'd said Somerset would bat all day Sunday to ensure a draw, most people would have bitten your hand off. Well, it's true up to a point, but things have moved on a lot since uh, 12 for 3, and Somerset did have the opportunity to set up a finish. Bell to Root. And, uh, there's no run. It couldn't be any more contrasting now, could it, compared to, th compared to Thursday no, morning at 12 for 3. Bell. Loopy <laughs> ball. Ooh. He, he did edge that, didn't he? He did. Um, he short. Good, uh, good bit of fielding by Dane yeah. Delas. 3-5. 2. For, uh, for 5. James Rue keeps looking at the bottom of his bat. Yeah, he's done that a few times, hasn't yeah. he? Looks, a, looks all right from here. Well, on the close-ups, getting on the, uh, the live stream. George Bell's enjoying himself. <laughs> he is. A cap off his day if he can get his mate out. <laughs> Rip off the back foot and defending. And uh, yes. no run. 352 for five. So yeah, there's um, that game actually. Le Leicestershire Sussex looks like it's going to head into a draw. Leicestershire are batting quite well in their second innings and they're making the game safe. But there is a spectacular catch by Steve Smith in that game. It's pushed up towards uh, extra cover. There's no run at the end of this over. For those on Lanx TV, we'll be able to see it and we'll describe it to you as well. It's a absolute belter. So two balls left. Rue 108, slip in place. Bell continuing. I just didn't like it, she's overrate. <laughs> she's worked into the offside, a plus nine <laughs> on the overrate. <laughs> That's uh, played out through the offside for a single. 353 for five. Rue moves on to 109. <laughs> so we still having a chat between the, the pair of them. They obviously are good mates. <laughs> I'm not too sure if George Bell will set off this season thinking he would he, he would be bowling at some point stage. Here he is. And that's Aldridge driving up towards Hartley. And uh, that completes the over. So it's three five four for five. Aldridge on sixty eight, Rue on one hundred nine. This is the Steve Smith wicket. Um, in that Leicestershire match, he's at second slip. Oh goodness! <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that a belter? Uh, he really took off there. Yeah, leaping away to his right, one-handed catch. And actually, our colleague Adrian Harms on the BBC Sport website and apps and reckons it could be the catch of the season award already secure for mm. Steve Smith. Says Adrian. This is me or you? This is me. This is pulled away by uh, Casey Aldridge over the top of straight mid wicket for four runs out to the stand beneath the point. The point stand is actually stand A, is that right? Uh, is that e, I think that's E. Oh, that's E, that's is it? E. So it's yeah. st right. So it starts the other way around. It does. A's in front of the hotel. Uh, right. Can't get lost that's with very ABC. Very complicated. Yeah. <laughs> 3.58 for five. Aldridge is. Uh, must be eyeing up a, a maiden first class century. Pulls this away, but this time he won't get it past Luke Wells at uh, mid wicket, who makes a good stop. Aldridge now on 72 from 120 balls. Croft bowls. Aldridge turns this into the onside. And 
Balderson. Jogs in from the boundary to do the fielding. It's another single, 359 for five. This is punched up to mid on. It won't be a run, even though there probably would have been a run if James Rue had set off straight away. That's um, Dane Velas. It's pretty deep. Up there, more cloud cover now than there was earlier on. The uh, cold front coming in from the Atlantic. It's played back to the bowler. But nothing too nasty threatened, which is good news for me. So I'm going to drive back to Somerset this evening. This is dug out by Rue, full length from Stephen Croft. End of that over. We've had 102 overs and uh, 3.59 for five. Elsewhere, that's the latest from Grace Road, 2.30 for six, Leicestershire. So they lead by 70 with four wickets remaining. It could still be something in that, depending if Sussex can take those four wickets. But 17 from Leicestershire, 230 for six. That's in Division 2. That's uh, Bell. Continue. This is eighth over. Bell in ball, has run away down towards backward point by Aldridge. Wants to come back for two, throw comes in towards the keeper's end. They have crossed for two and Aldridge is now up to 75, not out. 361 for five. Bell and a ball around the wicket to Casey Aldridge. It's a low full toss which is uh, thumped down the ground towards Mahmoud at long on for long run. 3 6 2 for 5. They have quite a lengthy spell here, isn't he? Belly the side of T into his eighth over. Who's not bowled yet? Bohannon. I think he's the only. Yes, he is, isn't he? He's the only um, player not to have a, a bowl yet. <laughs> Bell comes in and Rue's backing up. Sorry, it's Aldridge backing up at the uh, non strikers end. And again, Bell just. Uh, just saying, well, I might just run you out. I might just uh, run you out at this uh, non-striker's end if you don't uh, stay in your crease. <laughs> Balls to Rue, plays forward and defends, and there's no run. A man cat is the uh, dismissal that Bell may have been flirting with the idea of. Mm. <laughs> Three hundred and sixty two for five. Bell balls again. Rue goes back. That was a nice shot. Just steering this down towards third man. Croft is chasing after it. And uh, Croft can't catch it. It reaches the boundary rope for four runs. So it's 113 now to James Rue. 366 for five. It's a late cut down to third man, nice looking shot. Mm. Nicely timed, bouncing his way up towards the boundary rope. Followed by Stephen Croft, who gave it a bit of a boot. With two balls left of the uh, over. Which, uh, it's not quite taking six minutes like it did before, T, no. but uh, it's in. They're not in any hurry, are they? No. I can't blame them. Yeah, neither. That's a bell. He's uh, bowling to room, just to. Uh, that one to go through to the keeper. 
And there's no run. One ball left of the over. I think we're going to have a look at the game between Kent and Hampshire at the end of this over. Where again, the draw is looking likely. And that's uh, hit away for no run by James Rue. So 366 for five here at the end of the over. Lead of 401. Kent. Hampshire game. Hampshire still looking for six more wickets to, to bowl Kent out. They're still behind Kent, still trail by 70 runs. Actually 69 now, isn't it? 209 for four. But, um, yeah, Hampshire need f six wickets in this evening session to try and match Surrey and win. And win. That looks like another five o'clock. It does. Yep. It does. <coughs> Which is good news for the other teams in the first division because mm. uh, Hampshire among the front runners just being pegged back. Stephen Croft is going to bowl another over. He's bowling to Casey Aldridge. This is a dreadful ball. <laughs> pop down the leg side. Which is uh, calmly put away for four of the easiest runs that Casey Aldridge will ever score. 370 for five. Long hop that side the next. It's going around the wicket. Oh, and almost gets through. That one keeping a little bit low. Guess if this was a a seven-day game of cricket rather than a four-day game of cricket, there might be something in the pitch for the bowlers by the seventh day. So that's played up to. Long on for a single, 371 for five. Aldridge on to 81, which is his career best, as goes without saying. Previous career best was against Lancashire down at um, Taunton, 58 not out. Might be, there should have been a single there, but Rue declining to take advantage of the situation. Croft into Rue, who stretches forward in defence. What else have we got on the. Um, no, oh yes, interviewing Abel, yes, that's right. I will be interviewing Abel, not Andy Hurry or Jason Kerr. Is Croft in the bowls? And this is hit into the offside off the back foot by. James Rue and uh, Ian Shepherd, always on the Bright Side of Life podcast, just doing some reading up on George Bell's sporting prowess. Apparently, he holds the Lancashire School's under-14 high jump record, <laughs> which, sat, which I think is a bit implausible, <laughs> considering he's only about five foot six inches tall. <laughs> Sounds like a, one of these Luke Wells stories that were, that were made up. Yeah, I think so. Oh, I think we're going to have a look at the Derbyshire match, aren't we? J just to round up the, the scores from other games. So Derbyshire are playing Gloucestershire, and this again, this is heading towards a draw, but they've had a lot of um, poor weather. 82 for three. Uh, Derbyshire second inning, so they still trail by 50, but yeah, that one is... Uh, he's looking draw-like. It's Aldridge. Who's uh, hitting this down towards Saqib Mahmood. For a single, 3.72 for five. Rue comes back on strike. Lee Maidman saying, not worth using a semi-fit Overton on that wicket. Yeah, well, I think Craig himself might uh, differ. Bell to Rue off the back foot and to square leg for a single and the Somerset could all, always have had a, a bit of a dip you know really go hard for the first 15 20 overs and see if they could pick up a couple of wickets put Lancashire under pressure I don't think they would have bowled Lancashire out in 50 overs but we might have had some rather more meaningful cricket if Somerset had declared Bell 
to Aldridge. That's run down to third man, Nell Rum. There was, a, I mean, just on the conversation of declarations, I mean, Notts actually lost a game at Middlesex, didn't they, this season, with a declaration that was <laughs> pretty generous. But I spoke to Stephen Mullaney last week about that, and he was like, well, we didn't want to we'll try and win. We mm. wanted to try and have a bit of fun and try and enjoy the game. And in the end, Notts ended up losing the match, but... He, he said, I've got no regrets with the declaration that that he made, which in the end backfired. Berlin that's turned out towards the leg side by uh, Aldridge for a single. 3.74 for five. But I will caveat it by saying, you know, our jobs don't depend on it, do they? I mean, it's easy to make these decisions from up here, but trying to judge it as from a, from a captain who's running the team and the coach and factor both sides into it but it's certainly meant for a pretty turgid afternoon there's uh, Bell cries a catch Ooh. Bell's desperate for his first wicket in first class cricket but uh, wasn't coming there Rue comes back for two He's on to 116, not out, 376 for five. Mark Overton is suggesting that George Bell is Alexander Bell's great-great-grandson. Alexander Bell, the inventor of the telephone. Bell to root. And that's uh, played up towards mid on, and there's no run. End of the over. I think we're going to have about half an hour of play left, haven't we? Twenty past, yeah, twenty past four. So about half an hour to go. Whether well, Mark is having us on or uh, not? Yeah, well, I suspect so. Having sound to Graham Bell, isn't it? So, who are we going to have? A bowling change? I think he's. I think Velas is having a, having a go again. I think he ought to take. He ought to take the wicket keepers' pads and gloves and give Josh for a go. go. Yes, yeah, I agree. We're going to have ten. We can have a good look at the ball, which is distinctly battered, demonstrating his grip. He's going to give himself four slips here, I think, isn't he? Yeah. Velas is on the attack. Saki Mahmoud's at first slip. I don't think I've ever seen Saki Mahmoud at first slip. Or indeed second slip or third slip. <laughs> <laughs> this is four, four slips, short cover, square leg, mid off. Comes uh, jogging in, bubbles, and this is driven much foot movement by Casey Aldridge on the ground up to, uh, to mid off there's nothing in his um, Wikipedia profile that suggests yeah. he's Alexander Graham Bell's I think that's because it's nonsense <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I should watch out if, you know, if it turns out not to be well if it turns out not to be I'll yeah. take it back <laughs> it's uh, Dame Villas He's in and bowls. Oh, oh dear. Goodness. That must be a wide. It is a wide. And, uh, a great, <laughs> a great <laughs> amusement. <laughs> Slip Gordon. Saki Mahmoud's having some, t taking some tips here, I think. So that's another run. 377 for five. You've not uh, mentioned your Tom Hartley stat. I know you like your Tom. Oh, fact about Tom Hartley, have you? He used this at Taunton the other way. He's outside oh, the off stump. I can't remember what it was. Well, he's mum and dad. We're Paul Vault champions or something. Oh, yeah, oh, of course, George and Donna. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, was it George? No, no, not George. Um, what was it? Date? No. I'm sorry. They, they were both um, gold medal bill. winners uh, in oh, the either the European Championship or um, the Commonwealth Games. 
Oh, that, that was a bump ball. Will Williams. Bill Hartley, I think it was. And That's it, Hartley. Bill. Yeah, yeah, Bill. Bill Hartley and Donna Hartley. Yeah, winning gold, European gold medal in, in 1974. Hmm. It's uh, Phil Asin and Bowles. Peel for a catch behind. <laughs> <laughs> Made in jest, I think it would be fair to say. Casey Aldridge doesn't look terribly amused. But um, he's 17 short of a maiden first class century. And he looks pretty determined to get it as well. Yeah. He and uh, James Rue have added 172 together. Ooh, it's just outside the off stop which may or may not be a record no, I don't think it would be a record with a um, sixth wicket partnership for Somerset against Lancashire given the number of times these two sides have uh, played each other going back into the 1890s Lancashire have had the better of the contests down the years and this is pulled away by Casey Aldridge for. I'm sure whether that was. F it's four, just four. four. Yeah, four. Going to be retrieved by George Balderson. Pulled away well in front of Square. Bouncing. Oh, bounced quite well short of the. Um, of the boundary. Moves on to 87. Doesn't look particularly excited. <laughs> just <laughs> calmly chewing his gum. Yes. We can uh, those of you listening on BBC Sport app, we can tell that because we're getting very good close-up pictures of the uh, players courtesy of Lanx TV. This is driven and misfielded by Will Williams, which is most unlike him because he's fielded actually very well. To extra cover, so he gifts Casey Aldridge another run, which takes Aldridge on to 88. It's the end of another over. It's 4:27, so we've got another 23 minutes of this to endure. Okay, we're gonna have a drink, I think. Oh, that's a good idea. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna have a little drink. It's thirsty work. Tom Bailey come out with some drinks for everybody. Have a slurp. Yeah, we'll just go and go back to some of the comments on Twitter. Andy Maybe we said, not worth using a semi-fit Overton on that wicket. Replying to that, Mark Anthony Hilton says, that's no excuse. Some said, five frontline bowlers plus able. Those five could easily have bowled 55 overs or so. Leach could probably have bowled 15 to 20. It's a mindset of a club that's petrified of losing. And a set of coaches that know they're on their last seasons. Well, I'm not sure about that, but... Paul Sharon saying, I don't think your commentary matched your opinion. You said earlier there was no way Somerset could reach a safe total to declare at. Yeah, I did. But you, with cricket, you never know. And I did also say on commentary that I thought setting Lancashire 350 ish sort of overs and then just having a little bit of a dip, seeing if you pick up early wickets might have been the way to go. Then you join the popular chorus who complained they didn't declare and set target end of season. The draw might save us. Yeah, fair point. Dan Kingdom, I'd have declared long ago, but it's not fear of loss that's motiv motivating us in uh, batting on. The game was safe two hours ago. Well, they certainly can't win now, so why declare at all? Looking forward to the listener questions on tomorrow's. Somerset podcast. Let's always look on the bright side of life. Uh, Ian Shepherd uh, is suggesting that okay. um, George Bell is Ian Bell's brother-in-law, <laughs> as well as being <laughs> Alexander Graham Bell's great-great-grandson. Yeah, he's struggling to have a drink now as well, isn't he? John Hayes yeah. says he's, he's, he, he was the one who, f who founded Baby Bell. <laughs> Jeez. I think someone's having a little bit of fun with George yeah. Bell. He's brought his drink out and he went to go and have a slurp of it and half of it went down his front. <laughs> <laughs> he, is a, he's a, he is only a little lad. 
He's joking. He's like Lancashire's new off spinner. <laughs> yeah, Show him some more respect, Anthony. Yeah. Yeah, look at the key to the bowl Lancashire to the championship title. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was an impromptu drink break. Drinks break. That uh, has happened. My son George is still going. He's not far away now. Probably about an hour short of the uh, of the target. Where is he now? He's he's in what among he's on on is the the correct um, preposition on the chains which is just about the most remote part of Exmoor but it's he'll, he'll soon be all downhill down to Lynmouth by the sea and he should be there in about an hour's time right what's happening uh, pushed away to for a, a single. I can I can hear music being played mm. Some, somewhere in the background. A few tunes going on somewhere. I guess you've cracked open a beer on the balcony and put some music on, maybe. <laughs> Three eighty-four for five. Aru on one hundred and sixteen, not out. in and bowling and that's left alone taken by Bohannon three eight four for five George Bell's gonna tie up his boot laces now That's driven into the offside and uh, jog through for a single 385 for five Bell is halfway through his tenth over. And that's hammered up to mid off where Hartley fields, and there is no run. 385 for five. He's still going on with a good, good pace at George. Eight kilometres an hour. Good effort. God, that earth is he still going? It must take him weeks to recover from this. Yeah. Goodness. I think he'd be working from home tomorrow. <laughs> in the bath, in a cold <laughs> bath, yeah, or a warm bath, whichever one he wants. Oh, that's a me. loopy full toss, which is uh, hit into the offside by Aldridge, and there is no run. Yep. Polly's packed away the flag. Don't be leaving, leaving your flag on the roof of this media centre. Mm -hmm. Chat with Polly, the Somerset score at T. Yeah, she wasn't over impressed with the proceedings today. Tie his boot lace it up again. George Bell. <laughs> Has this over l lasted longer than the six minutes one that we had just before tea? It's not far off. Not it's far off, yeah. It's not far off. He's completely relacing his I think uh, he is, cricket yeah. shoes. Yeah. Yeah. Where's that music coming from? Yeah. I definitely hear music. of a party somewhere. Mm, must be. Bell to Aldridge. And uh, Hartley tumbles away to his left to uh, complete the fielding. And that is the end of a very, very long over. <laughs> At least it felt like it did. I felt like I've aged during the course of that over. 300 <laughs> aged by 10 years. 386 for five. Um, at the end of it. Dame Villastable, another over from the um, Henderson end. 
Is it the Anderson end or the Jimmy Anderson end? I think. Well, I think it's the James Anderson. James yeah, Anderson yeah, end. The Sorry. J there's a little. The, the the guys will get this. I'm sure. There's a little sign. Uh, oh yes, I can see it. Yeah. Yeah. Front just below the, the clock. There it there is. There it is. The James Anderson end. Just a shame that the man himself unable to play a full part in this mm. game. So, you're not missing any cricket. Next year, aren't in any hurry to bowl these last few overs. This is Peel for a catch behind as <laughs> Casey Aldridge rather groped for that outside the off stump without moving his feet. He's on 90, his highest first class score. And uh, if I was him, given the speed that, at which Lancashire are bowling their overs, I think, I think I'd uh, be getting a move on to get that 100 sooner rather than uh, rather than later. The over rate is plus nine, so Lancashire can well afford to uh, take their time in bowling these last handful of overs. Then us becomes padding in. This is swung away for six. I think. Six. Oh no, no four. Sorry, sorry. Four. four. Just bouncing over the um, boundary rope in front of the point. Way to our left. He obviously had the same thought as I had. A splendidly bearded steward. Oh, there look he is. At that. Yeah. Tremendous. Retrieves the ball. <laughs> and chucks it back to uh, Stephen Croft. It's a great beard. So Casey Aldridge on 94, just sh six short of a maiden first class century. And he will take a single to take him on to 95. Score is 391 for five. We're halfway through the 108th over. Finas is taking a great deal of time and trouble in setting his field. He's got three slips. And the wicketkeeper standing back, which I suppose it is only... Well, Josh Bohannon can keep wicket, can't he? Yeah, Bohannon, yeah, Bohannon's yeah, keeping wicket. Yeah. Well, I'm just thinking, you know, he could be standing up to the stumps. Oh, I'm with you, yeah. 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 What we're waiting for here, we'll have a little look at the ball, I think. Yeah. Luke Wells examining it minutely. Finally satisfied with it. Will Williams chucks it to Stephen Croft, and it will eventually reach Dane Villas. And that's Stephen Croft who's rolling over to do and um that's that's Daryl Mitchell showing the ball to Tom Lungley to waste a little bit more time. Three slips. Really remember the intensity of cricket that was played mm. on the first morning. It's a bit different, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Villas eventually in and bowls a full toss outside the off stump, which is just <coughs> oh, <what's it? laughs> a poor throw from um, <laughs> from George Bell, <laughs> who apologises profusely <laughs> to <laughs> Josh Bohannon, his replacement as wicketkeeper. Well, it's a good take by Bohannon. Yeah. What? James Rue is not looking to exploit this situation, which is to his credit. Could easily have hit that for four or six. Villas in and bowls gentle medium pace, and again, Rue just pushes that into the offside, into a gap, and they're able to trot through for a single. 14.39, the clock says, on the uh, scoreboard. It seems to be going slowly, that, doesn't it? It seems to be going backwards, that clock. I mean, I keep staring at it, but it doesn't seem to be moving any any quicker. 
point five. I was going to say, I thought we'd had five balls in serve. It did say well, yeah, I seven point three has just ticked over to point five. I think Matt and Colin have just had a bit of a snooze downstairs, and well, they you can hardly blame them. <laughs> <laughs> but my commendations on the speed of the uh, scoreboard, yes, which is the fastest yeah. I have come across certainly this season so far. Fast and accurate, <laughs> except when they had um, Matt Henry coming in is instead of Josh Davey on the first day. Well, it was a bit of a hiccup. Yes. Yeah. But to be fair to them, mm. I think Matt Henry was down on the scorecard to come in after the fall of that wicket. Here we go then, last ball of... Oh my <laughs> word. This is hit for six, and that will be Casey Aldridge's 100. And... Uh, just punches gloves and lifts his bat to uh, acknowledge the applause from the dressing room and Saki Pamud also applauding most of the Lancashire players not bothering given the circumstances but can't take it away from him it's a maiden first class century he scored 101 off 143 deliveries with uh, eight fours and uh, two sixes and that will be in the record books forevermore Indeed. and there will be no asterisk <laughs> to indicate the circumstances mm. under which it was scored well there are still people in the ground watching we can see a chap with his Lancashire um, jacket on and his Lancashire cap with a little earpiece in listening to our commentary in the upper tier of C stand uh, you, uh, I hope you're enjoying your final throws of the game He's got, he's got a uh, little ECB rucksack to his left-hand side. Can you hear me? Give me a little thumbs up if you can hear you. Yay, we go. <laughs> Happy days. <laughs> oh. Mahmoud's going to bowl a bit of off-spin to, uh, to Rue. Can we, could this be the last over? Can we make this over last eight minutes, do you reckon? Is that, is that pushing mm, it a bit? Do you reckon I you could think make there'll it? probably be one more okay. after this, I okay. think. Is uh, Mahmoud. And that's uh, defender. Sim Bailey bowled some off spin previously. He's, he's back, didn't he? Bowled off spin at Taunton. Yeah, yeah. He didn't bowl badly at all. It's a bit of a first for, for Sack. So uh, that's uh, Rue off the back foot. Getting through this far too quickly, Saki <laughs> Mahmood. <laughs> he needs to slow right down. Three balls remaining. Oh, Mahmood's over. Slowly coming in. It's jabbed back down the pitch. And there is, uh, there is no run. Gives it to Luke Wells to give it a bit of a polish. Yeah, I think a lot of credit to James Roof for not seeming to, uh, to exploit this situation. And inflate his uh, mm. average. Artificially inflate it. Well, it wouldn't be artificial. I mean, we can only bat against whatever the bowling are served up with but it is a rather bizarre set of circumstances two balls left for Mahmoud's off spin pushed back down the pitch and there's no run hey, you can pick up those earpieces if you come into Emirates Old Trafford this summer you can pick up those earpieces I think in the club shop to um, into the commentary and that's a defender again off the back foot and there is no run that's the over I think it's a maiden 398 for for five there has been a wicket falling in the game in division two between Derbyshire and Gloucestershire so now four down but again that is drifting towards 
a draw. 97 for four, Derbyshire. Still trail by 34 runs. Big March and Delanger playing for Gloucestershire in that game. Formerly of Somerset before that, Glamorgan, of course, a great character. Can bowl genuinely fast. Right, wicketkeeper coming up to the stumps for Dane Villas, who will bowl what I strongly suspect will be the last over. Stephen Croft does some fancy foot footwork, which comes rather unstuck. And Dane Villas has a practice delivery. And another one. <laughs> <laughs> right, we're all set. Villas to Aldridge. Oh, this is a... A high full toss, which Aldridge ignores. Not quite sure what Villas is. This is another one, which is just driven back to him. He's not actually wasting too much time. No, he's, not, not, no. he's, uh, he started, perhaps he's recognised that probably there will have to be another over after this one. The bowling leg spin. I'm watching the certainly giving it plenty of air. <laughs> like an old fashioned lob bowler. <laughs> the lobsters as they were called. This is padded away by Casey Aldridge, very short, outside his leg stump. Well, it's rather a downbeat, sad way for the match to end. There's been some good cricket in it. Gritty, gutsy hundred from um, James Rue in Somerset first innings. Very stylish, classy hundred from Daryl Mitchell. Some good fast bowling. And Craig Overton and uh, Matt Henry. And uh, is that going to be it? No, not quite. 16.47 says the clock, so hmm. I guess <coughs> Tom Abel will declare at the end. Or are they going to shake hands now? That would be breach of regulation. It would, yeah. My mood is just having a chat with James Rue. But uh, there, there is going to be another over. Yeah, as I was saying, we yeah. had some good cricket, have we not? We have, yeah. We certainly have. This is I mean, the last couple of sessions, obviously, have been uh, <laughs> haven't been the best. But um, yeah, we've uh, we've seen some. I, mean, I thought the Thursday morning and the way that Somerset fought back in the match mm. yeah. was was terrific. I thought Anderson's spell in that morning was outstanding. Here we go. This is going to be the last. Got to be the last over, isn't it? Well, it's still three minutes. And he's going to get three quite quickly. Dabbed away for no run. Should be all right. Two minutes to to time. Two minutes away from being ten two. Dropped out into the onside. No run. So it will be a fifth successive draw for Lancashire. Both these two teams will be still winless. Yeah, four draws and a loss for Somerset. But they're neither of them in the bottom two in the county championship. Three, nine, eight for five. Mahmoud in bowls. Blue goes back and defends. There's no run. And the mood balls again and Maru defends again. And the umpire looks up towards the scoreboard and sees a time at 16.49. And there's two balls left. A long couple of hours for the umpires too. Again, that's defended, and there's uh, no run. <laughs> oh dear, poor George Bell. He's been sent out to deep mid wicket. <laughs> Mahmoud says to Bell, "Go on, mate. Go back a few yards." <laughs> 
and then just laughs. <laughs> Hidden balls turned towards the leg side, and there is no run. It would be idiocy to continue <laughs> to yeah, have another shaking one. Shaking hands. The umpires are Puts shaking it out hands. of our misery. Draw. There Match we are. Drawn. At last. Three nine eight for five. Somerset close their second inning with Rue on 118 and Aldridge on 101. Days one, two and three. And for a bit this morning, yep. we're, we're really good cricket, but uh, it's ended in a, in a draw and a, a bit of a flat end to what was a, was a really intriguing couple of, couple of days, Anthony. Yeah, I think it raises questions about the pitch again. Um, same sort of questions that have been asked down at Taunton where we haven't really had result pitches for whatever reason. It's obviously difficult for ground staff at this stage in the season to produce a, a pitch which is going to provide a balance between bat and ball which is what cricket is is all about where you can reasonably expect to get a positive result one way or the other mm. in the space of, of four days. Okay we lost quite a lot of time to to uh, the weather on day one of, was it day one of this game uh, no, yes I it was day one yeah yeah because some um, somerset were recovering quite well at that stage and um, which has which has made it even more difficult to to get a, a positive result but um, some it's been a, a disappointing downbeat end to what for a large part of the last four days has been a good game of cricket from which both sides I think can take some positives for Somerset the batting of uh, James Rue especially I thought Tom Abel batted very nicely yesterday evening and Tom Lamanby mm -hmm. in the well but in both innings in fact gutsy effort in the first innings to keep Lancashire at bay after Somerset were reduced to 12 for three and then slightly more expansive in the in the second innings and uh, a uh, impressive debut for Matt Henry for Somerset and for Daryl Mitchell for Indeed. Lancashire. Yep, yep. Both contributed really well, didn't they, for their for their teams? Um, but uh, well, it's a share of the points, and um, both these teams looking still for their first win in the county championship. For Lancashire, that wait will have to go on a little bit longer because it's that's this is their final game before the T20 competition starts. So the, the month or so at least before Lancs play a four-day match again. Of course, Somerset back in action this week, aren't they? Yeah, back in action at Lords on Thursday, and uh, I'll be there with Sam Dalling to bring you uh, all of the action on the BBC Sports website. Excellent. Thank you, Anthony. Um, so that's it from uh, Emirates Old Trafford. Um, it was a, a, b a bizarre end, really, to the day. Albeit, I was very excited by seeing Stephen Croft take the new ball. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's, uh, it's ended in a draw on uh, a blustery Sunday afternoon. Um, thank you for your company. Thanks to the Lanx TV gang. Excellent as ever. Thank you for your um, company through the course of the four days, but from Anthony and myself, everyone that's been part of the, uh, the broadcast, enjoy the rest of your Sunday. <laughs>